Hello everyone, this is HTS Gesky here, and I want to make this video to show off my very, very first placement match in Heart of the Swarm. One of my biggest regrets about every single game I play is that uh, I wish I would record my first game played just so we can kind of laugh at how bad I was way back in the day. But uh, anyways, this is going to be my very first placement match. As you saw on the loading screen, I was actually going up against a uh, silver level player. You can tell by the, the color of their portrait border. So unfortunately, this guy is a little bit out of his league. I do apologize. This will most likely be a one-sided curb stomp. But it is my very first placement match, so it tends to, on your very first placement match, put you up against someone who is lower ranked um, overall. Whether it's going to be bronze, silver, or gold, that, that tends to be the players you're going to be going up against. So, anyways, I, I mostly want to talk about a couple of updates, bring you guys up to speed on everything that's going on. It's less about the game and more about the conversation we are about to have. Just imagine that the, the game is more background noise for our entertainment. So. Number one, this is my first HOTS game. That was the thing on my list. Number two, I'm officially back from MLG. I'm officially back from the Heart of the Swarm launch event. That means I have about two weeks where I'm going to be playing and casting Heart of the Swarm before I actually head to Europe for JimuCon, GimuCon, G-E-M-U-Con, however you say that. I will be at that event, so if you're around that area, definitely check it out. It should be a lot of fun. Don't know too much about it, but I'm going to be on a couple of panels and stuff. Um, so I'm going to be in Europe for that. Then I'm going to be flying to New York for the Shorty Awards, which uh, should be a lot of fun. Super excited about that. And yeah, so after that, then it'll be more and more StarCraft. So just want to let you guys know some traveling coming up, but going to be playing a lot, lot more. So that was number two on my list. Number three, I want to start doing something, guys. So every ladder game I upload, I'm thinking of calling it like Play With Me or something, which just sounds kind of dirty. But basically any game that is first person view, whether I'm casting it live while playing it or casting it after the fact like this video. Sometimes, you know, depending on how I feel, I'll do one or the other, casting it live or casting it after the fact. I want you guys to play a game and tell me how your game went. Now it has to be, uh, it has to be for ladder points. So basically it's going to help you get over your ladder anxiety because we're going to play StarCraft together. We are going to get over the ladder anxiety. And if you have ladder anxiety, go play more unranked ladder to slowly get over that. So I'm playing my placement match right now. And uh, I want you guys to go play your first game of the day or if you've already played one and post down below how your game went. What did you lose to? Did you win? Uh, what can you improve on? Whatever. And anytime I play a game, I'm, I'm going to call it something. I need a series. Maybe I'll just call it Ladder Anxiety again because that's always a good one. I think I will call it Ladder Anxiety. So every Ladder Anxiety game I play, your homework is to play one game and uh, tell me how it went. If you don't own the game, that's okay. We still love you. You're still welcome here. Um, I know a lot of you actually don't play. You just enjoy watching the game. So anyways, I, I want to bring back the Ladder Anxiety series. People seem to really, really like that. And yeah. So let me know down below, how did your one game go for the day? All right, so that is that. That was number three on my list. Number four, if you would like to find players to practice against or talk to or make fun of or whatever, join my Husky StarCraft group on Battle.net. Now, I believe you can join it with Wings of Liberty or Hard the Swarm. When you log in, and just go to the group section. It's kind of on the right side. Search for Husky StarCraft and join the official Husky StarCraft group. Now, there's over 30,000 let me say that again. Over 30,000 members in that group. I believe it's currently the largest group on StarCraft 2. Uh, but either way, it is amazing. Been talking to a lot of you guys there. Tons and tons of fun. Um, lots of games being had and cool people are there. So if you want to join that, feel free, guys. It's a great place for you guys to talk and uh, get to know each other a little bit better and just share the love for StarCraft 2. So the Husky StarCraft group, go join it. Um, number five, I think, on my list. I think, I think we're up to number five, maybe number four. Either way, make sure, guys, to send me replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. If you're watching a live stream of one of your favorite pros, talk to them. Get them to send me replays. Don't be annoying. Don't be those guys. Do not be annoying, but just let them know that I would love to cast their good games. There's so many epic games taking place that it's a shame that I can't cast every single one. But to definitely have them send replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com, which brings me to point number six. Are you guys keeping track at, at this point? I know this is a lot of information being dropped on you all at once. Did you guys like my bronze level, my blo bleh, bronze league heroes game that I did where uh, basically we watch a silly bronze level game, we all have a couple of laughs, uh, maybe get a couple of drinks, who knows, and just enjoy 
uh, the, the silliness of games that are not played by pros. So if you enjoyed that, let me guys uh, let me know. You can also send those bronze or any any level replay. Really, it doesn't have to be bronze. It can be gold, silver, platinum, diamond, whatever. It, it could be just a silly game that we can all laugh at. You can also send those to husky replays at gmail.com. Because honestly, I feel like StarCraft 2, while 1v1 pro games are a, an absolute vital part of the game, of, of the community, of course I'm never going to stop 1v1 pro games at all. Um, you can see my Oracle here having, having fun in their base. So at this point, the game is basically won, unless he has like two expansions or something. I see. But uh, either way, send me those replays, guys. Let me know what level they're at, and uh, if they're silly, I will cast them. I think they were a ton of fun there. And I'm trying to think of what else. I actually managed to say everything much more concisely than I had planned to. So to recap, this is my first HOTS game. I'm going to be uploading games for the Ladder Anxiety series. Every Ladder Anxiety series game I have, your homework is to play one game. Tell me how it went. What did you, uh, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? Did you have fun? Are you frustrated? Whatever. So first HOTS game, Ladder Anxiety series. Play a game every time I do. Uh, join the Husky StarCraft group and send pro level and amateur level replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Let's get Har the Swarm started off right. StarCraft became much more popular with the release of the original StarCraft. And if you guys remember back down to, hang on, I'm getting a phone call. All right, and I'm back. So I think uh, what I'm going to do is put a list of everything I said down below because that was a lot of stuff for you guys to remember. I don't even remember everything that I covered anymore. So uh, anyways, at this point in the game, I think it's pretty darn obvious that uh, I'm kind of way in the lead. No matter what he could have done, I don't think he would have been able to recover from that whatsoever. So I will say, though, in talking a little bit about the game, that uh, oracles are pretty good, but don't rely on them to win you the game. If, if a Terran player is going to be more aggressive, then you still need sentries and things like that to hold your own ramp. And uh, I definitely made a lot of mistakes this game, but it was my very first game. So in the future, what I want to do is uh, is basically walk you through the game. If I'm playing it live, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do. If I'm casting afterwards, I'll tell you what I was trying to do. Um, and there's a Mothership Core right there, just in case I needed to Photon Overcharge. But at this point, it is pretty one-sided, so I'm just going to go ahead and march in there. But anyways, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Uh, doing, doing doing the old ladder thing. It's always, you know, got ladder anxiety and all that. So uh, there's the GG from my opponent. And then you get the awesome victory screen, which is so gratifying. Oh, uh, that feels so good every time you win a game. But uh, that was my first placement match. So you guys go play your very first game. Come back here let me know how you did. And if you lost, if you won, it don't matter because you always get XP anyways. And uh, you can see right there, well, you can see basically from the beginning is when I, I had the worker advantage. And that's the army supply value. And this one was the, is that the income? I actually can't tell because it's too small on my screen. But either way, hope you guys enjoy it. I will be doing more ladder anxiety relatively soon. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HTS Guest here back with my second episode of the Ladder Anxiety series for Heart of the Swarm. You guys remember the rules of this series. Anytime I upload a, uh, a Ladder Anxiety series, then uh, you as well have to go on Ladder and play at least one single game and let me know down below in the comments how your game went. Now there is going to be several ways that I can cast this. Sometimes I'll be casting it while I'm playing, sometimes I'll be casting the replay, and sometimes I'll be casting the game itself afterwards where uh, you can still see kind of my first person point of view. This is going to be my second uh, my second ladder game, and it put me against a Bronze League player. The last player I played was Silver. This time it's going to be Bronze. Now, normally on the placement matches, that's what it'll do for the first two, is put you against a Bronze and a Silver, and then it can ramp it up very quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised to get a Diamond uh, or even Masters player coming up pretty darn soon, as, again, this guy is definitely out of his league, so we're going to be having a little bit of fun with it throughout this game. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see. I had a lot of fun reading through all your comments on my last video video. Thank you guys for supporting it. Really the, the point of this video is to encourage people to actually get on StarCraft 2 and play the game. Well that's the point of the whole series rather. And I've been doing a little bit of thought. I think uh, number one if I'm casting the videos after the fact it's going to be for more of kind of a casual chat where I talk about whatever the hell it is I want to and then if it's a really close game then I'll talk about the actual game that's taking place. So in the future I may be talking about uh, dogs. I may be talking about my second channel. I may be talking about an event I went to. I don't know. 
but these videos are definitely made for more kind of casual chatting with you guys with the game being kind of the background but I definitely recommend guys I, I had fun reading through your comments on your first game, but don't get ladder anxiety. You got to get in there and play again. I'm going to try and make this series as much as I possibly can because playing a game a day does not hurt. I highly recommend it here. And uh, in the future, I can talk about my strategies and all that. But basically, my game plan for this game is just to do a DT expand where uh, I'm going to be going for Dark Templar. And then if, if that doesn't end up winning, I'm going to be expanding behind it. So it's not an all-in. But there are a lot of builds that the Zerg player can do that will counter it very effectively. Like doing roach timings with an overseer, things like that. That's going to actually be really, really tough to deal with. But I have a feeling that since he's in bronze, he's probably not going to be doing the uh, in any kind of specific timing or anything like that. Because usually you'll see timings like mid-diamond and higher is where you start to see players really focus on timings. But um, a lot of people said that the tips I gave in the last video were actually extremely useful. Uh, I, I don't know if it was in the Ladder Anxiety video or it was on the, um, the, the Bronze League Heroes video, but definitely I think the major tip I would give when that video, the major tip I gave was always make orbital commands. There's no excuse not to. If you're not making orbital commands, you are bad and you need to make orbital commands. Now this tip that I'm going to give in this game is that you need to focus on macro and do not focus on micro. If you are platinum or lower, I would definitely say focusing on macro is what will get you to diamond. Now, um, a little bit of micro here and there in platinum is useful, but if you're in bronze, you aren't good at any part of the game, so you need to focus on macro. And it may be harsh, but it is it is the it is the darn truth, man. I actually met someone at the last MLG I went to. He was so stoked to see me, and he uh, he wanted to let me know that he had no previous RTS experience before watching me. Um, I got him into StarCraft. He started out in bronze, and now he has high masters. So I can tell you that when he was in bronze, he was not thinking, "Oh, I'm good at micro. I'm I'm gonna get carried all the way to rank one bronze." No. So focus on macro, guys. That is going to be my tip. Building an army as quickly as you can is the quickest way out of Bronze League. If you want to get out of Bronze League, if you love just kind of sitting around and putting around the game, then uh, definitely sit in Bronze League because it's definitely a lot of fun here. So down goes the Dark Shrine. Remember that uh, the Dark Shrine is a lot cheaper than it used to be, so going for DTs, you can get them out a lot earlier. Now, I definitely messed up my build a little bit, but I'm going more of an economic style. Um, you guys know me. I don't really like to do uh, super, super razor-thin timed builds. I actually prefer to always just back it up with a good economy. It doesn't mean it's always the, the correct choice by any means, but that is just kind of my play style. So I've been chronoing out a lot of probes. Um, I, I do have the Mothership Core right now. This is just going to help me mass recall if I need it. I can also Photon Overcharge if my DT rush is not going well and there's some sort of run-by. But I did see a lot of Zerglings. I also saw no expansion, so that's why I got a second Zealot was to help hold the line in case I need it, which I didn't know if there's Banelings or anything like that, but I see that the Lings are actually just out right here, and it's not that many, but I'm going to go ahead and try to attack those a little bit. Didn't expect the Mothership Core to do all that much to those Lings, but uh, sometimes a player will be really bad or something and not retreat them and end up losing a couple, and I didn't attack with the Mothership Core because, I mean, the game's a couple minutes in now, so there's going to be several Queens out uh, for defense and all that, so since I saw these only on one base, I'm basically just worried about any sort of uh, weird timing or something like that, but normally if a, if a Zerg player is still on one base at this point, uh, you either can and rush them and it went quite well, or they're they're just not at a Bronze League. So um, I think in this case it does end up being Bronze League, but I got my probe in position for an expansion should I need to throw one down. Uh, my DT should be almost ready if I believe. It's kind of hard to see on the map sometimes, or on this screen, excuse me. Yep, there's the DTs right there. are going to be warping on in, and we're just going to go ahead and go for the attack. Now, I want to remind you guys that the Ladder Anxiety series is to share every single single game that I play with you. No matter how good or how bad it is, we can all learn from the mistakes because we all have had terrible games. Um, any of us that have played ladder have had games that were so bad we just want to rage quit. But rage quitting doesn't get you to uh, MLG. It doesn't get you to GSL stats. So I see the roaches there and realize that, you know, my results aren't going to be any anything useful here. I'm just going to go ahead and go straight for the drone line. Now he does have the layer tech doesn't have an overseer, so that's going to be really, really good for me. Remember, you can warp in units on the ramp if that's something that, uh, you know, you're trying to delay units from going up your ramp or something like that. Just remember, you can warp in units on the ramp. Now, you used to not be able to. But at this point, we're just chasing these units around. I'm seeing everything that this base has going on, and I do see the Overseer there, so I'm just going to go ahead and retreat right now. Yes, I could do some more damage with these DTs, but I would end up losing them because the Overseer is going to be done. So ideally, 
what I'm going to be doing here is uh, just making some Archons and some Zealots, and I should be A-OK. -okay. I mean, I really saw what was going on there. I have my own expansion on the way, and uh, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. So before this game's over, I want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I actually did have a lot of trouble with XSplit lately, so my apologies to any of those extra videos that got uploaded. XSplit was refusing to uh, to work with some of my hard drives. It was kind of weird, and so I ended up with video files everywhere. So that was my bad. I do apologize. But uh, definitely just make sure to let me know how did your second or even first, if you didn't partake in the first ladder anxiety, how did it go? Now, remember, guys, all you have to do is log in, do one ranked game, and you can come right back here and post it. I read through them. Um, I actually like reading through them before I go to bed. I don't know if that's weird, but uh, just reading through them on my iPad cracks me up. So I definitely appreciate you guys getting on ladder and trying it out. Um, also, another friendly reminder. Uh, time warp right there so those units can't really retreat that well. I do have another time warp saved up and at this point normally my mothership core I would want to save for a, a mass recall but I already know that I'm so far ahead at this point that it really doesn't matter and uh, anyway so I go ahead and go back to my base just to macro a little bit because remember when you're playing the game you don't want to be staring at your units. We did have a little bit of lag right there. I think we made it through. But I uh, just gotta go ahead and clean on through. So when you are playing against anyone who you think is lower ranked than you or you know is lower ranked than you, I honestly prefer not to forge fast expand because there's a lot of cheeses that any level of player can pull off versus a forge fast expand. That's why I went for the one gate DT rush um, into an expansion because it's just a little bit more safe because anytime you wall in versus Zerg, you are a little bit more safe. But uh, a big shout out to the guy who I ended up playing in this round. He was very nice and uh, I definitely quite like that about him and yep basically everything's dead so I'll show you the little score screen after this but again guys this the whole point of this series is to get you guys to play one game and to let me know how it went down the comments below so go do that in the future I will be casting these games live I, again I just had trouble with X split so I needed to test everything out uh, but in the future a lot of them I will be casting live kind of telling you my thought process and yeah, here's a couple of the graphs. You can just see workers active. Um, see how his workers active got flat for a long time, and and that wasn't even because of my DTs. Make sure your line for your graph is always going straight up for making workers. Workers are so important. Focus on that macro. So my tips so far have been number one, make orbital commands or you're bad, and number two, focus on the macro. It is so important. Making lots of workers, probes and pylons, man. And even if you don't play Protoss, make lots of workers. SCVs and depots, drones and overlords is so super important. So uh, anyways, I love this Ladder Anxiety series, guys. Hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HSKS here back with another video for my Ladder Anxiety series. Now remember, the way I've been doing this recently, just because it is most relaxing and uh, I would say enjoyable for me, is that I record the game first, first person point of view here, and then I actually cast it after the fact. Now you may be saying, but I want the live commentary. Now I will be doing that sometimes, but uh, I, I, for me it's more relaxing when I'm playing my games just to turn on my music, to focus, to sit down, and just really kind of go at it. I'm actually going to open up my door here, which uh, may actually be a giant risk because I live right on a road. Who would have thought? With lots of cars out there. So if you hear noisy cars, whatever. The Ladder Anxiety series is mostly for overcoming ladder anxiety, not for having an absolute perfect cast. So... Anyways, the whole point of the series has been and will always be to try to encourage you guys to get out there and play on ladder. You can sit and make fun of me all you want, but when it comes down to it, if you're not out there playing the game yourself, then uh, you ain't got the talk to walk the talk walk. That's right, you can't make fun of me unless you yourself are getting absolutely destroyed on ladder like I am. So this is my third placement match. And uh, basically, the game plan, guys, is to upload every single one versus one that I play. And maybe if I do team games, I'll do those ones as well. But the, the idea is that I want you guys to overcome your ladder anxiety. The more people playing StarCraft, the better. And also, down below, always leave your comments for how your game of the day went. Anytime you see a ladder anxiety video, you have to swallow your pride. Get in there and play one game. That's going to be your homework. And uh, I do actually enjoy reading through all your comments, so thank you for that. 
Now, what do we want to talk about here? So my first two games went relatively quickly, as it was one of those things where I kind of already knew that I had won before the game even got started, which is kind of a bad way of ever looking at StarCraft. But um, basically, they were they were bronze and silver level players. I felt kind of bad. Now, this player was unranked, so I'm actually not sure what rank he is. So I'm taking this one a little bit more seriously. However, I really want to uh, to have a longer game. So this game, I'm going to be going a little bit of more of a macro style. I am going to go ahead and go for an Oracle, though. Because as you'll see, I'm scouting around his base with my probe right now, keeping my probe alive, sending the probe back into the base um, as soon as the SCB stops scouting me. I do see, all right, when's this Marine going to start? Is there any gas on the way? As you can see, you guys see how much lag there is on that clicking right there on the shift command. So for some reason, okay, these cars are so loud. These cars are like ridiculous without everyone take the tires off your car. They're too loud. All right, go ahead and close this door. Uh, oh, God, there's a pizza delivery guy out there. I want it so bad. But uh, anyways, I do spot the command center there. I almost killed that SCV. That would have delayed his command center a little bit. But I did notice a couple of key things that were kind of alluding to the fact that I think that I'm going to be able to beat this player. Number one, he uh, didn't really deny my scout very well. Number two, didn't drop a depot to try and wall it in. Number three, allowed my probe to nearly kill his SCVs. Number four, he uh, was scouting around and... Followed my SCV or followed my pro for a little bit, but would always let it go directly back into the main base. Uh, these are minor things that I picked up on in this game. That's why I'm going to go ahead and drop an Oracle here. Now, um, you may notice that I didn't rush to get my second gas, so my Oracle timing is actually going to be really late. Now, my thought process at the time is, all right, I'm going to harass with the Oracle. It'll allow me to get some more scouting in, probably do a little bit of SCV harassment. And you got to remember that with the command center first, yes, he did get a barracks, but not much else. With the command center first-ish build. Unfortunately, this did get scouted by the SCB right there, as you can see. But uh, with the uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, my Oracle's going to be there late. However, since he's not going to have a lot of barracks out, he may not have enough anti-air to actually deal with the Oracle right away. Remember that four Marines are not really enough to engage an Oracle directly. You may feel safe with four Marines, but you are never safe from the Oracle. So uh, that was kind of my thought process here. Get a little bit of scouting on. I am going to do kind of a weird expansion timing where I already have another gateway, which I don't really need. Um, I, I wanted it just in case my Oracle harass was like a total blunder and I, I blew it. Then at least I would have something to kind of back it up with on those gateways. Um, so I'm going to be going for the expansion. There's my Oracle right now. I'm going to be sending him out and go ahead and expand right here. Again, the timing of this is actually kind of weird. Um, it's not, it definitely wasn't planned out. This was kind of done on the fly to see if I can make something happen or not. But uh, the Oracle, again, just going to be for scouting and all that goodness. So that is moving out right there. Going to be hot keying it to number three. Now, one thing I actually want to try and get better about is that I use number two for my hotkey on the Nexi, uh, or, or Nexus, depending on how you want to say it. And the problem I actually run into with this is that number two is like a hot commodity hotkey. Here we go right now. Um, once I see that there's no anti-air, I like to fly the Oracle over where the SCVs are, as opposed to just having it attack right away to get a maximum amounts of kills. So I have seven kills right there. Again, the lag is like actually a total killer right now. Uh, for some reason, I had really high ping in this game. But as you can see right there, man, Oracles do not mess around. They will eat up Marines. Already up to 11 kills. But considering his expansion is early uh, compared to mine, this is actually about the amount of damage that I needed to do. Uh, probably a little bit more. 18 kills is definitely more damage than I needed to. But this has definitely got me kind of back on my footing with this player. And I'm feeling a little bit confident now. Because, again, my expansion was super late. And with the lag... Uh, I don't always make excuses for my play. This game was definitely really bad, but the lag was throwing me off like crazy the entire game. So I'm going to attribute it to that. And yeah, so anyway, so from here on out, I'm basically going to be macroing up. That's kind of my game plan for this game is that, you know, I did a little bit of economic damage. I could try and move out and win the game as quickly as possible. But considering this is a placement match, I feel like this is the best time right now to just go ahead and practice, practice, practice my macro because I'm going to need it later. Because obviously, you, you gotta remember one thing about StarCraft, I've said this in a lot of interviews, people still get butt hurt Beverly over it, but basically you cannot be good at StarCraft. Now, what do I mean by that? The only players I would consider quote unquote good are players like Flash, MC, and uh, basically players who dominate everyone they play. The reason I say that is, is because say you're high masters, your high masters, which by all accounts is very good at StarCraft. Um, 
that you just are. Anyone in Masters, really, I would say overall is good at StarCraft. But if you have the mentality that, hey, I'm good at StarCraft, I'm good at macro, or I'm good at micro, or I'm good at doing a specific build, you have to remember that there are a thousand hundred bajillion people who are better than you at that specific thing. So if you want to improve, saying you're good at anything is the absolute wrong mindset. If you just want to noob stomp all your friends, then yeah, you can say you're good at StarCraft. But you got to remember that uh, unless you're winning hundreds of thousands of dollars, you have to have the mentality that you are not good. That, that is the way I look at it. You guys can, can tear it apart all you want, but that is the mentality I have. Um, so I never try and make excuses for my play whatsoever. There is going to be two Widow Mines here, but with the lag, it's taking me forever to actually activate the beam. And, and look at the lag! You see how... Did you see how laggy that was? That was so laggy. Get out of town. So uh, definitely had a lot of lag in this game. Ended up losing that to the Widow Mines. I am going to go ahead and drop a robotics facility here. And you may be saying, but Husky, stop! You can just use your oracles for detection. Well, that is true. As you can see there with the lag, the oracle is actually a little bit more difficult to uh, to use for detection. Number one, because you have to activate the detection ability. And number two, just because there's lag, it's hard to micro correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and work on some Widow Mines right here. I get a Void Ray, honestly, just because I wanted one. There's really no thought process behind this. I am starting to, to float a lot of minerals here, and I am, unfortunately, supply blocks. This is actually bad news bears for me. I do thankfully have the pylons on the way already. Now, one good thing about Protoss is that uh, if you're supply blocked... Oh, there's a Widow Mine over here somewhere. I just took a little bit of damage on there. But uh, if you're supply blocked as Protoss, I already know my opponent's not going to be moving out anytime soon. I've kind of seen his army. I've seen a little bit of what he's got. And I'm not that impressed. I'm not that impressed, guys. Anyways, I do have High Templar now out. Size Storm on the way. Size Storm is just always good versus Terran. Um, especially on ladder where there's a little bit of latency. Yes, I'm going to abuse any latency that's in the game. Throw out the storms. The army gets an extra second or two in that storm. And their army's dead. So I highly do recommend going for... Um, uh, yeah, going for that. And... <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've, I've had people tweet at me, hashtag ButthurtBeverly, which uh, is, is kind of cracking me up that that is apparently a thing right now. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and throw out some more gateways here because I know my third base is going to be up and running soon. At this point, really, the main thing I could be doing better is not getting supply blocked and uh, scouting a little bit better. That's actually always one of my problems. But the thing is, is the way that I play Protoss is that if I've done a little bit of early economic damage, I, I'm like, all right, the game's won. I'm in good shape. I don't need to scout anything. But unfortunately, you have to realize what I'm actually doing really bad right now is I'm not in position to deal with drops. I am in no position to deal. Oh, great. I'm still going to lose the stalker there, of course. Um, I actually rolled my eyes when I, when I had that happen in the game because it was totally my bad. Anyways, I'm not in a good position really to deal with drops. Uh, I don't have a Mothership Core, which I always forget to get. And uh, Mothership Cores are one of those units that I really don't think they're absolutely necessary. Of course, they are nice, but it's not like forgetting an Orbital Command. Or it's not like forgetting, uh, you know, Queens at your expansion. Yes, they're nice, but as long as you control your units well and you don't get yourself in a situation where you need to mass recall, it's okay if you don't have one, but I still wouldn't recommend it. Mothership cores are pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some Archons just because those are always good versus Terran, unless they're going for pure mech or something like that. But honestly, at this point, I'm feeling really good about my macro just because I am most definitely ahead of my opponent. God, the lag is so unbearable. Can't even pl place these gateways down, man. But uh, anyways, those are some things I would definitely try and do better. Actually, putting probes in gas would be good. That's always nice. And I, hopefully they actually went in there because with the lag, it's hard to tell sometimes. So at this point, I'm basically just going to be macroing up on three bases, kind of getting a uh, death ball. Got to be looking around for Widow Mines because I did see Hay. He's planting Widow Mines around the map. He's trying to intercept my units as I move out. But uh, really, if I mean, if a Terran player... Um, I think this still stands true today, actually. If a Terran player is not being aggressive against you as Protoss, you can really sit back, macro up, and just destroy. Now, that's not to say you're going to win just because you get sit back, but really, to me, that is where Protoss is most comfortable versus Terran, is being in the late game. You got Psy Storms, you get Colossus, you can go Sky Toss. Really, you have a lot more options in the late game, whereas in the mid game is where Terran should really be aggressive in doing drops. So what I need to work on for me personally, two things from this game, is scouting a little bit better and being in a position where I can actually deal with drops. Oh, I thought I was being dropped over there, but it was just a Marine. And we'll go ahead and send these guys back to work. Of course, with lag, that always makes it kind of fun. 
and they're uh, going to go ahead and work on the upgrades. Also, my upgrade timing is, is actually quite atrocious there. I think I ended up losing, yep, my soccer right there got a little overextended. Going to go ahead and try and scout out with the observer, see what's going on, and upgrading them warp gates, because the more the merrier, especially in these situations where I'm starting to stockpile a lot of money, and you could attribute it to bad macro, that's true. But uh, I, I will be honest, I got a little overconfident this game, which you should never do. But I realized, hey, I've got lots and lots of gateways, so you know I can always build the army that I need. I mean, I'm really only one warp in away from being maxed. So having that extra money right now is actually not that big of a deal. I do have a lot of probes. I think at this point I have about 70 probes, which is probably a few too many. Still going to be working on those upgrades. Going to drop cannons over here at my new base. And uh, basically at this point all I have to worry about is drops because my army is basically where I want it. I'm just building lots of extra pylons, probably way too many pylons in case that middle map uh, or middle base gets taken out. And uh, yeah, just going to go ahead and start massing up an army right now. So at this point, I'm realizing, uh, basically at this point what I'm thinking is, is alright, what can my army lose to? My army can lose to lots of Hellbats, because I have plenty of Zealots, so I have to remember that. It can lose to uh, EMPs, there's a drop going down in my expansion by the way. So I go ahead and get those guys out of there as quickly as I possibly can. And also, I'm already realizing, all right, this drop, as soon as I attack, it's probably going to lift off, go into my main base. So I'm going to go ahead and make some Stalkers right now. Void Ray's trying to take it out, uh, take it out, and I'm going to go ahead and focus down that Medivac because it was weakened. And then I, I already realized, all right, a uh, Medivac full of units, even with four Stalkers here, is not going to be that terrifying. So I'm going to be just fine. I'm going to continue the uh, upgrades there. Should probably get my probes back on gas. Unfortunately, that drop did kill off a couple of those. And uh, just where I basically at this point, I'm actually just showing him, look, buddy, I have lots of production, and you better not mess with me, or I'm going to move out and kill you. Because I just got maxed out right there with that. But I did get my high yield expansion. Normally, would not recommend going for the high yield expansion on this map. But considering I'm so far ahead at this point, I'm just like, you know what? That's that's fine. His drop didn't really do anything. Um, and I have a big army. Might as well throw down more gateways, which I I have 13 of them right now, I believe. Um, at least 13 of them off of cooldown. And I'm adding on more right there because you know 15 15 to 20 gateways when you're this far ahead is actually not that bad of an idea um, One thing I could do also is switch to sky toss anyways. I want to finish my thought uh, Hellions can kill me so I have to worry about that and then EMP can wreck my world because zealots and archons clump up a lot And of course archons are pure shields So I figure you know what I'm gonna add on more gateways just to make sure and at this point I should be able to just crush this army if I micro correctly and uh, keep all my observers alive keep my void rays alive and go from there But basically at this point I'm just gonna go ahead and storm blanket that army again There's a lot of latency and uh, even if I storm my zealots I already know look I'm only losing a little bit of supply I've already rewarped it in and this is where I start to feel comfortable. You guys know me, I love my macro, and this is exactly why. If you're able to deal with any sort of harassment, then Protoss is an amazing race in the late game. But if you suffer from any of that harassment, you are going to be in a world of hurt. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting gas here. And now, you may watch this and be like, Husky, why are you not looking at your army? Why are you not paying attention? You gotta remember that this army is already really powerful. And the most important thing that I can do is just make sure I have reinforcements on the way. That's going to be the most important thing. And there is going to be the lack of GG. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the graphs and all of that. But uh, anyways, that was my third placement match. And I will definitely be losing a lot of games coming up. Once it places me, I will for sure end up losing. Yeah, level 7, baby. Protoss decal unlocked. Oh, yeah. So anyways, guys, remember, for Ladder Anxiety, we are going to crush Ladder Anxiety for good together. Go out there, play one ranked game, and then come back and post how it went in the comments down below because I love reading through them. I actually read through them in bed. I know I've said this before, but when I'm going to bed, I love reading through them and imagining the game that you guys played in my mind. But so uh, you can see my army value was ahead actually for the entire game. A lot of that, though, did come down to the SEV harassment. So basically, what I could have done better there, don't get supply blocked. Um, don't join a laggy game. That was quite quite frustrating and uh, don't get supply blocked do better scouting and position better for drops those were kind of I would say um, supply block scouting and dealing with drops uh, more effectively or being prepared for those drops more effectively are kind of the three things I think that I can improve on from that game so currently right now I'm 3-0 and that's honestly not not in a cocky way but that's honestly to be expected for placement matches just because the game is so new and I would say I sit at around platinum or maybe diamond level 
I haven't played in a while, so I am a bit rusty. But uh, anyways, that I, I expected to win the first three. Now it kind of gets down to the wire where the game's like, all right, Husky won the three. Let's start matching up versus Platinum and Diamond. So we'll have to see exactly what my next placement match holds. But get out there, guys. Play one game. Come back here. Let me know how it went. Hope you guys enjoy it. And, of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HTS Yes here, back with another episode of Ladder Anxiety. In this game, I am going to be going up against John, who is a Protoss player. It is going to be... Was this my first Protoss matchup? I actually can't remember because I wasn't playing all these games at the same time. This is going to be my fourth placement match. I do believe that my opponent is either playing unranked or is also doing a placement match. As uh, he didn't have a rank when I saw his name. But uh, I did look up one of his team games, and he won all five of his placement matches there. So definitely not messing around is my opponent. So right now I'm going to be scouting out with the probe right away. And uh, my thought process right now is his name is John, so he's up to something shady. That was literally my thought process, and I stuck to it. So I'm going to go ahead and send out my uh, send out my probe right now. I'm also sending him in a non-direct route. Notice how I kind of guided him to that watchtower as opposed to whatever his default fault pathing would be. That was just in hopes of scouting out my opponents uh, if he's going to be doing some sort of proxy, scouting it out. You got to remember that uh, a lot of people hate playing PvP, so what that means is that they will cannon rush you or proxy you or something like that. And notice how he just cancelled right there, so he was trying to do something, and now I know that he's going to attempt to build a gateway right there, and uh, basically the only option that that was is either he accidentally cancelled that or he is going to be cannon rushing me. So even though he canceled that, I'm still a little bit worried about a cannon rush. I feel like there may be something hidden on the map that I'm not aware of because my, my gateway is almost already done and he basically just started his. So that would put me way too far ahead. I'm not feeling good about it, so I'm going to be extremely careful when I am moving forward through this game. So uh, anyways, I saw my gas on the way. Got the uh, assimilator now done. Got to be transferring those probes right on in. And now I'm going to go ahead and throw down my Cybernetics Core. Now, like I was saying, guys, the, the whole point of this series is to encourage you to play more StarCraft 2. So your homework, notice that he's trying to hide that probe, too. So I'm, I'm very suspicious right now and got to be looking through to try and see exactly what he's doing. And also, he's controlling that probe, so I know he's got to be doing something here. And I really should have blocked that off with my probe, but I was like, all right, here we go. It's going to be time for a cannon rush, so he is going to be cannon rushing me, and I will attempt my best to hold this off. Cannon rushes, I would say, are actually the most difficult rush to hold off, because you have to make the choice between using your probes to attack the buildings or not, and then trying to get out enough attacking units in time to deal with it. So I do have the one Zeld on the way. Going to be having a stalker following this up, although using these units uh, for defense is quite tough. And uh, so just go ahead and spread those guys out as best I possibly can. I did leave one guy in gas, but as you can see, he is going to go ahead and start dropping more and more pylons and uh, cannons in my base here. So we'll be watching me attempt to hold this off. Holding off cannon rushes is so freaking frustrating, but this is why we scouted around. Um, so I have decided to use some of my probes. If you get about five probes on a cannon, you will definitely be able to kill it off before it dies. Um, and this one right here, I think I end up losing the Zealot there with the last shot, which actually really, really sucks. I would have loved to keep that alive. And uh, basically, we're just going to try and micro our best to keep killing these off here. Holding off cannon rushes is no fun whatsoever. It's probably like my least favorite thing to go against. So remember two things. Number one, um, ladder anxiety. You guys have to post. Uh, well, your homework is is to play one ladder game every time that I do and then post how your game went down below. Been having a lot of fun reading through the comments. We get about 15 to 1,700 comments per episode, which is great. That means a lot more games actually being played in StarCraft 2, and I gotta go straight for this cannon. Uh, I should be able to kill it off before the other ones end up finishing. Got to get my stock rather, though. Still working on getting out more units right now as best as I possibly can. Unfortunately, on my gateway, I do have a bad rally point. Anyways, the second thing, other than go out there, play one game, and let me know, is that I'm going to be posting every single game that I play, regardless of how bad it is. Now, that means that, say, I get six pooled and I end up losing, which is a distinct possibility. Let's be honest. Ah, I lost that Zelda too. That sucks. Which is a, a, a distinct possibility. Um, I'm going to upload it anyways. And so if it's a really short game that I lose, I may tie it to whatever the next game is, and we can kind of watch it and learn from my mistakes. And uh, anyways, sometimes I'll cast them playing them live, but I've really actually been enjoying having more of a casual conversation with you guys. Um, so basically how it's kind of working on my channel right now, for those of you who have been following, which is quite a few of you, at least everyone watching this video, is that uh, I love doing pro 1v1s because it shows you the pro competitive aspect of the game. I love doing ladder anxiety because it shows you kind of the average player's person, uh, average player's point of view. 
as I'm trying to go through the ladder, at least playing one game a day, trying to rank up and playing in uh, playing in Diamond League. Or plat I don't know what league I'll actually be placed in. I haven't played in a long, long time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take out that cannon as well. He only got one shot off, and I just have to be careful right now. I'm trying to micro these guys because my stalkers are basically retarded which is uh, kind of how it goes, because they're special derp Derpenstein stalkers. So we're going to be working trying to kill this off. Misclick there, going to cost that stalker its life. And can I save that stalker? Oh, so close. Yes, I can. Um, and the probes, I think, are going to get taken out. But I do eventually clean it up, so get the hell out of my base, man. I've only got 10 probes mining minerals, which really sucks. Um, I definitely could have dealt with that better, especially once I saw that he was being very shady in everything he was doing. Number one, he canceled something and then built a gateway. Number two, he was running, trying to hide that probe in my base. And number three, even watching him micro that probe behind my mineral line, um, I, I knew he was up to no good. So I actually don't know where he ended up dropping the forge to be able to cannon rush me. I'll have to, to look at the replay later, I guess. I'm not quite sure where it was. But uh, anyways, I saw him being shady. I should have been able to deal with it. So right now you may be saying, well, why aren't you killing the cannon in the back of your base? you got to remember that that cannon is not really that important um, because it's not harassing my workers. Now, if the workers go behind the mineral line, they will get shot. But uh, that is not that big of an issue. I also spotted a probe here trying to sneak out to the right side. So really the important thing that I'm doing this game is realizing that my opponent, anyone named John, are there any Johns out there? Raise your hand. You all are a bunch of shaders. You're a bunch of shady douchers is what you guys are so uh, he's trying to do lots of sneaky stuff I'm not letting him get away with it at least for now um, so basically I scouted his base and I saw something very important he has completely walled himself in tight now he may have canceled the gateway or whatever he had building there to open up his entrance but what that tells me is he's either going to be going for an oracle mineral line harass or he is going to be going for DTs those are my two best educated guesses based on three things I hope I can come up with three things. That was just a random number. Based on the fact that he's already cannon rushed me, it's he's showing that he's trying to end the game very quickly. He probably doesn't like this matchup whatsoever. Um, also based on the fact that he is now completely walled in tight, uh, you really have to go stuff that benefits from being walled in, and really that's DTs and air units, because going for a standard ground army does not benefit from being walled in because you're stuck in your base. So I'm using my stalker right now. Oh, God, what's the third thing? Um, his name's John, so he's got to try something shady here. So anyways, that was my thought process during the game. Um, I didn't get my warp gate research during that battle because I was so focused on just dealing with the cannon rush. Plus, warp gate would have delayed any stalker count that I was trying to get up to, so that's definitely something very important to keep in mind. Now, I'm warping in a couple of stalkers here because he could have thrown down four gateways and just tried to end the game right away. I don't really know. So I have an observer on the way to deal with the DTs. I have stalkers right now to deal with the oracles, and uh, I'm being active on the map to try and spot what he's going to be sending my way. So notice I'm scouting around with my probe to see if there's anything hidden. I do not trust this man, and this map is extremely large. There's still places on this map that I'm just not going to be able to get to scout out. Um, I'm sending these stalkers around. Again, you do not want anything to take you by surprise, being as active as possible, especially with stalkers. They move so quickly. So these pylons are eventually going to get taken out. That one stalker able to kill off all three. And you got to remember in this last phase of killing these off, my stalker is able to kill three pylons and a cannon which is 450 minerals, which, you know, in the, in the heat of the moment feels like uh, nothing to me because I lost so many probes. So my economy is back on track. I'm going to go ahead and get my robotics bay here. The reason I'm doing this is because if he is going any kind of ground army whatsoever, I will most likely, 9 times out of 10, have a tech advantage with my Colossus count. And in PvP, if you can get out a lot of Colossus, then you tend to just kind of win the game. Now, that used to be the case. It still is sort of the case, but the main thing you have to watch out for is there is a counter to being down in Colossus now, and that is going for Void Rays. So at this point in the game, I'm sitting back. Oh, I'm trying to scout out right there. And unfortunately, I lost the observer. That was a huge mistake. Really should have babysat that observer better because I need to know what's going on in this game. And uh, unfortunately, I just do not know. So another piling going to be going down while I'm waiting for my Colossus tech. But I do have enough money for an expansion right there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Moving out to the Watchtower as well. And uh, he does finally spot my pylon right there. That was just in case I was able to get a warp in and run inside his main base while he was attacking me. It never actually ended up happening, but it does mean that I have to redrop a pylon because I just broke my supply block and now it's back because of losing that pylon. So my observer's going to be moving out right now. I'm still trying to be active with these stalkers, able to kill off a probe. 
Um, he has been trying to scout me quite a bit. I think what he wants to know is, do I have an expansion up and running? And that I'm hoping he doesn't know if I do or not, because my pylon saw that he currently did not have one. So the longer I can have my expansion on my opponent, it is way, way better. Now, a lot of players at this stage, I think, either would have done one of two things, got frustrated and left the game, or they would have attacked really quickly to try and secure the win. But right now, I'm feeling very comfortable because I'm, I'm spotting his army with my observer. And you can see what I see, which is just a couple of stalkers and a mothership core. So if that army moves out to my base, I can actually deal with that. I don't have to warp in a huge army right now. I can casually start working on my Colossus, which is exactly what I'm doing. And uh, as long as I keep a track... Uh, keep track of that army, then I should be a okay. Now I did get supply blocked a lot in this game. Of course, I did lose lots of pylons, and the the opening part of the game was quite hectic. I got to be honest, I do not do very well holding off cannon rushes, so I was very happy to at least be able to hold that up, as it can be very very tough. I gotta say, if you hate PvP, cannon rushes are probably the best way to go. Um, that's why getting out a zealot first. Um, from your gateway is actually really, really good as Protoss. Uh, if they do cannon rush you anyways, having that Zealot is just... He, he will slice down cannons all day. The Stalker then can uh, kill the probe off quite easily. But uh, either way, got to be playing a kind of standard from here on out. And uh, I, I personally am feeling really good for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was able to hold off the cannon rush, which means that we were probably actually on equal footing. He may have had more probes than I did during all of that, which is a huge deal. And of course, he's mining money the entire time. But uh, I was able to hold it off without losing every single probe, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. So that is reason number one I'm feeling good. Reason number two is because there is no Oracle and no DT in sight, which means I don't have to waste time dealing with stupid gimmicky units. I can actually focus on just getting out a very large army. So I'm going to attempt to scout out with my Observer, but I did note that he threw down a cannon at his natural. I think he's a little bit worried about me going DTs because if I was him and I did that much damage with a cannon rush, I would be thinking, all right, my opponent is going to be going into desperation mode. What can he do? Um, he's got to try and blink inside my main base. Thankfully, I can actually intercept these units quite easily, as I do have the Colossus right now. And trying to kill him off doesn't look like I'll be able to get it. The one st uh, stalker that didn't make the blink, he just didn't make the blink, uh, ended up getting taken out. Now, one thing that's actually really bugging me when I was playing this game is that I didn't really have very good pylon coverage, so it was very difficult for me to wall in units. Um, one thing also about Mothership Cores to keep in mind that I just realized playing this game is that Mothership Cores are not like Overlords in that they float away when you attack them. The Mothership Core actually wants to attack you, so if you can ever get one or two Stalkers engaging their out of position Mothership Core while you are uh, out in the center of the field distracting them, then that's definitely the way to do it. Now, I am being pretty aggressive here, especially considering I don't have a forward pylon. I'm basically just relying on these Colossus, but uh, you'll see here in just a second that he actually has a couple of Void Rays, which is going to make my life very, very difficult because there they are right there going to be showing up. Because you got to remember that Void Ray is basically the counter to Protoss right now in that they're very, very good versus everything. It actually takes down my Observer right there, which I'm not too happy about. I'm going to try and take down the uh, the Void Ray with these Stalkers. I might actually be able to get it because you got to remember the Stalkers do additional damage versus Armored Units, but I do not have enough to kill him right now. One warping of Units is going to be more than enough for him to, uh, to, to clean up that army. And keeping the Colossus alive is very important right now because, yes, even if he is going Sky Toss, which is highly recommended in this matchup and really every matchup is just so good right now, even though he's going to be going for Sky Toss right now, having a Colossus or two is really, really good because basically you can kill off the Zelts. There's an Oracle, by the way. Thankfully, I don't have anything at this expansion, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Stalkers, and I'm going to warp in here in just a second a couple Stalkers at my expansion to try and catch the Oracle out of position. Now, unfortunately, my Stalkers weren't in the best position, so they weren't able to kill that off. My Stalker is going to attempt to do it, but the Oracle is going to get away. But basically, I'm just denying as much harassment as I possibly can. And one thing to keep in mind is when you're playing at, at any level of play, the chances of that Oracle coming back, now that I've held it off very effectively, are quite small. So really, the only thing you can do for harassment now is either going to be Zealots or DTs, and that is why I'm going to be dropping lots of cannons here. So you guys know me, I actually love playing more macro-oriented style. I like playing it safe, quote-unquote, which is why you won't see me going for cannon rushes or something like that, because personally for me, I don't gain anything from, as a player, doing that. Uh, and I'm not going to be playing a tournament or anything, so I don't need to know, like, the best cannon rush builds to go to win those big tournament games. So I personally like to prefer uh, playing it a little bit more safe, uh, a little bit more timid, but I will do certain timing attacks based on what I think my opponent has. But uh, right now, I'm mostly just going to be macroing up here and get back here, Colossus. What are you doing? You, you are wandering out across the center of the map, just trying to get yourself killed. 
which I do not approve of. But anyway, still going to be working on some cannons here, getting out lots of workers as well. And now I am actually going to be going for the double Stargate because in my mind, I was able to kill off a lot of his army, I held off his cannon rush, and I was able to put on some pressure. That's going to tell me, in my opinion, that he most likely does not have a double Stargate. So what that means is he's probably relying on units from one Stargate and then basically getting gateway units from there on out. So if I get a double Stargate, I have air superiority and I have the Colossus for ground superiority. So that was my, my mindset during that game. Not quite sure if that made any sense whatsoever, but uh, it's one of those games where this game is actually closer than you might think. I love the counterattack from him attacking me right now. And you can see my cannons not quite covering each other, which... Either way, though, this is going to give me just enough time to fall back and defend this as the cannons are absorbing a lot of that DPS. The Stalkers here are going to be in pretty good shape. Now, my opponent at this stage of the game actually has huge upgrade advantages on me because you got to remember that he does have the uh, the attack. Uh, he's, 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 ugh. he's had the Forge for a lot longer than I have, and I don't want to reveal that I have Void Race if I can help it, so I'm not going to be sending out that army um, back there to, do, to defend his versus four results. And that is one thing I've really been trying to work on is uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it patience. I would call it uh, a, a awareness of what the weakest part of Protoss is, in my opinion, which is defending multiple locations at once. Protoss are very, very, very bad at that, um, in my opinion. That, that's what I'm bad at anyway. So when I saw those four zealots, I didn't panic. I'm like, all right, we're going to stick to my guns. I sent over a couple of uh, units to deal with that. And unfortunately, my army is completely out of position. And I don't have another cannon there to be able to deal with that DT. So I'm going to have to run these probes away. And uh, unfortunately, I have more probes transferring over there at the same time. So that's very unfortunate for them. Got to grab them. And I do lose a couple. But, uh, you know, even if I lose this Nexus at this point, at least I was able to kill his Nexus, and I probably killed those probes. I actually wasn't paying attention on if they escaped or not, which is kind of my bad. But uh, right now, I could probably go kill him. I really don't want to lose this Nexus, though, so I'm going to go ahead and fall back. It just sucks because this map is so large that uh, dealing with this is going to be a total pain in the butt. So I'm going to go ahead and try and back up in time to do it. Unfortunately, I don't even know if I have any observers with me to deal with this as my poor Nexus is just kind of chilling out not really doing anything. But anyways, even if he kills this Nexus, I already know he doesn't have a third base anywhere else unless he has a super hidden one. And I'm trying to chase this army or around to chase down that DT, but my observer is so freaking slow, man. He's barely out of range. I'm like, where's my observer? I'm trying to kill it by attacking my own stalkers, but uh, that didn't quite work. So I do lose the Nexus, which really sucks. That was that was like 110% my bad. Um, I definitely learned a lot from the fact that I lost that Nexus. However, at this point, I'm pretty sure I do have an army advantage because number one I was able to keep that third base alive longer I got the third base sooner and I have a lot of probes I can actually begin long distance mining here because I have oversaturation on my other bases now my army is a little bit mixed up right now which uh, I actually kind of like because I held off his zealot harass I held off his oracle harass and I held off his DT harass which means that he probably is not feeling very safe to go ahead and move out. If you're wondering what's up with the two Phoenix, basically I just wanted to get out as many units as possible because I was planning to attack. And also I wanted to uh, basically have something to absorb any shots from Void Rays he may have. And as you can see, he does have a lot of Void Rays there. So just having one or two Phoenix in your army absorbing damage uh, is great because those Void Rays were focused on that. But I'm going to be moving in. He does have a lot of Void Rays, which remember basically counter everything Protoss has. But I had a little bit more, and he is going to GG out of that game. We'll take a look really quick here at the score screen just to see what's going on. But I was really proud of this game. Yes, I know there was many mistakes that were made and uh, all of that. But it was actually, honestly, a really good game. And you can see right here, workers active. He was always ahead of me up until the very end when I killed off those. And upgrade spinning was good. Resource collection rate, he was ahead of me for a very long time. And uh, all of that. I always like to look just kind of through the scores really quick to see what they got going on. But uh, anyways, you can see 2v2, he won all five games. So uh, he's higher than uh, he's higher than gold. That that is a little bit a little bit of a lie I, in my opinion. It did say though that last season he was platinum in one v one. So that says to me that I'm playing at around a platinum level, maybe high platinum right now. I am definitely rusty as I haven't played that many one v ones in a long, long time. But remember, guys, your homework right now: go play a one versus one. Leave me a comment down below on how your one versus one game went, and uh, yeah, just report back here. Let me know how it went, and we together shall abolish, destroy, and get rid of ladder anxiety. I've been getting a lot of messages from you guys when I'm logged in saying that you were playing that game because of the ladder anxiety series, which just warms my little heart. So get out there and play some StarCraft. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.
Hello everyone, this is HTS Kiosk here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety action, and I am super excited. Thank you everyone, number one, who is watching this one. Uh, number one, you guys have been super supportive of this series, I appreciate it, it has encouraged me to play much more StarCraft. Number two, this is my fifth placement match. Now remember that they did wipe your MMR with Heart of the Swarm if you switched over, because it's basically a new game, and so all of these placement matches are going to dictate where the game actually puts me on the ladder. So I kind of forget if his portrait is Diamond or Masters, so I just politely ask him there, and he does say that, hey, he is in Diamond. Now the map is Core Hall City, which is a really fun macro map, and you guys know me, I do love my macro. Um, I will be talking about my build a little bit as this game gets underway, but as a friendly reminder, Ladder Anxiety series, it is to encourage players to play more. Every time I play a game, there's no reason you shouldn't be playing one as well, unless you don't own the game, in which case, uh, you can't really do that. So, anyways, if you own the game and are watching this, definitely hop on ladder, play a 1v1, come back to the video, let me know down below how your game went. Uh, I've said this several times, and I'm going to continue to say it every time. I love reading through the comments as I'm going to bed. Don't be creeped out. It's not like we're sleeping together. It just means that uh, you guys crack me up a little bit here. So I am able to scout, thankfully, correctly the first try, which is one out of three chance, man. I usually don't get this lucky, but scouting on the first try is always nice. Homie already has the custom Supply Depot skin, so he has been playing a lot as the game's only been out for a couple weeks, so to, uh, to already unlock that is quite impressive. Not impossible, obviously, as I have been running into a lot of custom skins in the game. But uh, my idea for this game is since it was my first, uh, or basically my last placement match, so my first game before, no, we'll just say last game. So it's the last game before it places me on the ladder, where there are those precious, precious ladder points on the line. So I honestly wasn't feeling that comfortable with my macro here, so what I'm going to be doing is actually doing a weird build that I made up on the fly. I don't recommend doing it. I'll explain the build a little bit as this game's getting underway, at least my thought process behind it. But remember, I am no pro, so you're not going to be seeing this build on uh, Skeet Skeet MLG or something like that. So I kind of made it up on the fly based on what I saw my opponent doing and based on what I know about this map. Now, what do I know about this map? Number one, the ramp leading into your base is rather large. I think it's the largest out of any one versus one map. It is very, very big, very difficult to fully defend, so I'm keeping that in mind. Number two, it is very, very common for players to go ahead and expand first or early and even take an early third just because of how relatively easy it is to defend that third. So you got to remember that the natural is inside your base. So I could have done one of two things. I could have gone for an early expand inside my base, actually gone for Nexus first, which would have been ridiculous. The reason I don't though is because Reapers can be easily built. Um, and also, I've been making a Zealot versus Terran. I've, I've noticed that this is just a, a good habit to have right now, at least for me, because the Reapers are so frustrating. They can get to your base extremely quickly and they can harass you before a stalker's out. So I do like to have the Zealot here just to absorb some of those shots, as I don't know exactly how many shots it is for a Reaper to kill a Zealot, but it's a lot. And at my level of play, players tend not to be able to micro the Zealot to death, and uh, the Zealot not necessarily kills the Reaper, but delays any harassment until I have my stalker out. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be doing my uh, pretty standard harassment, which is very common in TVP right now, which is to go for a stalker, a Zealot if you want one, and then a Mothership Core. Now, I'm going to try and follow it up with another Stalker. We'll see if I actually get Supply Blocked here. But I'm going to go ahead and drop the Stargate here. Now, the Stargate isn't necessarily to harass the Mineral Line. What the point of the Stargate is, is it's going to be part of my build. Now, I want to have a uh, an Oracle in my army, maybe a Void Ray later if I decide to go that route, because I'm going to be putting on some pressure right now. Now, I put the Stargate behind my Mineral Line, and I'm going to put the rest of my buildings towards the entrance, so the chance of scan spotting everything is very low so I'm gonna move up here scout with my mothership core see what's going on he's got one bunker and I'm gonna go ahead and try and run by unfortunately I misclicked it there and all of a sudden this is making me look like a doofus so what happened there is I was gonna run by and hope that he didn't have a lot of Marines and then harass with those units now the mothership core is gonna have to get out of there but uh, that was a, a disaster for me. Let's be completely honest there. Um, the problem with that was is I was going to run by with those units, try to pick off workers, and then time warp the uh, the Marines so I can make a safe escape with the Mothership Corps. Now, what happened is as I was running by the bunker, I clicked on the low ground by accident. The units kind of went around, and then they ended up dying uh, because they decided to retreat because that's what I told them to. So no damage dealt there. I just lost a Stalker and a Zealot, which is huge at this point of the game. So I'm going to fall back and go ahead and uh, deny any scouting. Here's my Oracle right now. Now you have to remember that my opponent 
is walled in nice and tight already. So he's actually playing this out very smart. He's got his expansion already. We know this, number one, because we scouted it. And number two, uh, when we ran those units in there, we saw that there wasn't a whole lot of gas. There wasn't uh, a factory or anything like that. So we already know that he's going for the expansions. So what that means for me is I have got to do some damage or I've got to play a game from very far behind. And uh, considering this is my last placement match, I decided to go ahead and go for harassment instead of relying on my macro. He does have a missile turret right here, so I'm going to go ahead and harass these workers. And I go ahead and go back to my base and macro. Now, unfortunately, the mistake I'm making here is I'm macroing a little bit too long and I misclick again and I lose the oracle. So um, what I should have done in that situation... Um, leaving the Oracle there to harass the mineral line is actually fine. What I should have done, though, is have it kill the SCV making the missile turret first. Um, when I was playing, I did a slight calculation in my head, and the calculation was this Oracle is going to be able to kill all the SCVs here before the missile turret's done. Now, that calculation was incorrect, and I paid the price dearly, but that is why it's a learning experience. That's why StarCraft II is a learning experience, because every single thing uh, can can kick you in the butt if you mess it up just slightly. So you can see a couple misclicks there have so far cost me an Oracle, a Stalker, and a Zealot. Now, on the plus side, I, I caught a glimpse of his defenses. He spent money on missile turrets, and he also has two bunkers at the entrance. That means I'm probably not going to be able to just bust right into his main base with my army. So I decided to build a warp prism here. And this is kind of my last ditch effort to make something happen right now. So I'm going to go ahead and load these guys up inside the warp prism. Um, I'm going to wait here for just a second because I want to wait for more reinforcements on the way, which are those guys right there. And we're going to go ahead and go for it. Now, I do have a few extra probes here and a lot of money in the bank. So I'm not doing an all-in build, but I'm doing a build that needs to make something happen or I'm in a lot of trouble. So the build I actually went this game was not very well flushed out. I highly recommend not doing this. But I found a weak spot in his defenses. I'm going to go ahead and wall our uh, run past here. I didn't mean to do that, but hey, at least I was able to make it. And now all of a sudden we do have a lot of units here. And the battle is going to begin. Now, unfortunately, I didn't use my Oracle in this battle. He would have been extremely helpful. And uh, that was totally my bad. I was too focused on the micro of the Mothership Core. So again, a big mistake there by me. But uh, I'm one of those players where if I'm winning, I don't get flustered. I just focus and try and win um, with the units I have and not necessarily rely on tons of micro. But I do have all the Stalkers alive now. I'm going to go ahead and kill this missile turret just because it's a couple of volleys. And there we go. Able to win that game super, super quick. Now, uh, there was a lot of mistakes that were made in this game, but this is kind of the point of Ladder Anxiety is to show you guys, number one, you can still win even if you make mistakes. You can't let it get you down in the pits. And number two, making mistakes is okay. That's how you learn the game. Uh, even pro players make mistakes. Like, a, uh, was it Sase or Hasuab? I think it was Sase. Uh, at MLG, accidentally had his units on the hold command, ended up losing his entire army in a game that he had already won. So everyone makes mistakes. It now has placed me in Platinum League, which I think is the highest league you can get in with just regular placement matches. I may be mistaken, but uh, I usually always get placed in a Platinum and then have to work my way to Diamond. But uh, anyways, lots of mistakes were indeed made. Definitely not using the Oracle in the last battle I think was my biggest mistake, but uh, I, I wanted to go more of an aggressive build on that map because you got to remember that the Terran player is sitting back making SCVs that entire time. So even though he got that expansion up early, it's not really going to kick in until a little bit later. Uh, later. He's not going to have Widow Mines for defense. He's not really going to have a whole lot of Marine and Marauder. He's got to rely just on Marines. Um, and that build, if I refined it a little bit, I think would actually be quite strong on that map. Uh, but you could see the areas where he could have actually denied that. But uh, anyways, that was kind of my thought process for this map, is that it's a very, very macro-oriented map. The Terran player was turtling, but he wasn't doing like a crazy noob-style turtling. He was going a style where He's working on getting tech and upgrades and all that. So that is what I punished and was able to come out ahead. So, so far, I am 5-0 and through my placement matches. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into another game right now, see how that goes. And thank you guys so much for the ladder anxiety. Make sure to go play a 1v1 and come back here to let me know the results. All right, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HDSKSK here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety series, and this time it is my very first game on the actual ladder. There are real life ladder points on the line, although nothing I can lose, because since it's my first game, my ladder points are currently sitting at zero, but this is going to be my very first ladder game. I think he's trying to scare me a little bit with that Korean, but I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to fall for it, man. I am not scared of you at all. Spawning up the top right side, it is going to be H to the Husky Husky 
But uh, anyways, I believe that this one was a PVT, if I recall correctly. I actually uh, didn't check just because I wanted to cast it on the fly. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's a PVT. The map is going to be Star Station. And for those of you keeping track at home, I'm currently 5-0 and on my placement matches. But that doesn't really mean anything. Four of my placement matches were against like bronze level players. And I definitely know, I can say with 100% certainty that I am not in bronze league. Not that there's anything wrong with being in bronze league. I just know my personal level is past that. So it was a little bit one-sided. I kind of feel bad. Hopefully you guys can forgive me. But now... I'm going to be playing against players my own level and uh, maybe even a little bit higher because it might look at that 5-0 and be like, all right, Husky, we're going to throw someone at you a little bit more difficult to see if you can see if you see if you're mad enough. We'll make a man out of you. That's what Blizzard's telling me right now uh, with their ladder matchmaking. But uh, anyways, this map is quite a large map. Uh, not one of my favorite maps. It's just kind of a I don't know what it is about this map. There's just something that's kind of like Bleh. You, know, you guys know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what it is. Um, it just there's just nothing really special about it, I guess. Um, the gas guys look kind of cool, which I'm always I'm always okay with. But uh, anyways, gonna go ahead and do my standard opener that I usually do, and I'm going to attempt to harass the Terran opponent. We'll see how this goes though, because you gotta remember that I've only played essentially six games since Heart of the Swarm came out, and the opener for Protoss is uh, completely different. If you want to be going for a Mothership Core, you gotta make sure to get your gas quickly enough. So I'm still trying to figure out the opener, and the fact of the matter is I've only played six games, so many mistakes will always be made. However, that is always the point of Ladder Anxiety, is to watch the mistakes and learn from them. Now, a friendly reminder, I'm going to be uploading every single game that I play on 1v1, no matter how bad it is. If I accidentally kill my own Nexus in the beginning of the game and it's a four minute game, I'm gonna upload it. If I lose to a Zorging run by at three minutes, I'm gonna upload it. No matter what happens, I'm going to upload it. Now I did spot the factory up there. I'm gonna go ahead and double check just to make sure minor misclicks gonna cost that probe its life. But honestly, at this stage of the game, losing that probe was worth confirming that there was a factory there. That's going to tell me basically everything about what he's going to do here, which uh, in my opinion, my guess at the time, and what tends to end up being correct, is that he's going to be going for early Widow Mines. you got to remember that Widow Mines are very good versus players who are not prepared for them at all. And so what that means is, is that someone like me has to really realize, okay, we're going to be running into lots of Widow Mines while playing on Har the Swarm. And that that's what I'm preparing for mentally anyway. So I have my Mothership Core out. Got my Stalker on the way. I am supply blocked right now. Um, I believe it is this game. Uh, yes, it's kind of coming back to me right now um, as I play this game a little bit earlier. But it is this game where I do uh, not have any luck with my with my pylon placement. Every time I go to place a pylon, I accidentally place a cannon or I forget to place a pylon. So basically, you'll see me get supply blocked a lot in this game. And you'll see how much it affects the timing of my actually getting maxed out. And then at the end, it'll show you how long I was supply, uh, supply blocked. So this game, I can already tell you without re-watching it and seeing it uh, kind of unfold without focusing on being the actual player in the game, um, that my supply block was definitely my biggest weakness. And it's one of those things where the, the supply block is kind of tricky because with workers, the best thing you can, the best tip you can give to a new player is just constantly build workers. The chances you're going to get to a situation where you have too many workers is very little if you are a brand new player. What I mean by that is that uh, too many workers tends to be like 80 plus, depending on the game. The amount of time it takes to build 80 workers, the majority of low level games are either going to be still on one base or one player has expanded several times and is just overwhelming their opponent. So pylons though are not quite like that because as we've said before, I mean probes and pylons, drones and, S uh, drones and overlords, SCVs and supply depots, you want to be making those the entire game. Um, what I try and do is get the timings right on those pylons instead of just uh, throwing down pylons willy-nilly and being like, oh, I need eight pylons now, so I'm going to do that. Um, instead of trying to do that, what I attempt to do is throw them down right when you need them, but that's never a good idea at my level of play, and I honestly recommend building a little excess in pylons, which I know sounds weird. It may not sound right, but uh, you'll see in this game just how much I actually get supply block. So anyways, I scouted them out. Um, I was going to do the Mothership Core Stalker Harassment at the entrance of the base. The reason I decided not to do that is because since I know he's going for Widow Mines, I know that they could be burrowed anywhere on the map. I uh, get another Observer. Okay, I actually managed to save that Observer, and I see the Widow Mine right here. This is the confirmation that I need that he is indeed going for Widow Mines. So I spotted that. 
and I know that, that he is indeed going to get that. And I don't personally want to rely on my micro at this point. And the reason I say that, I also am noticing these uh, these barracks, by the way. This is huge. That is a big, big tell as to what's going on uh, in his base. So I'm going to go ahead and throw down the Robo because I don't think that Vikings are going to be a threat as I do see also the Engineering Bay. Oh, there's so much to talk about. All right, so... I didn't want to rely on my micro attacking the Widow Mines because Widow Mines take no micro. Here's a drop in my base, by the way, which I did not realize was happening. Um, so I go ahead and transfer those probes. Thankfully, I got the probes away in time, and uh, my Mothership Core gets taken out. And really, you know, they killed a probe or two there. No major loss. And actually, the timing couldn't be better because I already have an expansion, so I'm going to lose very little mining time right here. Um, the only thing is that my observer was slightly out of position. And as you can see, I do hotkey my observers, but when I make multiple observers, I'm still really bad at uh, navigating through through where my observers are. They're just a tricky unit to keep track of, to be quite frank. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move these probes so they don't get hit. But I do have my observer here. The photon overcharge is going to be able to clean that up, and I'll be able to transfer my workers back in. But uh, definitely the, the saving grace of what happened right there is that I was able to spot the I, I was able to spot the widow mines in time and move my probes away because he somehow I, I didn't see the starport in his base I don't know where it's at it might be proxied on the map somewhere he somehow managed to get uh, widow mines into my base which is not good but not as bad as losing probes so the fact that he invested so much in a drop that really didn't do anything I, I assume it's drop he might have actually had a factory down there now that I think about it. Uh, I don't know. Either way, he was able to get those Widow Mines in my base. So I know he's going for a harassment style because I have a feeling he's not going to go for a factory, a drop, or even just lifting the factory into my base and then just stop with the harassment. So in my mind is Protoss, I'm thinking, all right, we are approaching that 10 to 15 minute mark where Terran players really can get a lot of momentum. This is where I'm actually getting a little bit scared. I'm not going to expand. That's a bad idea right now. I'm going to warp in Stalkers at that Mineral Alliance. We can't really do anything about it. I do have one Colossus now done. And again, the Supply Block just absolutely kicking my butt. I don't even need to mention that anymore. But uh, looks like a drop is going to be moving into my expansion as well. And thankfully for me, once again, got to go ahead and grab these probes and get them out of there. Basically, how I detected that is that I heard the Stalker shooting the medevac. This is why game sounds are so important. And I knew, okay, why are my Stalkers shooting? something. So I, I remember in the game I had a quick thought like, alright, I hear things attacking. I'm obviously not telling them to do that. There's something fishy going on here. So I was able to uh, detect where that was before the Widow Mine did anything. Unfortunately, there was that uh, observer getting taken out. Losing observers is something I have got to improve on. I, I end up losing observers a lot. So at this point in the game, uh, I want to tell you how I'm feeling just a little bit so that maybe if you're in a similar situation, you can feel uh, about the same. So first of all, I didn't take damage from the Widow Mine drop. That is huge. Second of all, the second drop of that Widow Mine... Oh, I have a bad rally point right there. Just realized that. I'll have to uh, clean that one up. Unfortunately, the idle worker button's kind of hard to even notice. And I mean, look at look at the bottom left side. Like, who would look at that? There we go. Got those guys going back to work. Uh, minor mistakes are always made in games, though, and that's why practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Although you can't really be perfect at Starcraft. So practice makes you make less mistakes, I think is best the best way to put it. Um, so anyways... Probe saturation a little bit weird because they transferred away. But anyways, how I'm feeling in this game, uh, my supply blocks have been very brutal. And they continue to be brutal throughout this whole game. I remember that he scanned and saw my Colossus. Now, I'm actually happy that he saw my Colossus. The reason I'm happy he saw my Colossus is because I had already planned to go for High Templar anyway. And these Colossus were, were it, it's kind of weird to say it like this, but they were defensive Colossus. Um, I'm also going to be hiding... God, there's so much to talk about, I can't even say it all. I'm going to be hiding expansion down the bottom right side because he has already proven that he is very active with drops on the top right side where I'm at. So I want to hide a base here because I personally feel like he's not going to attack me. The supply block, the, what happened here is I meant to build a pylon and I built cannons by accident. So that is why that supply block is so freaking bad. But uh, anyways, the way I'm feeling in this game is actually pretty good because th there's... I already know what he's doing, if that makes sense. I already know that he went one factory, he used it for some Widow Mines, he used it for some drops, and he has enough barracks to warrant the fact that he is going to be going for Marina Marauder. Now, once again, I am going to be spotting this drop. Go ahead and get my probes out of there. And uh, this is what you have to do as Protoss. You have to find ways to deal with these drops. Notice how the cannon bought just enough time. Photon overcharge again. I'm actually using the photon cannon, uh, photon overcharge to focus down that medevac. And again, I, I know what this player is doing. I don't need to go scout their base. I don't need to uh, do anything like that. I know what he's doing. He's trying to go for... Oh, God. Oh, God, the bad rally point. This is something that I do a lot, and you can't 
do that. That is a big no-no. So that was a rally point from when I made an Observer, and unfortunately I forgot to change it, so my Colossus wandered over there. So that was actually a good play by the Terran player. Also baiting me into the Widow Mine was quite nice. Um, but the, the Viking is not going to be able to kill off any more Colossus. I'm going to go over here and try and kill off a Viking. I'll get one. And that's going to be that. I don't think I kill off the second one at all. No, it gets out of vision. So, anyways, I'm feeling good because I, I, I feel still like I'm dictating the pace of the game. Even though I'm playing very defensively, which is actually just kind of my play style in general. Especially versus, uh, especially versus Terran. He did slip that drop in there, though. And that's going to get lots of probe kills. But uh, I still am feeling okay. I know this sounds ridiculous because I've just been getting slowly whittled down this whole time. But uh, the fact that he's being so aggressive, and I've seen several drops take place, and I was able to kill the medevac, uh, I, I know just based on how the, the game has been going that he doesn't have a third base. And uh, that, that's making me feel very, very good, because yes, I'm losing some of my army, but at the same time, guess what? I just got a Twilight Council up, I can get a Templar Archives, I can work towards my Psy Storm, and I can't emphasize this enough, I know what he's doing. So if I can make it past the 17 minute mark, I'm going to start feeling great because I'm going to get closer to more upgrades. I'm going to get closer to more Psy Storm and my Colossus are always relevant. There we go. Slight misclick there. Not the best place for that. Go ahead and get you guys back into gas. And my saturation is not looking great, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer some workers over. Um, 18 there and 7 down here. Now the reason I didn't transfer probes to this expansion, and I'm literally just building up the expansion um, kind of as is with the one Nexus building all the workers, is because I didn't want him to spot the fact that they were transferring. Like that scan right there, for example, if I transferred workers right when he scanned, he would have spotted it. If he had a widow mine down there, it would kill all the probes. There's a lot of reasons that I didn't send those units there because actually right now I'm feeling okay just on this one, or just on these two bases. Um, normally at a high level game, uh, I wouldn't feel okay, but just how this game's been going, I was feeling just fine. And I'm still dropping cannons down here because I need to make sure those drops don't do lots of damage. I had the expansion down here continually making units, and I have my High Templar out now. Now, what I'm going to do is hide these High Templar a little bit. Um, I am hovering a little bit of money, so I know that I need to throw down additional gateways. And I also have the... Uh, the I need to start researching Psy Storm right now. So basically what I'm going to do is add on some gateways. Unfortunately, my probe's taking the long way around. Um, I definitely felt flustered during this game because my building layout was horrible and I didn't have pylon coverage over my base so I just felt like I couldn't spend my money quickly enough. Um, I definitely didn't have what I would call a groove going on in this game. I have noticed for some reason when I, when I hold shift to build buildings that my computer, I don't know if it's computer or the game, but it just it, it freezes every time I do that. So I gotta kinda figure that out. I don't think it's sticky keys. I, I'm pretty sure I disabled sticky keys. But uh, anyways, that is kind of my thought process so far. I, I would say that I never really got any kind of momentum going that was like, I, you know, nailing all my chronos, nailing my upgrade timing, nailing my, uh, my army composition. But one thing you'll notice that I'm doing is actually hiding my, uh, I, I'm hiding my High Templar. I don't care if he sees the Colossus at this point because you know what homie's doing. He's constantly scanning my army to see what's in there. And he doesn't know about these High Templar over here in the corner of my base. So that is exactly what I want to have happen. Now he may have noticed the Templar archives, but I don't know if he realizes how many High Templar I actually have. Um, I do have a lot of money here, but now that these warp gates are kind of kicking in, um, I'm basically two warp ends away from being maxed out. If you look at it, I have, I believe, nine warp gates, maybe more. There's nine off of cooldown right now. But uh, that's going to be a lot of supply in units. It will max me out. So at this point, I'm feeling really good. The main concern I have uh, isn't really about spending my money. It's just about getting the right unit composition. Notice that I don't have that many zealots. The reason I don't have that many zealots is because I know he's got a lot of uh, a lot of Vikings right now and not a lot of Hellbats um, or, or anything that is really going to put an imminent, imminent threat just by rushing directly at me. So the Hellbats are one. Uh, I almost messed this up really badly because uh, thankfully they were guarded by zealots and they tried to run into the corner right there. But uh, note the feedback on the medevac. I did not want this army to escape because he's been very focused on drops. I think he's been expecting these drops to do a lot more damage. I've been able to kind of weather the storm. Now here he goes. He actually just made a huge mistake right here. You you came to the wrong neighborhood, son. He's going to be running right in my army. And this actually could not be better timing for me. This is literally the second that is best for me. The reason I say that is because I just got maxed out. Uh, my production cycle was up again, so losing a couple units here and there is fine. I just got my Psy Storm, still have my Colossus. His drop got cleaned up, and he decides to attack, which I, I couldn't have asked for anything better there. So really, this game 
what I did incorrectly was get supply blocked a lot. What I did correctly, I th uh, and I didn't scout nearly enough, but uh, I did have a pretty good idea what he was doing the entire game. But uh, anyway, so I would say scouting and supply block were my biggest blunders this game. What I did, I think, okay, was the hidden expansion in the bottom right side, being patient and correctly predicting based on his playstyle what he was going to be getting and dealing with the drops in a relatively cost-effective manner. Um, so, unfortunately, the, the, the recording stops here. I don't show the graphs or anything like that. But uh, I am able to win my very first legit ladder game. So I'm currently 6-0. and Let me know how you guys are doing in your game so far. If you have played six games and if you're following along, just let me know how you're doing so far. If not, let me know how you're doing overall. If you've played more than six games, that's great. Highly recommend that. Um, just let me know how you do down below. And also, if you haven't played your game today, this is what Ladder Anxiety is all about. Go play your next game. Let me know how you do down below. And I love to read them when I'm going to bed. It's kind of cool, kind of fun. Been having a lot of fun with this series. You guys have been so supportive. Thank you so much for everything. But, man, it's going to start putting me against players who will punish me to no end for those mistakes. Don't worry. They're, those players are out there. But remember, I will be casting every single game. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Guest here, and it is time for some more Ladder Anxiety. Now, as many of you know, I have uh, been slacking a little bit on my Ladder Anxiety, and that's actually because my computer's been acting weird, as there were some recent bugs in StarCraft that I believe were actually just fixed with the newest patch. Um, we'll see if that actually is the case or not. Got throw out the GLHF. It is going to be a PvP, and uh, yeah. His name is Zeus, so we'll see if he smites me down. Now, I am going to be doing a live commentary this time, which is not what I've been doing in the previous videos. So talking about strategy and stuff will be a little bit more difficult, but hopefully I can stay relatively entertaining while playing. Although I will say with 100% certainty that it is very difficult to actually focus and talk at the exact same time, but I'm going to do my absolute best. Otherwise, you guys are going to sit back and laugh at me. So that is, that is the thing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and scout out right away. Because I've noticed in PvP that a lot of people will proxy gate me. That's, uh, that's me. There we go. Gotta send out the old little trademarked heart there. If I could trademark the heart in-game, I totally would. Alright, so we got that. But, uh, anyways, lots of people love to proxy and all that in a PvP because it's freaking good, man. It is super good. So I like to scout out right away, see if I can see what is going to be happening. Now, this is a two-player map, so I know where he spawns, but he knows where I spawn. And as long as, if I see a pylon, then everything should be okay, which, uh, I, wait, wait, okay, so the pylon is down here, and he is going to get his gateway just a tiny bit later than mine, and yeah, so at this point, I basically just kind of see what's the gas timing and all that. I do like getting out lots of probes. Now, normally in PvP, you'll see a lot of people foregate. That is actually making a resurgence a little bit in Heart of the Swarm, as players uh, can utilize the Mothership Core to great extents. And let's go ahead and do patrol. It's got patrol all around. See what's going on there. Get another probe going. And yeah, it looks like he's not doing any sort of super cheese ball, which is nice. I like to put my pylon in the back of the base too to potentially hide some tech in a little bit. We'll see if that actually ends up happening or not though. All right, you go ahead and go there. Got to get our good old cybernetics core, which is quite useful. My probe just scouting around the mineral line. And there we go. Whew. All right, so at this point, I'm trying to see, is he getting a second gas? Is he doing, or what is he doing, actually? Uh, okay, so that probe's probably moving out to scout me. That's what I'm going to assume. Not that you should ever assume in StarCraft. That's actually kind of a terrible idea, but that's what we're going to do anyways. Oh, my probe's still staying alive. Being on the patrol command is always quite nice. And let's grab a second gas, just so I have the option. I have the option of using that for something. Might throw his uh, read off just a little bit. And this should be almost done. I'm going to go ahead and chrono boost that out. Because I want to get a stalker right away. To help deal with any probu action that may be showing up at my base. Oh, there it is right there, right on cue. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And he still hasn't taken his gas here, though, which has me a little bit worried. So I'm going to start researching warp gate. Oh, my God, the zealot actually did kill him off. So that's nice. And basically, at this point, we're waiting to see, has he taken his gas at all yet? And I don't see it. Oh, he just now took it, though. That's a little suspicious on the timing. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and work on a sentry in case he does decide to foregate. I should also make more pylons. Those are quite useful. 
And the sentry's gonna be a little bit delayed, so let's go ahead and cancel him for now. And get that. And he does take it out there, so there's no way for me to confirm if it's gonna be a four gate or not. So I'm at least gonna get three gateways. Because his gas timing was a little bit suspicious, though. Um, and by a little bit, I mean a lot suspicious. So, actually what I kind of want to do here, since I'm like super supply blocked, I want to pretend like it's part of my build, is I'm going to work towards DTs, hope he doesn't get them. Although, he, there's no way he's going to get them because he uh, didn't have the gas. I don't think he can actually afford them at this point. So, for right now, I want to drop a pylon here. I like to drop a pylon behind the mineral line to block that little point where probes like to, to be... They, 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 go, they go full stupid and they go around behind the mineral line, which is just kind of lame. And so let's see. I just kind of want to keep these guys out here, make sure there's no pylon set up, and also make sure they didn't put one behind the mineral line. All right, we're going to do it. We are going to go straight for DTs. They are actually really good in Heart of the Swarm. And this guy is going to come set up a pylon over here. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's try and be super sneaky with it. I don't know if this is a good idea. Probably not. Ah, uh, no, we'll put it over here to be safe. We have got to be safe. All right, so we got the uh, warp gate research pretty much done. And gateways it is. And maybe I will try and drop one, like, right here. And go ahead and chrono boost out some probes. So this is, this is going to be a little bit of an economic opener. I want to see if he has an expansion or not. Oh, God, he's going to spot my probe. All right, so Mothership Core, he does have an expansion. All right. All right, this could prove to be interesting. Oh, not my pylon. He spotted it. All right, so maybe I should actually expand on this, and I should still be able to afford the DTs. All right, so we're going to do that, and we'll see how this goes. If he has detection, this could be, this could be a challenge. And by could be, I mean absolutely will be. All right, so DT time. All right, you guys are on the move command, so you go there. And basically, we're going to see just how well this goes. This is a big old gamble. Here we go. All right, we're going to have one guy over here. All right, he is going for air units, unfortunately. Okay, so the main problem right now is going to be the fact that he will have stuff. And I won't. So actually, let's go ahead and just add on more gateways. Because this might actually just cause him to move right on out. And it, it is. It definitely is. So let's uh, let's stay over here. For now, I definitely need some of these. I'm going to leave. No, let's go ahead and cancel this. More pylons. This is going to be a total pain. All right, so his main base is basically dead. This guy... <laughs> This guy's just killing off all of that, but this could easily turn into a base race at this point. So actually what I'm gonna do is run this guy around. Oh, oh, is that, oh, well, there you go. Wait, did I, did I win that with only losing one probe? I think so. I think that I did. Remember that DTs are actually pretty good in, um, in PvP right now, so. Well, there you go. That's, that's a good way to overcome ladder anxiety. So you see kind of where it went wrong for him, which was, that entire time, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to say about that. However, with Ladder Anxiety, the whole point is to upload every single game, and you guys know what your homework is. Go out there and play one game of your own. Come back here and tell me the results. Um, basically, I'm just trying to encourage you to play more StarCraft. Go out there and play a ranked game. That is your homework this time. You do not get to play an unranked game. You have to play a ranked game. That is the only... You gotta do it. Come back here. Tell me how your game went. I love reading through them when I'm in bed, which is, which I know is kind of weird. It's a little bit weird, guys. But uh, either way, so far I believe I am seven, seven and zero. Oh? Is that right? I mean, it's gonna definitely catch up to me pretty soon because my build orders, yes, yeah, so I'm currently seven and zero, oh, seven games, seven wins. But my build orders are very, very, very rusty. That is, that is what I will say. So I will be losing games pretty soon. I do not play at a master's level, so once I start reaching high platinum, low diamond. That is when uh, I, I will definitely, definitely be taken advantage of. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. I was surprised how easy that one was. And I'll see you guys next time. 
Hello everyone, this is HS Guest here, and it is time for some more Ladder Anxiety. I am pretty sure it's putting me against a Masters player. This is not going to go well, but uh, we'll see exactly what happens. I'm pretty sure that's Masters, if I recall correctly, the nice glowing one. I always forget uh, if it is or not. Is that Masters or Diamond? I always forget. There we go, we'll see. It's asking, uh, are you saying, and it's me. Get the little heart. Oh, well, perfect. You shall get a free win then. Aha. All right, so we'll see if I can actually do this. As uh, it is apparently matching me against Masters, it's like, all right, Husky. We put you against Platinum. We put you against Gold. And now, prepare for Masters. Ha ha, troll a little. All right, so we're going to see. Hopefully he doesn't, pro well, I don't think he'll proxy me. He seems really nice. Usually the nice ones don't proxy, but uh, we, we shall find out. I'll say just just doing some ladder anxiety. Don't make me look too bad. There we go. See, if you, if you play on their heartstrings, you start making them uh, being nervous. Itch, itch. Oh, oh, I can't type. It shall. Regardless of outcome. Oh, and I wasted a chrono boost. See, typing a lot, guys, is not is not a good idea. Talking, typing, and casting and recording all at the same time is not a good idea whatsoever. All right, so let's do it. And see, I'm trying to get under his skin. I'm trying to get under his skin, guys. Maybe this will work. That is my that is my master plan. All right, so we're going to try and do... We are going to use the, the fame factor right now. That is 100% my strategy. It's okay. It will only be, be seen like 100K times. All right, no, guys, I'm not bragging. I'm actually just trying to win right now. So I, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try and make it happen. Now I'm kind of wondering if I should go for oh he's already got the second gas. Look at him. He's going for super early second gas. Has me a little bit worried right now. Has me a lot of bit worried. Gotta be completely honest. What what is that second gas for? See, he's already in my head. He is already in my head, man. Alright, so we definitely gotta get the cyber core. Which is always nice. I think his is down right. I think he's just like a million steps ahead of me already. But we gotta stay focused. We have to realize that he is just as scared of me as I am of him. That's what uh, that's what I'm gonna go with, anyways. So he's probably gonna go for a Stargate. That is my guess. And I'm probably incorrect on that guess, but that's okay. I'm gonna save some of my Chrono Boost for the uh, the Cyber Next Core. Because since he got his earlier, I don't want to fall too too far behind in that regard. And he is mining off of the gas there, so that's uh, that's definitely a thing. And he is making something out of there now. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and head this guy home. Go ahead and get that out. Get the warp gate. Have to chrono boost out the stalker because this guy is smart. He's gonna keep the probe in here as long as he possibly can. And we are gonna throw down another pylon. Hopefully, not mess up the supply block. And I'm actually hoping I can kill off this probe. I don't think that's going to happen, though. In fact, I know it's not going to happen. So that probe is totally out of here. Come here, stalker. Let's see if I can chase him down. I don't think so, though. All right, so I'm going to go for... Uh, let's go for a Stargate. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm actually... Call me crazy. But I'm going to go for Phoenix. I know, it's crazy. So my hope is that he's going to be going for the Oracle. All right, that probe is long gone, man. He's probably just hiding it somewhere. He's just going to slip right on inside the base again. But uh, I am going to go for that because if he goes for Oracle, I can kill off the Oracle easily. And if he goes for, oh, if he goes for DTs, I can get Oracles, I guess. So we're going to get out one Phoenix right away, scout out his base. And we'll just, we'll just see how this goes, okay? I, I don't know how it's going to go. Probably poorly. All right, we're gonna get the Phoenix out. And definitely leave the Stalker over here. Do not want any pesky probes. Let me make sure there's nothing hidden over here. Knowing my luck, there's a pylon here or something. All right, there's not, there's not. So far, so good. And we do have the Phoenix on the way right now. <sighs> All right. Chrono boost that bad boy out. Warp gate is almost done. All right, well, here we go. So I'm going to try and let's see. Oh, he got a Phoenix too. Oh, God, this all of a sudden got really awkward. 
I think that that is like a legit Phoenix as well. So, yep. Oh no, it's a fake one. He has fooled me. Fool me once, shame on me. All right, well, now he knows what's up. So I'm wondering if I should actually just go for Zelts for now. Obviously get a pylon. And we are gonna scout out. We do have the Phoenix continuing. I'm gonna leave one Phoenix behind for now. So I don't think he's gonna be able to kill these, but what I'm going to attempt to do is expand. And looks like he just has sentries over here. But I feel like I can just kill off one of these. And pick up this sentry. All right, we at least killed that off. I don't know if I can actually kill off the mothership core though. All right, does he have DTs? No, he he does have a Stargate. He like has a legit Stargate. All right, so we are going to just keep this for now. All right, there you go. Chase him down. Yes. Oh god, so far we are doing okay. All right, losing a couple probes to that, that is fine. All right, so far I'm actually feeling not not atrocious right now. So we are going to see, I killed off the Oracle. Hmm. The supply block is going to be an issue. So we're gonna go for that, keep getting probes. Let's see what we got going on. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and stay over here. All right, I don't think I can kill him with this, but I'm going to try. All right, he is gonna use photon overcharge. That is a bit of a nuisance. And by a bit of a nuisance, I mean a lot of a nuisance. All right, he is warping against several, several units here. At least I can kill the mothership core. And no, no, Phoenix! All right, I did lose a Phoenix. That's okay, though. Con All right, I know what I'm doing now. I have my plan. My macro has slipped a little bit. But I have a plan. Hey, whoa, there is a pylon over there. Which has me a little bit worried. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get an oracle here. This, this oracle is basically just going to be for detection. I should definitely transfer some more of these guys. All right, I was trying to see if there's any DTs on the way. Kind of hard to tell right now. Hopefully there is not. I should make at least one sentry though. Those are quite useful. All right, 15 probes there. All right, I think I'm gonna be okay. I mean, fingers crossed here, but... Oh God, that is a DT. I freaking knew it! All right, so we do have the Oracle. All right, where's that DT at? I can hear him. All right, we gotta chase that down. Let's go ahead and drop a Forge. Actually, I'm gonna need a Robo. Oh no! This is what I had feared about. I'm pretty sure this is going to be it. I think that's going to be it. That was a lot of probes just now. Oh god, you have to tab like a million times to pick this guy up. Alright, well we learned some very valuable things. Which was, don't do that. Alright, so at least though I did have a good read on what he was doing. So that, that I feel good about. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything to kill this, so... Unless one Archon's gonna save me. This could be a lot of trouble. All right, we'll cancel that. Just to get some more money. All right, so we're gonna see, this is not, this is not looking good though. I can definitely not kill this, but we're gonna try anyways. But this game, I do know exactly what I did wrong, which I'm actually really excited about. Oh, he got an Archon too, so he's he is all about this, man. This is this is definitely not good. Haha, -ha, GG! Didn't deal with the DTs correctly. Well played, well played. Alright, so that is gonna be my first loss, but I'm actually excited about it 
because uh, he was a Masters player. So that is that is all right, and I know exactly what went wrong there. I did have a good idea of what he was doing the majority of the game. Um, really, all it was is I I didn't have the Oracle with my army quickly enough, so that was that was not good. But uh, let's look at the graphs here really quick. You can see I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe on workers. I was doing just fine right there. Um, upgrade spending didn't really matter at this point. Resource collection, I was actually exactly the same time on the expansion. And the army value, I'm actually kind of curious about this. Um, yeah, so right about here, this is when I, I messed up that first attack. And this right here is going to be the DTs. So if I actually had detection in position, I would have been able to stop that. And then obviously this is lower right here because I didn't have any income at that point. So at the 720, if you take a look at the income, uh, this is right where I was plummeting, which is right where I got behind on the army. So actually that game I feel really, really good about. Um, I definitely just needed to deal with the DTs. I knew they were coming, but I just didn't deal with them correctly. So if I was to have gone back at that phase in the game, um, I definitely think that I could have dealt with that. Actually, let's just, let's just watch the replay really quick. Um, because I think that that's a really, really good learning thing where I, I kind of predicted correctly when the DTs were going to be there, what he was going to do. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I didn't deal with it. So I got to hand it to It's Sonic. The DT switch was really smart. Um, I kind of felt like when I killed his Oracle, I was actually in a commanding position. And what I should have done instead of going for High Templar is I... Now, now that I think about it, I think what I should have done is thrown down the Robo earlier, not gone for Templar tech, and instead just go for Observer uh, Colossus with mixed in with normal units. Because you got to remember that at that point, he can't go for Oracle. He's got to be scared to go for Void Rays because I've already scouted it. And there's nothing that I think would have been better for me. So, yeah, that's uh, that was actually a very, very good lesson here. So the expansion right here for me, um, his expansion I think is just a second or two earlier. Actually, they're almost at the exact same time. Uh, they're almost down to the second at the same time there. So I actually, if I would have had a Robo mixed in here instead of this Twilight Council, this game would have gone so much better. And you can see even right here on the attack, after killing off his Oracle, we were actually tied for, uh, whoops, apparently I typed a plus to myself. But uh, what I should have done, and uh, yeah, so basically what I should have done is two things. Number one, I should have kept scouting with the, uh, with the Phoenix. I should have definitely spotted this right here. But if we take a look at this point, I think I actually ended up losing a couple of probes at this point. Yeah, hang on, let me go back just... Just a wee bit, right before the DTs actually get there, uh, which I believe is right here. All right, so if you look at the income, it's basically the same. I'm just transferring my probes into gas here, so that's going to be caught up, and I'm transferring the probes down. So I would have actually had better saturation on my bases right there. And uh, is this when he's warping? Okay, so he's just moving out the first DT right here. And, okay, yeah. So nothing else has happened right here. So you can see I have a slight worker lead. Um, Army, he does have 10 stalkers, but they are also completely out of position up here. He also has blink as well. So I think if I would have had a robo right here and some immortals, that would have been ideal. But since I was a, a way late on the scouting, which is totally my fault, that is, uh, that's kind of where it went wrong here. So I actually am, am really proud of this game. Uh, minus the complete crumbling against the DTs. But yep, they get inside the main base. I have Templar tech on the way. Unfortunately, I don't have my robo. And he's just going to execute all these units, which is quite unfortunate. So that poor DT right there. Or not the poor DT, man. He's having a hell of a time. Those four probes. 17 kills, which is basically unrecoverable at this point. I mean, there's no way I can recover. Because he finally transferred down his workers. He got them uh, working and all that. And then at this point, I mean, it was way too late. Absolutely nothing I could have done. So anyways, lesson learned. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gusky here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. Now, I'm going to be honest, I haven't played for about a week because I've been traveling, so this could be an absolute disaster. Now, if you didn't watch the last game, I would say I fared okay versus the Master League player, but that was when I was all warmed up and I had been playing a lot of games. I have not played very many uh, recently because of my trip to New York City, GLHF. Uh, well, he, he took, well, man, he was, he was all about saying that animation. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what he's saying. I, I don't get it, guys. I just don't get it. So we're going to do the face that we always use when we don't actually know what's happening. All right, I didn't see what race he was. He is a Zerg player. Ooh, ooh, I don't know about this. Uh, I do not really trust in my Forge Fast Expand. So, uh, oh, she's trying to drop the girl card. She is trying to drop the girl card, guys. We're not going to fall for it, though. 
We are not going to fall for it. We are in try hard mode. We are in neck beard mode. We are in we don't got no time for no girls mode. Uh, so if I lose to a drunk woman, though, that's going to be that's going to be something I can never live down. All right. So here we go. Going to go ahead and send the probe out. Going to be scouting right away. Now, I am going to throw down a gateway first if I don't spot. Oh, uh, you're not over here, are you? No, you're not. All right, so it is going to have to be a gateway. It is going to have to be a gateway. And we will throw that there. I kind of really want to expand, though. I really want to go for a two-base play. Is this music super loud for you guys, or is that just me? No, it's pretty loud. It seems loud in my ears. Not quite sure what's up with that, but we will. Here, I, I can actually turn it down. Uh, there we go. There we go. It's going to be more quiet in my ear anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and go for the gas. I really should be saving up for an expansion, but uh, whatever. Whatever. We're playing this out like we're Oh, my guy scouted the wrong way, didn't I? Of course I did. Of course I did because that's just kind of how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and chrono boost those guys out. I think what I'm going to do here is expand. It's kind of a stupid call. In fact, I nah, mm, it's really tough. It is really tough these days to know exactly what the right thing to do is. All right, so we're going to go for, we'll go for the cyber core and then also drop another pylon. That would be good. Another pylon would be great. We're going to keep making probes for now. And he does have a spawning pool already, or she has a spawning pool, apparently. The I, I feel like it's actually a man trying to mind game me, and I am not going to fall for it. All right, so we're going to get the zealot on the way because I want it. I want it right now. And those, oh, oh, no Zerglings, no Zerglings just yet. And, are, oh, am I, baiting, am I baiting any of your guys away? Not quite yet. Not quite yet, aha! That was my plan all along. That was my plan all along. All right, so what we're gonna do is run this probe away. Overlord is going to spot me, unfortunately. There's that. And uh, let's go ahead. This Overlord is going to be very confused when he gets here. And so am I. So am I. Trust me. So we're going to go ahead and do the expansion. And we do have the Stalker on the way and the Mothership Core. So here we go. This uh, Stalker should actually be able to kill this Overlord. I think so, anyway. I think so. Go ahead and start that. Zealot's going to go for the Zergling. That Overlord is so dead. At least I hope so. We're going to go ahead and start sending this guy out there. I don't, I don't actually know what this build is evolving into, but I will take it. Yes, kill the Overlord. Got it. Got it. I know, you're very sad. That's okay, though. That is okay. I do not care about you. You are my opponent. He was being mean. There we go. We got we to soften them up. Make them think that I care about their feelings. But I obviously don't. Oh, my God. Is that another base over here? Is that is that another base already? Oh, this person's playing greedy today. This person is playing super greedy. No, no. Go for the queen. Go for the queen. Got to make sure to keep this going. Got to go ahead and drop that. Drop another pylon. Keep making more probes. Got to get that time warp up in here. All right. Well. All right. Well, I will. I will take this. I am going to end up losing these units, but uh, I am kind of okay with that. Definitely got to go for those. Uh, unfortunately, my warp gate's actually not done yet, and I don't have any more units. So hopefully, this hopefully this ends up going okay. We shall see. You're going to be part of that. Come on, Warp Gate. Come on, Warp Gate. I need you now. Uh, I don't think I can kill that queen with this, but six kills on the Mothership Core. I will take that, and I believe the Mothership Core will survive. Uh, so there's that. Got to go ahead and get this started. And nope, you guys come back over here. All right, there's that. And Martian Core, go ahead and head on back. Oh, no, I may end up losing my pylon. We're just going to go ahead and drop another one of those right away. Thankfully, I don't really care about those Zerglings getting into my base because they should be fine. Got to get that probe out of there. 
Alright, this isn't too bad. This actually is not going that badly. I'm gonna be okay. It is gonna be a okay. Your ling is so dead. Alright. There's that. And we do need more guys in gas, though. That was one thing that I have definitely messed up so far. And let's go ahead and drop another pile on here. Get that forge going. Oh, yeah. Heavily delayed on the forge, but that's okay. I wonder, actually, where's my mothership core at? Did I, did I lose the mothership core? Nope, it's somewhere. So it's it's going to be... Oh, there it is. Okay. That actually wasn't too bad. All right. Let's go ahead and move out to that expansion. I don't know if I delayed them as much as I'm hoping I did. And I think, actually, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and drop that. This is, this is kind of a weird thing I'm doing. We're going to put the cannon. All right, let's see what they have up here. They do have a spine crawler. Oh, God, that's a lot of lings. That is a lot of Zerglings. All right, we definitely need some more of this. Get some gas up in here. So basically, I'm trying to be aggressive while with not letting my macro slip, but uh, I haven't been doing the worst job. I did get supply blocked here a little bit. I do have blink now, so remember that. Apparently, I made one more gateway. All right, let's go up here, make sure there's nothing at the tower. Unfortunately, well, maybe I can kill the Overlord. I don't really know if that's going to be worth it. I'm basically just trying to scare him right now. I don't know if I have enough to kill that off just yet. So we're just going to go ahead and go back. And should get this pretty soon. I actually probably should have went with not. I should have went DTs actually. Looking back, I think DTs would have been the correct choice. All right, so we'll grab the watchtower for now. Oh, the link down here. I'm trying to scout it out. All right, so let's see. Let's just go ahead and go for these for now. We gotta get charge going. And you are just gonna go ahead and do that. Actually, no, let's do the attack upgrade. upgrade complete. All right, let's go ahead and try and kill these guys. All right, I'm feeling okay, actually. Feeling kind of okay anyway. My main problem is that I don't have. All right, let's get. Oh, I can't get another one of those. I don't have zealot legs, I think. Why? Well, I know I don't have zealot legs, so I don't know if I can actually get zealot legs or not. All right, for now we're gonna go ahead and kill this. And I do want to send out a probe. Oh, they're actually in full retreat at this point. So it is a lot of roaches. Which I am actually going to be okay with right now. I think I have scared them enough not to have a ridiculous amount of units. But I could be mistaken. Don't know if this is actually enough. Oh, we got Hydras now. That is that is many, many units. Unfortunately, I don't I wish I would have got Psy Storm now. I haven't really been able to scout, which is kind of a problem. In fact, this is a very, very big problem right now. 
Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to have Storm in time if they decide to attack. Let's go ahead and cancel that. I will have lots of Zealots, though, so that's a thing. Unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck on gateway units, so my main problem is going to be that. That is a big problem. They have four bases. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so the problem with my aggression is that it didn't do enough. Oh, my poor probe. What did he ever do to you? Alright, so I will have enough for Storm. But being stuck in all these charge... Oh, I don't even have charge, do I? This is going to be a big old problem. We're in trouble here, guys. We are in trouble. That I can tell you for sure. All right, we'll see. I, I don't think it's gonna work. I have a feeling this is not going to work. Oh my god, maybe it will. Maybe it will. Upgrades are pretty good. I don't think I can actually do anything off of this, though. I think I lost my probe, too. And unfortunately, I don't have a proxy pylon, so that's going to be a problem. So we'll try this. I think they're just going to reinforce this though and kill me. This is looking. This is looking not good. Yeah, definitely not looking good. Come on, Archon, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, this is not going to be up. That's so many Hydras. Oh god, it's so many. It is so. What are their upgrades? Ah, oh, they got the plus one now. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna have enough to do anything. Just gotta keep the pain on. I don't think how do you think I'm gonna get the hatchery now? Oh no. Being stuck on gateway units for this long is, is bad news. I definitely should have uh, switched out of this a while ago. Well, guys, I think that may be it. I've been behind for quite some time. And the creep spread is actually not bad. I'll give them that. I will give them the creep spread. Because I don't actually have any detection whatsoever, so that's kind of a problem. Of course there's a Zergling there. There's always a Zergling there. Oh, oh, that's, that is a lot of Zerglings. That is a lot of Lings, guys. I think that's going to actually be it. I think that will definitely be it. They should have a huge e economic edge on me right now. But I actually kind of like how I played the beginning. I just didn't, I never expanded off of that. So I got stuck on this, and that is no good. Oops, I chrono boosted that, but hey. This game is pretty much done at this point. Let's see, I can't get any more upgrades. I'm gonna get one more Archon and a bunch of Zealots, but that's gonna be, that's pretty much all I have. All right, well, at least I have a good angle right here, but still not going to be... I, mean, I might be able to kill this off, but they can just focus fire my units from here on out. Yes, Ro, you may begin the blending. I'm in pretty bad shape as it is. Oh, God, that's so many Hydras. That's going to be it. That is going to be it. But, hey, at least I was able to kill the reinforcements. Pure gateway units, not good. Their upgrades are ahead. This is going to be it. That is going to be it. So I'm kind of curious. I think I was behind for a lot of that because I didn't expand when I was being aggressive. And since I was unable to kill one of the bases, uh, they were able to just keep macroing ahead. So let's see. I at least got a lot of experience for that for some reason. Yeah, so they, they had a lot more workers, which is to be expected. But uh, I was only on two base. I'm kind of curious in the army value. Yeah, I mean, I did okay. I was going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but if you're wondering, Rose actually making food right now. 
to fill my empty stomach after that sad, sad loss. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I definitely, I got stuck on gateway units. And the thing you have to remember is that you can never get stuck on gateway units versus Zerg or... Uh, actually, I'm kind of curious if I watched the replay. Um, if I would have went for Storm... Uh, the problem is, is that I wasn't scouting. Well, there's a lot of problems about this game. But I wasn't really scouting, and so I didn't think that Storms were going to be useful. But I didn't realize there was going to be Hydras. And that was a, a part of the big problem there. So, getting stuck on two base is no good. Good job, Catherine, kicking my butt. And I'm just kind of curious here. Scouting the wrong way is never good. Because I actually wanted to play really greedy and go for a Nexus first. I just hate going for Forge Fact Expand. Actually, putting this on the low ground would have been nice. The problem is, is that if you do get six pooled, you automatically lose. Because you can't make any units at all. Which is no good. So the early third base, I might have actually... Let's see... Yeah, I feel like I shouldn't have lost those units so early. Um, I did force a lot of lings. The time warp is okay. And I got a couple of kills there. Worker kills was six. But the problem is that since they're already on six base, uh, I'm in a lot of trouble. I did get blink. I think what I probably should have done here is, uh, is since I was going for blink, I don't think I could have killed that with what I had. Yeah, I didn't have enough to kill that off, so backing out there was actually good. Um, instead of going for a Twilight Council here, since I already had Blink, what would have been really, really, really good, especially since there's 12 drones right here, is if I would have thrown down just about four, five, six gateways total, um, added onto this way earlier, and then I think I could have won with just a Blink Stalker all in. Um, because they still, yeah, they still didn't have that much. They weren't scouting me. So I think going with the Blink Stalkers, I already had um, plus one on the way. So yeah, I definitely could have done a lot more there. Army Supply 43. Yeah, I think it was going to have to be Blink Stalkers. That was going to be the correct choice, I feel like. But I got to hand to Catherine. Her, uh, her macro is pretty good as far as how much money she was getting. And then she eventually cuts into it right there. Lots of roaches on the way, but I got stuck on... I should have actually expanded like right now and secured a third base with uh, some sort of tech to back it up. But the problem is that I kept adding on gateways, and getting stuck on gateway tech is not good. Not good. I had nowhere near enough uh, nowhere near enough Archons to make gateway really worth it. And I was feeling okay right here because my supply wasn't that bad, but the Hydras unfortunately start to kick in. And actually, I'm kind of curious. On the units lost, I was actually doing really good. You can see right here I was doing good, and then I over uh, overextended. And then I had... I. Uh, I didn't have enough for Mass Recall because of the Time Warp. I almost did, though. Almost had enough there. End up losing that. And that this is definitely where the game starts to favor them because I lose a lot of stuff there. It evens it back out. And then, unfortunately, for Protoss, you can't be even like this. You have to be cost-effective. You have to be cost-effective at this point in the game. If there are four bases here or two, you can't go in even exchange. You have to do more than that. So, unfortunately, the Storm did not land how I was hoping. Um, if you're wondering why I was on the move command, that was because I didn't want them to be able to run from the storms. And again, I'm, I mean, I'm going toe to toe, but you have to be more cost effective than that. You cannot be even, because they're just going to follow it up with the production. You can see right here, uh, 18 roaches, 14 hydras. So again, even though I was evening out the units lost, they, I, I was never able to do any sort of harassment. So that is why they were able to uh, defend this attack. And at this point, the game was already lost. But I hung in there because the Stalkers had good upgrades. And they are somehow able to hold on for a while. But, uh, you know, again, doing this is not worth it. You have to you have to be expanding. You either have to kill them or expand. Being tied in that regard is not going to cut it. And at that point, I think I was pretty much screwed. There's really no recovery. Uh, let's see. Yeah, my army supply is at nothing. I'm trying to warp in units, but I mean, they're already maxed out. They're maxed out at this point. 200 supply to 100. And again, I mean, I'm able to hold on. I'm able to make the units lost tab be deceiving. But uh, again, the problem is no expansions and no tech. So I, I should have either done a Blink Stalker all in, or instead of adding on those gateways, I should have went with, um, with some sort of tech at that point. Like Colossus, for example, would have been beautiful there. So uh, anyways, going to be my second loss. I believe I'm currently 6-2. But I'm going to keep playing because I need to get more warmed up. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. 
Hello everyone, this is HGS Guest here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. Oh, apparently my computer is not liking this game. Oh, and we're back. Alright, so we're going to be going against a Terran player named Ace, which means that I actually don't have to uh, forge fast expand, which I'm really excited about, although the map is going to be Core Hall City. And uh, I am casting this while also playing, which adds an extra level of intensity to, uh, to the game. GLHF, it's uh, me. All right, there we go. But uh, I am going to be casting this while playing, which makes it quite tough. But I am up to the challenge. Ooh, it is a lot of work as if this game isn't hard enough. My computer's beeping at me. I'm not sure if that picked up. I'm sure it did, though. Just my luck. And I'm trying to think, should I go for a macro game? Should I try and end it right away? Because I can't win in the mid game. That's just not going to happen, guys. You cannot win. I feel like you cannot win anyways. Uh... You know what? Let's let's go for an expansion first. We're gonna do it. And if he rushes me, so be it. This is this is what we call a big risk and a kind of okay reward that's not really worth it. This is like going on a a a, 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 a TV show where you're risking your life and you could win a hundred dollars. We'll uh, we'll see if it ends up being worth it or not. I assume that it is not going to be. Maybe. There we go. Got it. Got to tease at it a little bit. Oh, wait, wait, I'm not doing that. I'm going for the expansion. We are going for the 14 Nexus? Is that when we want to do it? Sure. Sure, that sounds grand. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to expand. No, we'll do 15. We are going to expand on 15. This is probably a really bad idea. Do not try this at home, kids. Oh, this, this may just make me look really, really dumb, which is fine. Which is fine, because I already look pretty darn dumb. Oh, God, the SCB found me. Oh, God, the SCB found me. All right, now thankfully, he's not going to be blocking my expansion because that would have been, that would have been the worst. All right, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead and drop a gateway before building another probe, which is not like me. It is not like me at all to do something like this. Cutting, cutting any amount of workers is not my place now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right there, and we're going to continue pro production right now. And actually, I do need another pylon, don't I? All right, so let's go ahead and just put a pylon. Well, where do I want it? How about here? Get a little coverage going on in the base. And no one's home over here. So we're going to go ahead and head out to the other one. Pylon should be done right around when this probe is finishing up. Got to drop that. Got the pylon almost on time. He was, he was a little bit late to the party, but that's okay. Go ahead and go for the cyber core. All right, and there's that. And of course, no one's home here as well. We should keep track on how many percentage of the games I scout the incorrect way. It's gotta be a very, very high percentage. It has to be. I'm gonna make a zealot. Absorb some of those marauder shots should it come down to it. And also there's a chance of early reaper. Which would be kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll see. We shall see. Just want to make sure I do not get supply blocked. All right, this one is now done. All right, I didn't see what he has, but he does have a bunker, which has me a little bit excited. All right, go ahead and chrono that one. Oh, Zealot, you have a job. Your job is to kill this SCV. Okay, I have a feeling that he also expanded. That's kind of the kind of the vibe I'm getting from him. And we'll go ahead and start rallying them up here. Take two of you guys. You're going to go up there as well. And let's go ahead and go for this. And you know what? I'm going to get a little crazy with it. Again, I would not recommend this for your games at home. Would not recommend this at all. All right, you guys are going to go in there. And oh god, it's a widow mine. It is a widow mine. I'm here in the shadows. Alright, are you gonna are you gonna activate on that? Alright, there you go. Kill the zealot. Alright, I don't think he got uh, anything else on my base. So that should be fine for now. I do need to get uh, a detector though. Alright, and for now we're gonna go ahead and go up over here. Because I'm really bad at remembering how long it's been. And we are going to be adding on them gateways. 
You know what? If you want to kill my probes one by one, go right on ahead. You guys can actually go in there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get that. This isn't what I really wanted to do, but we'll, we'll go with it. We can, uh, we can, we can survive for now. What I wanted to do is go for air, because going for air on this map is just hilarious. And you, Stalker, are going to be there. Should have... Oh, oh, he does... Is that a factory? There has to be a factory over Oh my god, it actually fits up there? Are you kidding me? Oh god, alright, so... Let's see. Alright, you guys go kill that. I did not realize a factory could even fit there. All right, so you go ahead and do that. Oh, God, I don't have enough money for that. Oh, Widow Mines. Oh, Widow Mines. That was so stupid because I, like, totally scouted there, and apparently, apparently that was not enough. All right, well, at least I have Warp Gate now, so that's nice. Just going to continue doing this. Got another Stalker. Oh, I should have moved those earlier. That's okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the observer up here. Oh, God. GG! Alright, so that's why you scout for proxies. Uh, I thought I had actually scouted the entire, the entire base, but it turns out that I didn't. So basically what he did, obviously the proxy, but he was doing a very, very aggressive game. And that is why expanding first is very, very risky. Uh, but basically, I feel like the Widow Mines didn't straight up kill me, but they definitely kind of screwed me over. So I'll do another one, because that one was quite silly. Um, I, I definitely do like to do... I, I prefer to do macro games, but that's why if, you, if you're a macro player, you have to watch out for stuff like that, because 99% of people, uh, it feels like, who play StarCraft are not actually macro players. They like to try and win as quickly as possible, which is exactly what we saw in that game. Uh, in the game before that, that you watch on my channel, they were they were more macro than I was, which was pretty, uh, pretty intense there. So, uh, GG to our Terran player. There was basically no way for me to stop that since I let the Widow Mine do too much damage. It was, it was definitely way, way too much damage. All right, so we do have Falsy, who is going to be a Zerg player. See what he's got. It's going to be Star Station. He's even higher level than me, although levels don't really matter because you, be, you can be level 90. Yes, you can get to level 90 in this. You can be level 90 by just playing versus AI. GLHF, there we go. I have a feeling since that last guy knew me, he knew I was going to go macro, because I, I, I talk about that a little bit too much in my videos. And that's a me. We'll see if he decides to be aggressive versus my uber macro. We'll, uh, we'll find out. All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to, once again, we're going to try the same build. We're going to go for Nexus first, which is not recommended, but we're going to do it. Let's see. Let's put that one, two, three. Let's put that there. And we shall attempt to scout around. We are going to go for Nexus first here, unless I scout him and he already has a spawning pool. Then it will be a forge. Pylon is a little bit late. Not not the worst time to pylon, though. I have had I have had far worse pylons than that, that is for sure. Alright, let's go ahead and chrono that. I'm probably going to scout the wrong way. How much you guys want to bet? And, oh yeah, three for three on scouting the wrong way. So he's probably in the top left side. Knowing, knowing my luck. But uh, we are going to go for it anyways. We are going to make this happen. It's going to be fine. Everything is going to be okay. I hope. Fingers crossed. We're going to see if playing Risky is worth it at all on ladder. I have a feeling that it is not. It is not going to be worth it. That is, my, that is just my guess. All right, let's see if I can scout the right way this time. All right, are you up here? Of course you're not. All right, well, you know what? This is not what you're supposed to do, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have him grab some minerals. We got the probe on the way. And hopefully he did not go for a spawning pool super early. Although usually Zerg players will go for a pretty early pool. And I'll go ahead and drop that there. Return the cargo. 
And also, I'm going to need another pylon. Which, actually, dropping the pylon in your main base is ideal. Alright, let's see. Oh, he actually did go for a uh, hatchery first build, it looks like. So I'm going to be okay. I am going to be A-OK. -okay. Hopefully. At, at least until the part where I start to lose. Then that's, then that's when it gets a little bit bad. Oh my god, I think I'm going to win this battle. I think I'm going to win. I think I'm going to win. Oh yeah! 50 XP, baby! So if nothing else, at the end of the day, I got 50 XP. Which I am definitely okay with. Alright, also gotta drop a cannon here. And just keep those chronos rolling. Alrighty, so... Oh, that was an overlord. Still no zerglings. So I should be more than okay. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and go down there. I do need... Let's see... Hmm. I think I should build another pylon here. And I'll go ahead and take the double gas now. Might even add on a third gas. Actually, let's just go ahead and sacrifice this guy. See what's kind of going on in there. Gotta get our cyber core up. And let's see what we can see. If anything. I actually need to know if they're a third base. That is that is the question on my mind. Are right, you guys go there? Let's go ahead and grab one more gas. And do need to make the zealots. Alright, we do have lots of probes at that base now, so we're gonna start working on this one. Didn't see a base down there. Start that warp gate. And let's see. I'm going to drop another pylon up here. Okay, so he does have a third base over here. So we do have a slight gentleman's agreement. Which means I'm going to work on the plus one. You are going to hold there. And let's see, you go back to work. I'm trying to think of what it is I actually want to get. Oh, I didn't actually see what all those were. Oh, let's see, I can go for the robo for now. Get two extra gateways. I'm trying to think of maybe I should go for air. I mean, air is okay. It's just securing a third base right now is going to be tough. So, actually, let's go ahead and drop another pylon. You guys go ahead and go into the gas. And I can go ahead and get a mothership core out. Once a couple more probus are done. Let's see, I kind of do want to go for air though. I just don't know. Let's go ahead and get that. We're not going to go for air. No, no, go ahead and get the uh, observers going. Actually, yeah, let's build two of them. And I think extra gateways is going to be just about fine. All right, so I do have lots of workers now. I also have the Mothership Core. So I'm trying to think of where I should keep this. I'm gonna boost that out, get another attack upgrade. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of units now as those are quite useful. All right, so we're gonna see what he has. I must start Immortal for now. I do need more pylons. That is uh, highly recommended. Do I have one on the way? No, oh, I made gateways, not pylons. Oh god, he does have a spore crawler. Let's see, I wonder if I can kill these off. Go ahead and throw down a nexus. Yeah, I know, I need more pylons. I actually need to start making units, though. Let's go ahead and go for this. Go ahead and go over there. Did I ever get my extra observer out? I don't think so. Let's 
starting to get a lot of money, so I'm just going to keep making zealots. Get charge. I think we're going to be... I need to figure out what unit he's actually getting. That's kind of the problem. Just going to research storm. Oh, we do have some roaches. This is where this is where the economy starts to Oh god, he does have hydras, okay. Alright, so I'm kinda curious to see if I can actually get Storm out in time. Feel like the answer is probably not. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of guys over there. That is a lot of units. All right, so we'll see. I don't think I have enough to actually kill this. All right, where are my stalkers at? I got to get those. All right, I might be able to intercept this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to kill it, though. Unfortunately, I don't have side storm just yet. I almost do. Oh, and he was on the move command, so that makes it quite nice. All right, so I was able to kill that, but at the same time, I kind of lost a bunch of units. So let me see. If I go for that, you guys turn to Archons. Where are you guys going? Oh, God. Uh, where are you guys going? Come back. Come back. Uh, I got to spend this money. This is apparently is not enough gateways. Gotta try and spin this, go ahead and throw this, more pylons. Uh, I was hoping that this would not happen. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is throw, go ahead and throw down this. Still low on gas, apparently I have two guys in here. That's gonna hurt that a little bit. Alright, we're gonna see if this doesn't go well, I can just mass recall out. All right, we're at least going to kill something here. I'm going to try and focus this down. Actually, we kill this really quick. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and retreat for now. So thankfully, my upgrades actually aren't that bad. All right, we definitely need to send like the majority of these guys over there. Oh, I just need more, uh, let's see, go ahead and get this. Get them gateways going. And get extended thermal lance. All right, so this is actually starting to roll a little bit. But uh, we'll see. All right, thankfully I do actually have cannons up in time. So no counterattack for him. And Chronobos out that. My charge. I think I need an observer too. I do almost have plus three attack though, which is really, really good. Fortunately, I don't have pylons, which is really, really bad. All right, the supply blocks this game have definitely been atrocious. Yeah, no, I know about those pylons. We're going to start working on the upgrades right away. I really hope he doesn't have this watchtower. That'd be embarrassing. All right, no, he doesn't have that. All right, so I think I should actually be okay to attack right now. Let, let's find out if my macro build was enough. I'm basically maxed out, which actually maxed out at this point in the game is not that bad. I'm actually okay with being maxed out at this point. Alright, so hopefully... Oh god, that was a move command. Alright, so he does have all uh, Roach Hydra. 
needed extra su- Oh wait, wait, needed extra supply. Thanks. All right, we'll see. We'll see, I, I actually do need to get out Colossus though. Okay, so kind of the main problem here is that, well, I know I have a couple High Templars, so this is not, this is not the worst position I could be in. All right, I should have Extend Thermal Lance. I got this upgrade started. I'm just going to start Shields because God knows I'll forget it. And I am going to go ahead and take a fourth base on the back of this. Oh, I do not actually have an Observer for that. Or do I, no, I do have an Observer now. I can actually engage this. Unfortunately, I don't have a Proxy Pile on. That is not ready yet. All right, so I ended up losing more there than I should have. That is for sure. All right, I'm just going to go for the kill. He does, I don't think he has a whole lot left. I never did get blank, which is proving to be something that I should have. All right, I think I think I had this one in the bag. It was quite sloppy, though. I'm not uh, I'm not proud of this win. All right, let's see. Yeah, we're killing basically everything he has. Um, let's see. Are you guys, are you guys pumped up? Because this is going to be the biggest recall ever. Bye, Hydra. It's been nice knowing you. No escape path for you. All right, well, this one, oh, he almost got the Nexus. This one I'm actually really not proud of. Uh, he did almost kill that off, though. Very, very close. All right, so we're going to go ahead and expand there. And uh, I should have Blink, but I don't. And oh, I want to kill all those drones. Oh, it gives you a little bit of experience when you do that. All right, so that game, there was still a lot of mistakes. Um, I actually did get maxed out very quickly. Uh, I was maxed out around the 16-minute mark, which is pretty good. That I did okay. Uh, the main problem, though, is that securing my third was a little bit wonky. I was able to kill off his third, which put him way, way behind. So I'm okay with my macro, but my macro was severely hindered by the constant supply blocks. So uh, that was definitely... That was definitely not good on my part. So uh, anyways, let's go ahead and keep playing. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HES Guest here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. Now, uh, I actually have had a little bit of issues with my recordings, and I actually ended up losing my last game. I'll see if I can find it somewhere on my computer, but I had to switch around my hard drives a lot, as many of you know. So, this is going to be actually one game after the last video I uploaded. Blasphemy, I know. I said I was going to upload every single game. And uh, as you can see in this game, I accidentally spawned as Terran. So normally you guys would uh, be expecting to see me as Protoss, but this time, goofy me, I was playing um, some games versus AI just to test some stuff, and I forgot to change back from Terran to Protoss. I'm actually playing a 1v1 ranked game as an off race, which I'm not really that happy about. I can, I can tell you that right now. Um, my Terran is really, really bad. Like, really bad. I mean, it, it's pretty bad, guys, let's be honest. So anyways, this is going to be a TBT. And, uh, yeah, not really going to be talking about strategy a whole lot this game because I'm terrible at Terran, so I can tell you what my thought process was. My execution may not be anywhere near what it should be, though, just because, again, I would say that Terran is probably my weakest race. Um, I mean, I, I can mass Marine and Marauder, you know, just like as good as anyone else can, but past that, there's not a whole lot of strategy to my Terran play style. Apparently, I do have a Panda Bear Paw, though, so that's uh, that's working in my favor. But uh, anyways, I do want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, well, the map is Star Station, but number two, and uh, maybe slightly more interesting, I don't know, is that, uh, well, I've been trying to play a little bit more, trying to play on the ladder. And remember, guys, anytime I make a ladder anxiety video, the point of this series 
Well, it's to give you guys homework. I know you guys watch StarCraft to avoid homework, but this homework is fun, I promise. Anytime you see one of my Ladder Anxiety videos, you have to go play one game on Ranked Ladder and tell me how it goes. That's all you have to do. Just come right back here. Let me know how it goes. Did you win? Did you lose? Did you like how you played? Did you get cheesed? Are you just so mad because you can't beat Protoss? Well, you should definitely come back and let me know. So basically what I'm going to be doing this game is uh, just trying to make Marines and Marauders as quickly as possible. I do also want to use a Reaper just to get some scouting in because um, the Reapers are really, really good for scouting right now. Now, of course, before they used to be good as well, but you needed the Tech Lab add-on. You don't need that anymore. So I'm going to be making one Marine to just try and deny any sort of SCV, then the Reaper for a little bit of delayed scouting. Now, my timing's not perfect because I'm not Terran, so I didn't have enough gas with the Reaper right out of the gate, which is why I am making that Marine. I have my second Supply Depot going to be finishing up right there. And also, I am going to be making a lot of these videos, casting them after the fact. Sometimes I'll be casting them from replays. Sometimes I'll be casting them from uh, the footage like you're seeing right now. But uh, the reason I like to do it this way is because you guys saw when I was trying to cast while playing. It is basically impossible. Think of how many casters you know who cast uh, number one while playing and number two casting the entire time. I don't think there's a single caster who does it that much. I know Psy Starcraft kind of does. But he's usually pretty drunk when he does it, so uh, that's what uh, makes it entertaining there. So anyways, I I tried it. It was really hard. I will still try and do some live casts, especially with like mono battles and stuff like that, um, where that is actually just fun. But and when, I, when I'm doing try hard mode 1v1s, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast them after the fact. Now casting it for replays is kind of cool. I do prefer to cast them from the first person point of view though, because I've actually been getting a lot of messages from people saying, you know what, Husky, I like watching your first point, person point of view. I know you're not the best player out there, but hey, it helps me out anyways. So I did go for the SCV on the gas right away because I figured whatever build he's going, he probably wants to have his gas. Um, and also, if you're wondering why I didn't go straight just for the SCVs. Um, and I went a little bit to the right side with my Reaper there. I wanted to scout. I wanted to see, does he have a factory on the way? Is there going to be an expansion? What exactly is going on? Now, if you take a look at his base and what I've seen, I've only seen one barracks. So what that's telling me is that he's either having two barracks at his entrance, um, so there'll be one at the entrance and a couple supply depots over there, or he has expanded already. Now, I will tell you, in all honesty, that I actually had a misread in this game. So what I think he's doing is getting out two to three racks and he's got to be putting on a lot of pressure. What he's actually doing here, and we'll find out this later, is that he is going for an expansion. So I do have a misread on, what's he, on what he is doing, but thankfully the build that I'm doing is actually pretty good versus both of those. If he's going for an early expansion, I'm going to be putting on pressure. If he's going to be attacking me, I will have more than enough units to defend. Now, of course, the build I'm going is not an end all going to absolutely win build because there's a lot of things that are going to be really good against this. Primarily drops, if he walls in really safely, and manages to get some drops off, and while I'm out in the center of the map, that's going to be doing a lot of damage. Also, Widow Mines placed out in the middle of the map. I'm not going to be able to spot them. There's just no way to spot them. So there are uh, uh, early siege tanks as well. Really good versus what I'm going here. But basically, if you're wondering why I'm going for the four racks instead of the three, which is more normal, um, number one, it's because I'm bad, and number two, I started to mix in a couple of Reapers, so I didn't know if maybe I could afford to produce off of four racks during this kind of uh, chaos that's about to take place when I decide to go ahead and move out. So right now, I do actually have too many SCVs on gas. I should pull off some of those because I've already started the stim pack. I've started the combat shields, I believe is what I started there. But I am going to be attacking here pretty soon because, again, my main race is not Terran. I just want to end this game as quickly as possible, and that means doing a lot of aggression. Now, I do have two Reapers. No real reason for getting two. I just thought it would be kind of cool. However, keep an eye on this because if you notice, I actually just killed a Marine who was scouting outside my base, and I also just killed a Marine who was at the Watchtower. So that, that's two Marines already. Yes, I'm really good at math. Two Marines and two SCVs, I believe, that I've killed. So about 200 resources ahead in that regard. However, we will be finding out here shortly, due to my misread, that uh, he actually has expanded already. So I'm going to go ahead and hop up here see what's going on. Now, notice that I see one barracks um, at the entrance, one on the, by the command center where I'd originally scouted. So in my mind, he has three 
barracks right here. I'm not sure what else he actually has there, though. And we're going to go ahead and start putting on the pressure. I have the Reapers kind of in front, just because they deal okay damage. I mean, it's not the best damage in the world, but having them in there is not too bad. I'm going to focus down the bunker because I do not want him to finish that. Yes, I did take extra damage from the fact that I was focusing that down. And also, this is actually going to be ideal for him. Um, fighting up this ramp was probably not the best idea, but I needed to be able to spot the ramp before allowing him to get too many units. Also, the reinforcements are going to be attacking from the low ground, which was quite nice. Um, if you look on the minimap, you'll see I have one idle unit kind of sitting in the middle right there. Uh, I think I eventually get him by clicking the, uh, the full army button. If you look down the bottom left side, the F2 button right there is for selecting your entire army, which is a an ability, a button. It's not really an ability. It's definitely a button that I would highly recommend using a lot. So at this point, he has the economic edge on me because he has the double command center. So the fact that he's sacrificing SCVs is exactly what he needs to do. Now, at this point, I'm probably going to be ahead. But look at how much production he's actually about to get underway. He has one, two, three, four, five barracks, a starport, and a factory with reactors. So basically, he can actually crazily outproduce me here if he has enough money. Now at this point in the game, I don't know how, how what his income is. I don't know how many SCVs he has left. I do know that I've killed a lot, but uh, I'm not sure if I've actually done enough damage here to be able to let up on the pressure. And of course, I'm really, really bad at Terran, so I am just going to keep going until I either win or lose. So right now, I'm going to be working on taking out the add-ons. Want to make sure I delay his production as much as possible. He's not going to be able to afford to produce off of this many factors for too long. Stimming and running that Marine in there to try and get some splash damage up. Looks like it actually worked. Now, at this point, I believe I have enough units here to actually finish the job. I still have some idle units there because of a bad rally point. Um, I do scan here. This is to kill the Widow Mines, it's just to see where the Widow Mines are actually at. I wanted to see, are there any Widow Mines in the Mineral Line? And there is going to be the GG. Uh, you can see I had a constant stream of reinforcements moving down the map. That game was pretty straightforward. I'm really, really bad at Terran, but wait, there's more. I'm going to go ahead and queue up for one more game, just because that game was relatively easy. It was a Platinum player, um, and in all honesty, I just rushed him, and that, that's kind of all it came down to. Um, so my decision-making there, I fighting at the ramp was a big risk, but at that point, I kind of had to go for it. I could have fallen back and killed the command center, and then I would have been able to expand myself, and we would have been on even footing. Um, I might have been a little bit ahead just because I killed so many workers. But as you can see, I am Platinum. Rank 74. I have a bonus pool of 434 because I'm not playing nearly enough, which unlike you guys, uh, by the way, you also have to go play another game because I'm going to be queuing up here for another one for my uh, for my Letter Anxiety series. So there you go. And I do go ahead and check out my profile here. Um, you can see 9 and 3 right now. So I'm trying to remember if I uploaded one of those losses. Again, I had to shuffle around some videos, so I'm not sure exactly where those are, but I'm currently 9-3, and 75% win rate, but I don't really count that because five of those were placement matches, so I, I don't know if I really count placement matches. So I'm definitely kind of settling into a Platinum League here a little bit. That guy I was able to beat relatively easily. However, I did lose to some of the other Platinum players. And of course, I'm going to get a Master League player because why the hell not, Blizzard? So I am going to be going up against a Master Random player. Of course, his name is going to be Barcode, which is uh, is, is kind of whatever. I'm fine with that. If you want, If you want to hide behind a secret alias, that is absolutely fine with me. But uh, the map is going to be Core Hall City, which is a very large macro map. Now, versus Terran, I've actually had a lot of success being aggressive on this map because the uh, the ramp into the main base is quite wide, which is actually going to be favoring Protoss on the offensive. I've, I've actually beat quite a few Terran. Um, I've beat a couple, I believe, in the, in the series so far as well. So uh, the thing I like about this map as Protoss is that, um, well, there's two things. I actually don't know if Protoss fares very well on this map versus Terran, like, uh, in general. But the reason that I feel comfortable on this map is two reasons. Number one, it's easier to attack up the ramp um, in the early game. If you give them time to expand, then it's actually more difficult than attacking what would normally be a natural just because it's a ramp as opposed to a wide open area, which is normally what your, your natural has. But uh, anyways, able to bust up the ramp a lot easier in the early game. And then the fact that there is a base inside your own base that means that it's easier to make this game into a macro game if I want. Defending against drops can be kind of annoying just because your expansions are so wide open via air. I mean, look at the third and fourth bases there. Um, 
very easy to drop because the medevacs can easily escape in all of that dead space that you see. So anyways, I'm going to be harassing him a little bit with my probe. I actually did scout the correct way first try, which I felt quite nice about. And every time he sticks an SCV on me, what I'm going to be doing here, this is a nice, little, a nice little trick for all you Protoss players out there, is that if they stick an SCV on you, um, attack the SCV one or two times, and then retreat with the probe until you begin regenerating your shields, and then turn around and you can actually kill the SCV if you've done two shots already. So that's just a nice little tip there that I use for uh, scouting and preventing my probe from dying. And go ahead and throw down my other pylon. Got my gas finished. I don't think I throw the workers in gas as quickly as I possibly could because I really want to go for this SCV. I saw that I got him down into the yellow there. And I uh, go ahead and throw my three probes into gas. Do 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 do. And that was a little bit late. I'm actually. Oh, he does go ahead and pause here. So I'm gonna just fast forward. Intel, boom, he is ready to unpause the game. Now, uh, I am allowing him to do the pausing and unpausing because I do not want to mess it up. It is very easy to accidentally leave a game when you're trying to unpause. Uh, my pylon there, I was supply blocked for like a second, but I did get first blood with my probe, actually managing to kill off one of his workers, which is always frustrating as Terran because you got to remember that Terran has the least amount of workers in the game. Zerg has inject larva, they can make a million drones. Uh, uh, Protoss has Chrono Boost, so they can get out extra workers. I'm going to be working on trying to kill off another SCV here, which I actually do a surprising amount of damage there, but then the Reaper is able to kind of scare me away. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't chase the SCV in a, in a chance of potentially being able to kill it off is because I want to delay the Reaper as much as I could, so I was trying to have him give chase, but he killed it faster than I really wanted him to. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop down one uh, gateway here, and remember what I said, being a little bit more aggressive on this map, I've had a lot more success with that, so I'm going to go ahead and throw down one gateway. I will be adding on another gateway here in just a moment, but the main problem is that this Reaper is inside my main base. Now you have to remember that I killed one SCV, and I delayed mining on two or three SCVs overall. So what that means is, in my mind, is that losing one probe, not a big deal. Losing two probes, and eh, that's kind of annoying. Losing three probes, though, completely unacceptable. Uh, but I did see the Reaper completely jump away. Notice how I'm running across the wall there to try and see if that Reaper is trying to jump right back in my base. Now, you have to remember, there's really no way for me to prevent this Reaper from coming back, just because there's too much surface area in my base. Now, what I'm doing here is adding on the third gateway, and uh, I do reveal that I have a Mothership Core, which I didn't want to reveal, but uh, I, I did anyway, so that is, that is what it is. And the Mothership Core also helped me in dealing with the uh, in dealing with that Reaper. So if you're wondering why I canceled the gateway, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a Twilight Council. Now my, my thought process here, which is kind of weird, I know, it, I don't know if it necessarily makes sense, but I'm thinking, okay, if he, number one, he scouted my tech, he saw three gateways, so he's probably assuming I'm going for some three-gate pressure or three-gate blink stalker or something. Uh, well, probably three gate pressure though. Um, anyways, so if he scans me now and sees that orb warping in, I'm hoping he doesn't click on it because he's already clicked on it before, most likely, scouted that it was a gateway, and he's going to be preparing for a three gate. So I, I canceled that gateway, put this building right where I had the gateway in hopes that he won't notice it if he does scan. But really, what I'm going to be doing here is Dark Templar. Now, you may be watching this and be going, Husky, that's super cheesy. Oh my god, what are you doing? But I actually do kind of have this planned out a little bit because I'm assuming he's not going to be able to spot it. Notice the po uh, the positioning of it as well is kind of really far to the left side there. So I'm hoping that he scans my main base and misses that. That's kind of my thought process here. And look at this. He has prepared for my three-gate pressure, which is exactly what I wanted. There's a scan. Notice how I checked the radius of the scan there. I'm wondering, okay, can he see this? Does he know that they're on the way? But no, he sees the Twilight Council. But as a Terran player, you're not going to assume that that is going to be Dark Templar. You're going to assume that it will most likely be blind Blink, because Blink on this map is actually really, really good. Um, just because there's a lot of area to run away and a lot of unfavorable engagements in the middle of the map. Because you got to remember that Protoss, they love they love alleyways. They love shady alleyways where they can do lots of splash damage. But Terran players love wide open areas. So on this map, having Blink is very good. So I'm trying to mind game him a little bit here. And I, honestly, going for the DTs, I feel like isn't that big of a risk. Now, of course, it is going to be delaying any sort of expansion. It is going to be delaying any other tech. But I, it, it's kind of a risk I was willing to take right now because I felt like I had properly mind-gamed him. Plus, he's also a Master League player, so my chances of beating him in a macro game are a lot slimmer than trying to use a couple early mind games uh, in the early stage of the game. So right now I have two Stalkers, three Zelts, and the DTs are out, and uh, the Mushroom Core as well. So we'll see if I can make anything happen right here. I do see the bunkers there. There is a Widow Mine there. It does hit the Stalkers, and uh, I accidentally misclicked there. I did not mean to back them up. I just meant to kill the bunkers so that the rest of my units can come inside. And there we go. Go ahead and take that out. Now, he does have a siege tank. 
spawned and ready to go. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start working in some more units. Now, if you're wondering why my macro is slipping here, um, number one, it's because I'm not the greatest player in the world. But number two, I really wanted to start focusing on dealing damage with the DTs because I saw he didn't have detection. And one of the things that I've messed up many, many times in my StarCraft career is I, I get DTs in their base when they're not expecting him. I'm doing great. But then I don't kill off their detection. You can see right here, I've actually done massive damage to his economy. He doesn't really have anything left. So at this point, I basically have won the game. He's not going to be mining. I see the two command centers right there, but I am going to go ahead and start expanding anyway. This is very good habits to have. Throwing down extra pylons just to burn through some of that money, make sure I don't get supply block. Notice how I have my DT split up here. This is just practicing for games where I'm not just outright winning. Now, if you're wondering why I'm still making DTs, it is because I've done so much damage. I know he wouldn't have detection. So the thought process there being that uh, I'm just going to keep going for DTs because if he somehow cleans those out, he's not going to be able to clean out the follow-up. So I was actually able to defeat that Master League player. Um, I, it wasn't necessarily because of my mechanics. I think my mind games were what were to thank there. And look at that, baby. Got promoted to Diamond. So those two games, accidentally playing Terran. There we go. 1v1 Diamond. Oh, yeah. Um... Beating that poor Terran as Terran by accident and then beating this Master League player was enough to get me into Diamond League. So we are officially in Diamond now, which we will probably be here for quite some time. Do not expect me to get to Master League anytime soon, as I would not consider myself a Master League player whatsoever. He has about a 50% win right there. Um, that was his 100th game, I believe, this season. And you can see he does go about 50-50. But then again, he is a random player. So good job to him uh, for actually managing to be in Masters as random. And that is quite impressive. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the Ladder Anxiety series. Go out there, play two games. Come back here. Let me know how they went. Uh, otherwise, you're not allowed to watch my videos anymore. Just kidding. Just kidding. But I highly encourage you guys to play some StarCraft 2. It's a pretty good game, I hear. So hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HDS Guest here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety action, and apparently it's putting me versus a Master player, oh god. I feel like Blizzard always overestimates my abilities, but uh, we'll see, he is going to be playing random, which my guess means he's going to be doing some sort of one base crazy play, that's my guess. That is going to be my guess, and I am sticking to it. But anyways, I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know that the Ladder Anxiety series will be returning. Uh, it was on a bit of hiatus, number one, because of my computer problems, but number two, because uh, they actually locked the season, locked the ladder, and it is not going to be unlocked until May 1st, which is actually tomorrow. So, honestly, by the time you watch this, it might even be already unlocked. But I just want to let you guys know, taking a little bit of a break, because at this point in the ladder, uh, I can't rank up, I can't rank down, and apparently the, the game has been really laggy. I don't know what's going on. I tried to play a couple, of, uh, a couple of custom games just to test it out, and it is very, very laggy. So I cannot be relying on any, about, uh, any bit of micro right now just because there is quite a bit of input lag. And you can see how long it takes like for that one unit to build, so i got to be very careful. i got to be very careful, guys. The ladder is laggy. Like, see how long it takes the Chrono Boost? That's so funny. Anyways, we're going to be scouting out, trying to find him, and uh, basically what that means is I can have a little bit of fun with this because I do not have to worry about my precious, precious ladder points because I can't lose a rank right now. So that's kind of nice. And just go ahead and throw down a gateway. I'm going to throw it over here so they can't snipe it from the low ground. Ideally, they can't do that anyways. Uh, I just realized how annoying siege tanks right in this part of the mineral line would be. That would be crazy annoying. My god. All right, so I'm going to scout out with my probe. I'm going to go ahead and get... Uh, Oh, I wonder if I should go for double gas right away, right at 16. I think I may do that, actually. I may do something silly like that. And, of course, I scouted the wrong way. Wah, 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 wah. All right, so one more guy is on the way. Go ahead and chrono boost him out. And time for that double gas. So we're going to go ahead and do that and that. Now, this will delay my Cybernetics core a little bit, but I could apply some pressure. And also, since he is most likely going to be going for one gear. Actually, I just realized... He could be Zerg. For some reason, I was thinking he was Terran. I don't know why. I, my brain was just like, nope, he's Terran. Don't worry about it. Uh, so hopefully he is not Zerg. All right, he is Terran. hey -o, map hacks initiated. Uh, does he have gas? That's the real question. No, he, is he actually expanding here? Is he actually trying to play it standard, and I'm, I'm calling him out as a big old jerk? Well, so far, ah, uh, SCV, I see you, buddy, trying to make that uh, command center. That's exactly what he's doing here, actually. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. I say as I was completely, completely wrong about it earlier. I did forget my own pylon. Which, oh, oh, yes! Got me delaying that. 
Oh, yeah. Well, hey, at least I can feel good about myself. Oh, can this probe actually escape? If he didn't wall in, I'm totally out of here, man. I am totally out of here. All right, so actually, I can go ahead and go for a stalker right away. And my probe is going to survive for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a pylon over there. And go ahead and keep Corona boosting out these guys. He's going to look for my expo. Typical Terran. But I probably should go ahead and expand over here. Or should I? That's the real question. All right, so we're going to go ahead and send this probe back down to there for now. And go ahead and go for that. Go ahead and make another stalker. Come on, stalker. Where are you at? Where are you at, buddy? There you go. There you are. All right, so he's probably going to send his SCV back over here. Hopefully my stalker can deal with it. Come on, kill it, kill it, kill it. Kill it with fire. All right, go ahead and do another one of these. Uh, Mothership Core. Basically, Mothership Core only takes like one Chrono Boost to get out, which is quite nice. That is indeed quite nice. And we'll keep working on probes. Oh, I don't really know what my backup plan is here, so maybe maybe an expansion on the back of this. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can put on any pressure with this. I doubt it, but we shall see. All right, so you rally over there. You come down here, and actually, no. Let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do that. And I do need another pylon, so for now, that's going to go there. Here comes my early early units, and we're just going to wait for a moment. And Warp Gate is actually almost done. So reinforcements will be here momentarily. And basically what I'm going to try and do is attempt to attack this Supply Depot. We'll see exactly what he has here. Looks like he has a couple of Marines. And we go ahead and throw a Time Warp down there. And we are basically just going to go straight for the attack. Go ahead and get our Warp Gate started. Oh, oh, careful there, buddy. Careful there, buddy. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Warp in more reinforcements. And for now, we're just going to try and kill off Marines. You guys are going to split up. You run up here. All right, we got lots of stalkers. Here come the SCVs, though. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Unfortunately, I don't have enough for a time warp right here, so that's kind of annoying. And I actually, I feel like I, I can keep doing stalkers. Oh, no, 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 that's a lot of Marines! Oh, God. Oh, we got to try and kill off the depot. All right, so it really shouldn't be too much more for him. I'm going to go ahead and expand on this, by the way. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and go up there. I feel like Zealots might actually be the correct choice right now. All right, back it up, back it up. Almost have enough for time warp again, which would be quite useful. Oh, careful, Zealot, careful, Zealot. I kind of need you. Oh, well, he didn't last very long. Oh, oh, don't have these guys selected. Don't have them selected. All right, so I killed that off. There's still a lot of Marines. I do kind of want this guy over here. All right, Zealots, go ahead. You got this. You got this, Zealots. You got this. Oh, God, his micro's too good. All right, so here we go. We are going to have a time warp now. All right, well, that was the last time we're for that Mothership core. So hopefully, hopefully we can make this work. All right, I don't know if that's actually enough there to actually win that battle, but I'm going to go for it anyways. I'm going to go for it anyways. Uh, well, apparently that was it. All right, I beat a Masters player. Yay, with some three-gate pressure. <laughs> Thankfully, that actually worked out because I really had no backup plan there. So I did get a game link bonus and a first Protoss win of the day bonus. Unfortunately, I was already maxed out, and I almost feel bad for that guy. Is he having a? Is he just having a bad day? Did he lose a whole bunch of games before this? He had to have. He had to have. Uh, match history. Let's just see. Is he? Let's just see. Oh well. Oh, he's playing three v three though. Apparently, he's really good at three v three. Oh my god. So many 3v3s played there. Anyways, I want to make this video, guys, to let you know that the season, the new season, is starting tomorrow. I don't know if I can get in the Masters League. I mean, I beat Masters players here and there, but they tend to be random players, which is not saying a lot. Uh, I mean, yes, there are a lot of good random players out there, but, you know, if you're going to beat any player, I feel like random is going to be the easiest just because they have to be good at all three races. So, uh, yeah, that game is over now. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time in Season 2 or 3 or 
what whatever it'll be fun it'll be fun all right you're gonna see me lose you're gonna see me you're gonna see me lose a lot hey even when a star jeweled uh right there he got a win good job good job all right all right bye guys god i want to play Hello everyone, this is HES Gaska here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety series. This time, uh, it is a brand new season. As you can see, I am, um, I am unranked. Is putting me versus a uh, Master League player, apparently. So that is going to be no good. GLHF, I have a feeling I'm going to end up losing. I'm not the best versus Zerg. But uh, this is going to be the new season. I am spawning on a new map. And really, I just want to make this video to let you guys know that the, uh, hang on, hang on, we gotta say hi, GL, GL doing my placement, yay! Alright, uh, I wanted to make this video to let you guys know <coughs> where, uh, that there is a new season starting, that's what I'm trying to say. And I don't want to even try and forge fast expand on this map, I feel, uh, it might not actually be that hard. Uh, well, we're gonna try it, we'll see. We'll see. I'm just going to go ahead and go scout over there. Anyways, uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, hang on. I'm so confused what he's trying to say as I was a little bit distracted. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and scout him out. Anyways, new map, uh, new season, which means, guys, you have to go do your placement match right now. If you're watching this and you haven't done your placement match, you are doing it incorrect. Let's go ahead and scout out the, uh, the opponent's base right now. This little bridge right here is so weird that connects the two bases. Um, I guess this is how this map works. All right. So go ahead and chrono boost that out. I think we're going to be okay. Don't see a spawning pool. I don't even know if a spawning pool can fit back here. I guess not. Uh, I guess at the top. There we go. Uh, that was the one thing I was unsure about before. And I guess we're just going to go ahead and leave my drone or my probe right there. And I think we can go Nexus first here, unless I somehow missed the spawning pool. But I don't really think that I did. Uh, let's just go ahead and drop a pile on here for now. Just to see if he actually went for his pool or not. And then you go ahead and go over there. You're going to come down here. Let's just see. Let's see if he actually has a pool yet. Uh, yes, he does. All right. I think I can just go ahead and cancel this. Um, no, I kind of need a forge, don't I? Yep, definitely need that forge. And we do have the pylon over here. So we shall see if this ends up working out or not. I'm actually not used to this map. I have a feeling this rush is going to hit me, like, before I even know what the hell to do. That is that is going to be my guess. That is indeed going to be my guess. Does he have a bunch of lings on the way? I want to say that those are probably going to be Zerglings. More than likely. Let's see if my, let's see if my little pylon here can, uh, can trick him into attacking. All right, for now, let's go ahead and put that there. And, oh, he is going to be heading on over. All right, okay, so we should be fine. Anyways, I don't know how this map works out because uh, this map is a lot different than I'm used to playing on. Oh, God, this is the worst wall in ever. Whatever, we'll go with that. That's what's going to happen. And I don't even know if Forge Fest expanding on this map is a viable option just because there are some wonky spawns going on here, man. I need our pylon, don't I? Yes, I do. So for now, that's going to go up there. And let's go ahead and grab some good old gas. Oh, I'm still thrown off trying to trying to learn this new map. So basically, your natural is right here. And hmm, let's see. Being supply block for this long is a bit awkward. Yeah, at least held off those zerglings. What now? Now, actually, uh, PVZ is my weakest matchup, so this is not going to be pretty, especially on a map I've never played on. That is uh, not going to be pretty whatsoever. All right, that uh, gateway is done. I can go ahead and drop the cyber core here. And let's see, you guys there and there. Got to get them chronos rolling. And before I get supply blocked again, well, I guess with the Nexus I should be okay. Definitely should be okay in that regard. Let's see, what would be good? For now, I'm just going to add on another gateway. That's going to be that's going to be a thing that happens. And I kind of actually want to go for plus one already. Just uh, just to try it out. It's probably not going to go well. Probably not going to go well at all. Oh, dear. There are lings out there. There are a lot of lings out there. Actually, you know what I can do, though? Let me see if I can just skirt right on by this. Just to, uh, just to see. Just to see what I can see. 
All right, so we're almost good as far as that is concerned. We got the stock around. Oh, he, he, he has Lings up there. He is a smarty pants. It's almost like he is in Master League or something. All right, so there's that. And, oh, my Zergling's going to make it. My probe's going to make it. My probe's going to go all the way. Oh, God, he has another base already. Oh, dear. Oh, good heavens. Good heavens. Uh, so Stalker should be okay over here. Not going to really spot anything useful. Um, I kind of want to go for this for now. This is like the worst. What am I doing? I'm like re-walling in my base. And I have supply block. This is a this is a great thing that's happening right now. This is this is really good for everybody. All right, so you guys are gonna go there. You are gonna go there. More of you guys going on. Go ahead and rally down here. And what I can actually do, I want to try something. And you may call me crazy, which would probably be correct. But I feel like blink stalkers might be ridiculous here. Uh, let's, let's find out. Let us find out. Alright, so I am going to have my stalker over here. How long have we got on that? Plus one, nearly done. Go ahead and do that. And I do need another pile on there. How many of these did I actually get? Oh god, here he comes. Here he comes from the left side. He's going to spot these, isn't he? Yes, he is. So, I have a super fancy trick. This is gonna be this is gonna be the super super fanciest trick ever. All right, he is gonna spot some of these gateways. I mean, he's gonna spot all of them, but all right, here we go. Watch this. Boom. We're doing it. We are doing it. And we're also gonna work on plus one. So I don't actually want blink anymore. So he saw those, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know my mind games, guys. He does not know the mind games that I'm about to unleash upon him. All right, once these wave of probes is done, I am done making probes. All right, you buddy, get out of there. You go ahead and come down here. All right, so basically what I want to try and do here is you go there, you go there, and you go up here. Because we are getting some void rays. Yes. Because void rays are awesome. Void rays are always the correct choice, by the way. All right, so that's going to go there. And we have the plus one attack on the way. Unfortunately, I can't really get... This is, this is going to be so dumb. This is so dumb what I'm doing right here. Uh, let's see. I feel like I can get maybe a sentry and a stalker. One more void ray in there. And another sentry I think should be okay. All right, so 19. Actually, I think I'm good on probes for now. I, I'm just going to assume that I'm good on probes. That's all there is to it. All right, so the plus one is almost done. I'm going to go when I have six Void Rays. This is going to be the most ridiculously dumb timing ever. All right, so I already have double Void Rays done. So from this point on, it is going to be warping and reinforcements. I also want to show him that I am attempting to expand. At least I want him to think so. All right, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and drop that there. He probably has a Zergling up there. Oh, what do you know? I'm going to go ahead and send the sentries over. And go ahead and take that guy out. Oh my god, he's already got creeps red going on. He has already got creeps red going on. Up, oh, up. Oh, those helped you. That was my bad, man. That was my bad. All right. Well, hopefully he'll actually try and run here. Oh guys, he's got a lot of zerglings. Those, uh, those definitely do have me worried. Uh, well, the zerglings are pretty darn good. So it is time to go, man. It is time to go. Oh, I'm supply block. Oh, this has got to be so good, and I messed it all up. Then again, this is just a placement match, so that's okay. That is okay. All right, we got to get lots of these void rays out, man. All right, here we go. Well, he doesn't have much anti-air, so that's nice. Not a whole lot of... Oh, what? He can get around those. Are you kidding me? Of course. Typical Zerg. Typical Zerg. All right, we got to go over here, man. I don't think this is going to work out very well. Come on, guys. Keep it going. Keep it going. Come on, Zealots. You've got this. All right. No, no, no more of those. Just more stalkers, man. Come on. Come on. Kill him off. Kill him off. Oh, he's going to get my pylon. All right. We are just going to go for it. 
Uh, two roaches over here should be able to be killed. Ah, oh, this attack was so going to be good, too, and I messed it all up. I messed it all up. Why is Roach so good? Oh, he's got plus one. That makes sense. All right, so here we go, man. We have got to make this happen. Kill off them spores. All right, we'll see if he has enough for transfuse. Apparently he does. Got to kill that off. We just got to try and go for it, man. Unfortunately, I'm like out of, uh, I have so much money, this is not good. All right, well, I'm going to go straight for the hatchery. I don't know if that's the correct choice or not, but that's what we're going with. All right, we definitely need lots of pylons. All right, we got one hatchery. Now we're going to go for the main. All right, you guy, you just go for that. Oh, okay, guys, he's got corruptors. Got to kill the corruptors. Kill the spire. Kill the spire. All right, we got the spire. Now for the corruptors. Oh, God, why do I have idle probes? Oh, my God. Did I, oh, my God, I won it. Oh my god! Mind games! Oh god, that was so bad. Oh my god, guys, that was so embarrassing. That was so bad. Oh god, I screwed that up so bad. I moved out. Oh god. Oh god. Alright, so I moved out with the sentries to try and fake expand, and then he killed that off, and then he killed my stalkers, and then he killed my pylons, and I actually couldn't make any buildings. But thankfully, since I got my Nexus uh, so early, I had enough money to just make up a bunch of Void Rays, and I totally hit it! Oh, now I feel bad. I just feel bad about that. That, I, well, you know what? A win is a win! He did have a lot of, actually, he didn't have that many workers. I think he, ah, uh, you know what? I totally mind-gamed him completely. Uh, killing out the Spire. Yeah, he didn't really have anything left there. I feel like the Void Rays were just too much. So, I will just say, before Blizzard nerfs the Void Ray, that that game was hilarious. And I feel bad. I feel really bad. So my apologies, Iron Chef. I hope that, uh, well, number one, you're a great TV show. And number two, I hope that you, oh, God, that was his first game of the season because the season just started. Um, I wonder if I go here and I do match history. How is he playing lately? Uh, actually, not too bad. Really not that bad at all. He got a mad win streak here, and then he went 4-2. and two. Not the best, but uh, let's take a look. Are those all unranked, though? Maybe not. Let's take a look here at this win, because that's going to be... And then we go to the, the player he played against. I always like to see how they're playing. Uh, I guess he was diamond, it looks like. Either way, I got a win, and it's whatever, man. It is whatever. So... Oh, my God. I just beat two Masters players. All right, so anyways, guys, it is a new season. Going to be uh, trying to learn the new maps. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HTS Gaski here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety series. This time, I am going to be going up against another Master Zerg level player, and this time it is going to be from a replay. I do like to uh, kind of cycle between casting live and casting the replays after the fact, just because if I cast the replays after the fact, I can talk a little bit about what my opponent's doing, and if I cast during the game, I can talk a little bit about why I'm doing everything that I am, uh, but it does make it a little bit more difficult to concentrate playing and talking at the same time can be quite tough. So I do like to mix it up a little bit uh, and do both angles. So anyways, I'm spawning up on the top left side and my opponent up on the top right side is that Master League level Zerg player you saw. It is Sidious from the clan DKPC. Now, uh, yeah. The, the, the map here is such a funny, funny, funny map. There is the little bridge that connects the two bases. Makes scouting out your opponent ridiculously easy. And uh, I honestly think, and I'm kind of sad to say this, I think Blizzard will be getting rid of the centerpiece. And I just want to tell you that as an average level diamond player, having this piece right here is a lot of fun. I actually really, really like having this area. It makes a very unique map layout, and uh, lots of interesting stuff can be used there. Is it balanced? Because they can actually get creeped to your base within the first, like, five minutes. It's ridiculous. But uh, either way, I'm sure there's lots of builds that abuse that. But as an average player, it is something that I quite enjoy seeing. Now, right now, I did scout him out. I saw, all right, we got a lot of drones. No spawning pool just yet. I'm going to go down here. Now, normally, uh, actually, is he scouting with this? Yeah, okay, so he's going to scout with that drone. Now, normally, what a Zerg player is going to do is go for a spawning pool first. And he went for a, uh, a 15 or a 16 pool right there. I think it was 15. And uh, that is completely standard here. The reason I didn't drop a pylon down there is simply because I don't think he's going to expand just yet. Now, I could sit down there and wait forever but I wanted to get confirmation that there is going to be a spawning pool. 
which there is. And I'm going to have my uh, probe over here just kind of scouting around a little bit to see exactly what's going on. Now, I am going to be going Nexus first here. Now, this is, uh, in my mind right now, going Nexus first is actually a little bit of a risk. The reason for that is, is that, oh, drop my forge right there. The reason is that I don't really have these rush distances memorized because of this map being kind of weird. So I don't know if I have time to go for Nexus first, but we are about to find out. As uh, I decide to go next first, regardless, the forge is on the way. And uh, trying not to get myself supply blocked. That is something that I am very good at, is getting supply blocked. So I want to delay that as much as possible. And my probe is going to be continuing to scout out right now. Did I scout the third base yet? No, I didn't look for a third base just yet. As I am just a little bit worried about those links still. I am going to be sending down my probe here. Should be dropping down a cannon um, somewhere right at the entrance as soon as I have enough. Come on, little guy. There you go. All right, so I got that down. I am going to be uh, saving up for a gateway as well because I want to wall this in as best as I can. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best layout. The forge might be able to be back one more square uh, to be lined up with the with the gateway there, but that's just a minor thing. As long as, for the most part, you are walled in. And I gotta say, as a Protoss player, I personally hate going for the Forge Fast Expand, but I've kind of learned that you you really need to. There's not a whole lot of good one base plays for Protoss anymore versus Zerg. It's just kind of how the matchup shapes up now, as Zerg players have learned when to do what and how to hold off all the one base plays that Protoss could possibly do. Ah, all right, so my, my expansion is now up. And main base is saturated quite well. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing those guys into gas. Now, I want to say that in this game, I definitely didn't play perfectly. Um, my decision making was good, but I, I feel like I did it a little bit late. And we'll, we'll be kind of showing that a little bit as this game goes on. There is going to be a third base down here. Um, in all honesty, I'm kind of surprised to see him take a third there instead of here. The thought process, though, might be that if he just destroys these rocks right here, um, this base might actually be easier to defend than this base over here. Because look at how close this base is to uh, being able to be co basically connected to my expansion. I mean, those those rush distances, even an overlord can rush that distance. It is so small. So maybe his thought process there is that, you know what, it's going to be difficult to defend this, uh, which is actually kind of true. Because if, if this little blob of no space was actually like right here or something, or, or uh, against this wall, if this came in, then it would be easier to defend because you would just leave units here. But since there's another path around here, it's very difficult because where do you leave your army? Do you leave it here? Well, then units can slip inside. Do you leave it over here? Again, they can go around the other side. So players are still kind of figuring out exactly how this map plays out. Now, right now, I actually got a really good scout off with my probe here, and I did not expect to get this good of a scout in, and I basically see everything that's going on. Now, the thing that is weirding me out about this is that I haven't really seen anything. Um, I don't know, does he have a hidden something somewhere? Is he proxying uh, a crazy hatchery and setting up a contain? Is there tech I haven't seen yet? Uh, in all honesty, though, he's just macroing up. He's getting out lots of drones. His production is four drones at a time, and is just really kind of working on that. So I was a little bit weirded out at the time of scouting this. I didn't know exactly what he was doing. I mean, when I scouted it, it looked like he was just going for a big macro play. And uh, thankfully for me, I did scout that correctly. Now the Overlord here is gonna be spotting all of my gateways here. But uh, notice, all right, I, was, uh, I can't stop, I won't stop it, I won't stop it. But basically, I saw the Overlord, so I actually threw down gateways underneath the Overlord, and I canceled two of them there in uh, in lieu of double Stargate, which is something that I love doing against Zerg right now. Void Rays are extremely powerful. The important thing is, is that if the Overlord scouts your tech, you have to cancel it, throw it down, and then try to attack as quickly as you can. But more importantly, you have to try and deny scouting. Now, one thing my opponent does very well this game is scouting. He actually goes for Overlord Speed. You can see the Numenized Carapace on the way right now. He's going for Overlord Speed to keep that scouting up. And this is something that proved to be very frustrating for me. And I would highly recommend this to Zerg players out there is get that Numenized Carapace and just keep on scouting. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that I did force him to have to react with some units. That's why he has the Rotorn down right now. He is uh, still transferring over drones as he just finished killing off those rocks right now. But uh, he is going to have to react by getting out lots of units. Now you can see he is making lots of overlords because he wants to follow it up with some units. I do have the uh, Double Void Ray on the way. And I got to say that Double Void Ray, the thing I like about going Double Void Ray, and I know a lot of you are just going to roll your eyes and be like, all right, Husky, why do you keep doing this? The thing I like about the Double Void Ray is that it forces some sort of anti-air. So it's going to be either Hydralisks or they could already be going for Mutas. Now, if they're going for that, 
Um, that is, is basically me setting the pace of the game. Because if they go for Hydralis, then I can switch to Colossus. Look at that, the Overlord making a mad dash. And he does actually get a really good scout. And oh, he did see both of those. I didn't realize that during the game. I thought he only saw one. Um, so he did see both of these Void Rays on the way, which is uh, not very good for me at all. His scouting was top notch. So I am going to go ahead and move out. Um, the fact that he scouted that is actually making me move out a little bit earlier and uh, trying to put on pressure before he has more anti-air. Now, he knows about the, uh, he knows that I have Void Race here, so he has the Hydralist in on the way. Really would have liked to have been able to deny that scout if possible. He even sends out another Overlord here. This is something that he's been doing really good this entire game and will continue to do, is trying to scout. Now, he did, uh, he did get Supply Blocked here. I do have two more Void Rays on the way, bringing it up to a total of four. Really, ideally, I would have been moving in already, but I wanted to wait for two more Void Rays, and it's kind of hard for me to tell exactly what he has going on here. The other Void Rays, though, are about to arrive, and the main problem is is that there's a lot of roaches here and uh, I will have a major miss micro fail here as I keep accidentally grabbing my void rays if my void rays would have just sat back and attack the entire time that would have been great because there's really no anti-air here so this is this is definitely an epic micro fail happening in real time and I do eventually grab those void rays and get them separated because queens are not really that great versus void rays um I mean, if they have a bunch of queens, they can be, but for now, uh, I, I'm able to just press on down here. Now, he does have Hydralis on the way, but remember, there's really no way for me to engage this army directly, because he has way too many Roaches, way too many Hydras, and he has even a couple... Does he still have a couple of things in uh, Just one. Just one surging in there, so he's not going to play a big role. But I do decide to leave the Void Rays here, because there's just not enough Hydras for him to kill off my Void Rays until more and more start to respawn. Um, I don't really think that ended up being worth it for me, but I was able to reduce his queen count down to two, and you got to remember that he is on three bases, so he wants to have queens. That means he's not injecting larva down here, and he's actually supply blocked from the amount of overlords I've been able to snipe. But now is this is kind of a problem for me because he's got lots of roaches and he's got lots of hydras, and he actually does have enough to start pressuring me right now. Um, I do go ahead and kill off that pylon. I set up that pylon so that the, I was worried about a zergling counterattack because remember I saw some zerglings down here a little bit earlier, and I did not want the zergling counterattack to be something that uh, you know took and took me by surprise and killed me, to be quite frank. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a pylon right here. This is just to mess with the AI because you got to remember that if this army is told to attack move to up here. Um, if he's not paying attention, his army will start to go all the way down here, and I might be able to catch them out of position. That's not a guaranteed thing whatsoever, but uh, is definitely kind of my thought process there. Now, the Overlord is going to be scouting out once again. He is going to see the double robo, and this is so frustrating for me because this game, I was able to set the pace, but he scouted it every single time. So I'm going to be able to kill off the, uh, the Overlord there. But he spotted my double robo, which really sucks for me. I'm going to go ahead and cancel one of those. Uh, actually, I decided to cancel both of them in lieu. It, it, am I even saying that right? In lieu of going for High Templar. So I'm trying so hard to mind game this guy, but he just keeps scouting it. So what, what my thought process is right now is, okay... He spotted my Void Rays, so he was able to hold it off with uh, perfectly timed Hydras. He now spotted my Robo, so he's going to be able to hold that off with Corruptors. So what I'm going to do is go for Psy Storm and Archons in hopes that he goes for Roach Corruptor because Psy Storm and uh, Void Rays are going to be really, really good versus Roach Corruptor. Now, unfortunately for me, he doesn't do that quite yet. He did start the Spire, though. I think this is later than uh, I would have personally liked. But he is going to be going... For the Spire, he has 2-2 two, two upgrades on the way. I only have plus one attack. That's something I should be working on here a little bit more. But uh, I am forced to morph an Archon right now. The plus one attack, not going to be the best. I do activate the Prismatic Alignment ability. Unfortunately, they're not really attacking the Roaches there uh, as they do go for the Hydras by default. But I am going to be able to hold this off for now just because I killed off all of his anti-air and I continue to produce Void Rays at an alarming rate. Remember that the Void Rays are really, really, really good. Um, because they're great versus Corruptors and Hydras as Protoss, you have a lot of things that can deal with Hydras. Psystorm is one of them, Colossus is another one. So the fact that Protoss has Void Rays uh, as a reliable unit, it means that you have a chance versus uh, maxed out Roach armies, maxed out Roach Corruptors armies, maxed out Roach Hydra armies, just because that Void Ray kind of fills that gap that Protoss has been lacking for a very long time. Here's another Scouting Overlord. This is so sick. 
Uh, I gotta say that this was driving me crazy in the game, but it's one of those things where it's it, it, I kind of had to respect my opponents. I'm like, you know what? This guy, this guy's doing really good with his scouting. Now, right now, I do have a lot of money in the bank, so I have been warping in a lot of High Templar. And uh, the fact of the matter is that I'm very, very low on gas, very high on minerals. So I do have the uh, the expansion up and running now. My my third base, which still kind of feels like a natural, just because it's so close to my natural. Uh, there's going to be the creep spread right there, and I'm kind of curious, does, this, does the pylon block the creep spread? I actually don't know. I've never never been in this situation before. Nope, the pylon's like, go ahead, go ahead, creep, move on through, and these creep tumors can definitely spot the other side so we can continue that creep spread if you would like. A fourth base is on the way. Now, this is the point of the game where I should be trying to use warp prisms. Um, this is something that I personally know I need to improve on. It's something that um, is even frustrating for me because, for example, if I wasn't scouting right now, which I'm not, uh, and he went for Mass Muta. That could be giving me one hell of a time just because Mass Muta is so freaking good. I'm going to be hiding a base down in the bottom left side. I think the Overlord spots this, though, uh, just because of this pylon here. I should have scouted a little bit better with my probe. But uh, anyways, I should be trying to harass right now because what I want to do at this stage of the game is actually try and force it to the later stages because guess what? A lot of Hydras are out, so the longer the game goes on, the more it's going to favor me. I'm going to have more Psy Storm, I'm going to have more Colossus, and the Void Rays are still going to hold their own. Now the base over here is definitely going to get taken out. The whole Hydra army is going to be moving down. He does have pretty good creep spread coming up and uh, is, is about halfway through the center of the map, which is quite impressive. And uh, yeah, takes out that base down there. I am forced to cancel it, which doesn't make me feel great. Now you gotta remember that Protoss on three bases is pretty powerful. You, you can have a maxed out army for quite some time. I do have a lot of minerals once again, but I am dangerously close to being maxed out. And unfortunately, I haven't started researching charge yet because I knew I was behind in upgrades already. So I'm focusing on getting out upgrades and getting a maxed army out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move out right now with everything I've got. i got the Void Rays High Templar in here. I do not have an Observer, so I can't deal with these Creep Tumors just yet. I do notice his Link are trying to get in position. But look at this uh, attack from three different directions. I am going to have to try and storm everything I can. High Templar a little bit out of position. There we go, throwing down the storm. Not as good as I would have liked. I definitely have to keep the High Templar alive as best as I can, but I have lots of energy for Storm. And again, the Void Rays here are proving very effective against the Hydras because of the Psy Storm. I, I, I can hear a lot of Zerg players out there getting very agitated. But you also have to remember that he decided to go for pure Hydra, which has never really been great versus late game Protoss. Because we've always had Archons, we've always had Storm, and we've always had Colossus. Um, now, of course, Hydras do move quicker. That's why he was able to dodge us a little bit better. But uh, I am deciding to be aggressive here. I've warped in. Oh, God, apparently these High Templar did not realize they were out there completely exposed. He could have sniped those so easily. Uh, so my High Templar do manage to make it here alive. And I forget actually where I throw it out the storm. It must be right here, though, as this army is attempting to dodge them. And I am out of energy, so I decide to morph them into the Archon right now. However, there is enough Hydras here to finally start cleaning up my Void Rays. So my Void Rays have definitely got to get out of there as best as they possibly can. I think I'm down to five right now. One of them, I think, has one HP. Yes, he does. And I decided to turn around to engage there. But uh, he does eventually hold this off. Remember that Roach Hydra? is kind of like the new Marine Marauder. So what that means is, is it's very good against uh, gateway units, and it is good against Void Rays if you don't have the storms to back it up. So once the momentum shift started to go towards Zerg there, uh, that is when he's going to be able to kill off my army without me killing anything. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and retreat back home. And I do throw down a Robo finally uh, right there. And I do, again, have a lot of minerals. And I'm starting to hover a lot of gas. So I should be doing big warp ends of units here. Just warped in a bunch of Zealots down there. And I am attempting to harass with my Void Rays just because I, I'm trying to buy myself some more time. I know he has Hydras to be able to deal with this, but I want to try and buy time because I, I in my mind, I just lost that battle pretty one-sidedly. And I'm having difficulty spending that money. So that's why I'm throwing down two Robos right now. And uh, I just need to keep doing warp ends when I can. Warp gates are coming off a of cooldown right now. And really, I, I should have more production than this. There's really no excuse for this. If we take a look at my structures tab, I only have nine warp gates. This is nine warp gates off of three bases. That is not enough. That is why I'm hovering a lot of money here. This is why it's painful to watch the replay. But again, the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is to learn from our mistakes. And uh, right now, the Hydras are going to be chasing down the Void Rays. God, Hydras are so fast. They move at 2.81. Void Rays move at 2.25. So I'm trying to find a good angle where I can keep these Void Rays alive. And uh, I, I can hide them down here. I think I try and regroup them with my army a little bit later. But again, just not enough production quite yet. 
I do have the Colossus tech on the way. And at this point, uh, even though I'm losing these Void Rays, which really, really sucks, they're kind of worthless at this point because look at how many Hydras he actually has. He is at 44 Hydras, which has uh, got to just crush through Archon and Void Ray. So what I really need is Continued Storm, and I need to start getting some Colossus. My little probe right here going to try and move down for an expansion. He gets taken out. 2-2 two -two uh, has been done for a while. He does have Hive Tech on the way. And uh, we'll be working towards uh, basically anything he wants at a hype tech. Whether it's going to be more upgrades, whether it's going to be Ultralisks, we will have to wait and see. Now, I'm finally going to be working on Zealot Legs. Like I said, my decision making was definitely slow this game. Uh, if you notice, I'm actually going for Immortals right now because I, I had a slight misread on how many roaches I thought he had. So at this point, I'm thinking, all right, if he has a lot of roaches, I'm going to get Immortals and then I'm going to use Psy Storm for the Hydralisks is, is my thought process. Unfortunately, I did have a bad read on how many roaches he actually had. However, Immortals are pretty good. Once you start to get several upgrades as Protoss, having Immortals are actually quite nice. They're very robust. Um, uh, if you look at them, they have 300 total HP. I mean, that is not bad at all. It's a little bit less than an Archon, but of course they have a much higher range. So definitely something to keep in mind there is that they are quite good. Now the Overlord over here is gonna be quite distracting. The Hydra is gonna be taking out my rocks right there. But uh, I do go ahead and try and secure a fourth base. So uh, as I've said before, I mean, I really love to focus on macro. I think that is what my strength is. Definitely not in this game, though. But anyways, he does decide to engage over here. And I will gladly eat up these Hydras with some Storm. Remember that Hydras only have 80 HP. So if they sit there and eat a Storm, they will die because Storm does 80 damage there. So you have to dodge it. So that was one of the most one-sided battles I've ever had. And uh, it really comes down to he's getting stuck in this mentality where he feels like he has to go for pure Hydra because Hydra will kill Stalker, it will kill Zealot, it'll kill Immortal, and it'll kill Archon. But if I have the Storms to deal with it, you just can't, you can't keep doing that. So I am going to be working on the Colossus tech here pretty soon. I've extended Thermal Lance on the way because I've seen, you know what, this guy is content going with lots of Hydra. So if I get out some Colossus, that's going to really help out. I have a lot of cannons being thrown down at this base. Apparently I'm talking to myself there in observer chat but uh, anyways there's a lot of things that I haven't done perfect this game and uh, this is actually a really big learning game for me in that number one storm is really good versus Zerg if they are if they have a lot of hydras number two void rays are really good but I shouldn't necessarily rely on them just to end up winning me games and number three I need more upgrades man Got to get more and more upgrades. But I do have the Colossus on the way. Uh, first ones will be spawning here momentarily. And I am transferring down. Uh, let's see. Do I transfer them over here? No, I'm actually going to start long distance mining. That's right. Because at this point in the game, I have 77 probes, which is uh, a pretty good number. But I don't really have anything for them to do. So I'm just going to be having them long distance mine for now. And if they get intercepted, that is what the, uh, the army right here is for, is that I can swing around and kill that army off. Now, again, I, I think the, one of the main things I need to be doing this game is, is harassment and scouting. Thankfully for me, I made all the correct moves because he ends up going for an Ultralisk Cavern here. I already have the Immortals out. Um, he ended up getting a lot of Hydras. I already had the Colossus out. But if he would have went for Mass Muta, I would have been in trouble because you have to think about the anti-air capabilities of Protoss. They aren't that great versus a death ball of like 50 Mutas. Yes, there are players who will get 50 Mutas out. So if, if he would have done that to me, I would have just had to rely on... Um, it would have had to rely on Psy Storm alone, which at this point wouldn't have been the worst, but uh, yeah, just definitely something to keep in mind there is that scouting is very important, but look at the creep spread right now of Sidious. I mean, he's got like the entire map covered in creep. He is maxed out. He is continuing his creep spread as well. Taking a look at the APM tab, you can see we're about the same as far as APM is concerned. Queen going to go ahead and move all the way down to the bottom right side. And he does have some spine crawlers coming up. So I would say for him, actually throwing down this ridiculous amount of spines might not be that bad of an idea. But look at this. This, this creep is literally touching my base now all the way across the map. He is going to be spotting exactly what's coming up right here. And uh, this pylon is still somehow alive up here. can't believe that that thing is still alive. But I do decide to finally add on more gateways. I should have done this a long time ago just in the main base. I had plenty of room up here. Definitely a big mistake that I had during this game. And uh, my army right now, though, is looking pretty good. I decide to move out as soon as I have four Colossus here because I, I, I feel like... Four Colossus is just so much better than having two, but attacking a little bit earlier. So I am going to be moving forward here. I am pushing his creep back, 
This is very deliberate because I'm saying, okay, he's moving down here to attack my bottom left side. If I can kill off his creep, that's going to take up all of his map vision. I already know where his army's at. I'm not going to make it down here to save this base anyway. And if he kills a couple of probes, I have plenty of money to warp in more uh, more units. And, and honestly, I could use the more additional supply right now. Taking a look at the army supply, 122 to 118. But the fact that he switched to Ultralis now, is the, it's going to be tough for him because if I can get a couple of good storms in here, if my High Templar actually go the right way, there they go. Throwing down the storms, throwing down the immortal blast shots on the Ultralis there. So I'm going to be able to clean this up. And again, this is why I decided to clean up some of the creep tumors first, is that I already knew, look, this base has got to be gone. There's no way. He can just focus fire and kill it, and it's going to be gone. Um, losing the gateways, it kind of sucks. Yes, it does. But, uh, you know... I, I had a feeling that I was going to be able to kill his army. It was out of position. It overcommitted and was going to be in a lot of trouble. So I am pushing his creep all the way back at this point. This more Protoss starts to get a little bit of momentum. And I finally have the first counterattack I've ever done in this game ever. Uh, I guess the Void Rays was kind of a counterattack, I say, as I hit puberty. But uh, my stalkers over here are going to be taking out some of the drones. And this is the kind of multitasking that you need to do as Protoss a lot earlier and a lot more consistently. So I'm going to be working cleaning up these creep tumors right now and just killing off as many as I can. And I do decide, you know what, I have four Archons on the way. I want to start regrouping all of my army together. Again, killing off more and more creep because his map vision is now way, way less. There's, there's uh, hardly any map vision for him remaining. So that's really, really good for me. And the creep does start to recede. It takes a long time to recede. But uh, eventually it will receive, which means I will have advantages in fighting in the middle of the map. Now, uh, at this point, Zerklair has ended up losing a lot. That's been because I've been able to retain my units. Uh, random Ultralist there decides to run by me. Probably not the best choice, but he does have near fully upgraded Ultras. This is a lot of Ultras. And uh, at this point, I think he's going to try and go for the base race situation. Unfortunately for me, my two Colossus here just get completely intercepted. They... <laughs> They did not stand a chance. You are on the wrong side of town for sure. Oh, pushes over the edge there. That's kind of cool. But uh, either way, he is going to go for the base race. Now, the reason I am okay with this is because I know that his army right now uh, probably won't be able to kill mine. I have a lot of Immortals in here. I see no anti-air. And even if he kills off all these probes and everything, I, at this point, whoa, goodbye probe. I really don't care because that's just giving me more supply to make more units. So I'm going to be working on spending all my remaining money on Void Rays right now because I, I, I can see his army. He's attacking me with everything he's got right now, and there is no anti-air in that army. So what that means is if I can get out enough Void Rays, I'll be able to do a lot of damage to that army. Now, I'm trying to hide the fact that I have Void Rays right now. Um, eventually, I do have to reveal it, though, because, well, there's a bunch of units in my base, so I can try and kill it off. Now, Void Rays takes a very, very, very long time to kill off an Ultralisk, but hey, I'm at least doing damage to the army. And uh, at this point, I, I don't want him to have time to get Hydras out. That is my one main concern right now, because if he gets Hydras out, then the Ultra Hydra army might actually be able to uh, to engage me directly, and I do not want that. So if, if he only has Ultralisk, it's basically impossible for him to win, because I can keep running buildings all around the map. So that is why I'm moving out, cleaning out everything I can find, making sure his tech gets taken out, as I do see the base down in the bottom right side. Uh, and I'm going to be able to take this out. And again, there's no there's no spawning pool, there's no Hydra Den, there's nothing that I really have to worry about here. He's trying to cram out enough Overlords, but uh, he's got a long way to go. My Void Rays are still chasing this army down now right now my main concern here is that uh, if he manages to somehow kill all my buildings then I will outright lose the game but I have now forced him to have to retreat at an angle to engage my army directly and that is what I want I want him to be forced to engage me because I have the advantage I do not want him to engage me while I'm at a spine call so here comes the ultras right now remember that ultras do a ton of damage to stalkers but between Immortal Colossus and Psy Storm, that is going to be quite the conclusion to this game. I completely kill that off, and then he leaves without the GG, which is fine. I, I'm cool with it, because I just beat another Masters player, baby. Alrighty, so I don't know why Blizzard keeps putting me versus so many Master League level Zerg players, but uh, I, I've been able to beat a few of them. There are some losses mixed in there as well, but I would definitely say the most important things that I did incorrectly here is uh, I didn't do any scouting. I didn't do very much harassment, and um, I'm trying to think of what, what number three would be. I, I, I don't know if tech switching so much is actually a good thing or not. I still haven't quite figured that out. But uh, versus Zerg, I've learned that if you can get them to make a bunch of incorrect units, that is basically what you want is Protoss, because I think that he had expected me to go something different, so he made so many Hydras, so many Ultras, not realizing that I had tech switched several times. 
Um, and I really do like the uh, the double void ray production because remember, if you go for a if you go for an early forge fast expand as Protoss, there are several timings that you can utilize. One of them is going to be a seven gate. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. One of them is going to be a seven gate timing attack, seven to eight gates, depending on how how your micro works out, and um. You can do that. If that gets scouted, you can easily transition into Mass Void Ray off of two bases for now. And uh, that is an option. Or you can do the Colossus timing. Or you can try and trick them. The reason I like faking them out any at any point that I can is because you want them being defensive. Because then as Protoss, you can either secure another base. Taking a third base is huge for Protoss. I would say it's the most important base uh, for Protoss. If you can trick them into being a little bit more timid, then you're in great shape. It is when the Zerg are able to be aggressive with units like Mutalisks that you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, thankfully for me, I was able to put on enough pressure uh, via what units I had to not allow him to get out Mass Muta. But I would say the biggest threat to Protoss right Right now is mass mutilisk. I'm actually still not sure quite how to deal with it. It's very, very tough because it's one of those things where if you move out of your base and they have 40 mutas, there is nothing in your base that can stop those mutas um, except for landing a money storm or just leaving like 10 archons behind. So it's definitely tough because if you if you leave half your army at your main base and you attack with your other half, the mutas just fall back and kill the half that's attacking. If you stay in your base with all of your units, then the zerg just takes the entire map. And if you move out with your entire army, then uh, uh, then the Mutalists just attack your main base, and it's hard to win a base race versus Zerg. So it's a very tough balance. So that's why you want to try and force a Zerg not to get out Mass Mute. I mean, just look at Nest T. He recently played a game where he had, I think, over 50 Mutalists. And uh, the Protoss player had a very difficult time in dealing with it because Mutas are fast. There's not a whole lot of anti-air that does splash for uh, Protoss. All you have to rely on is Psy Storm and Archons, which can be very tough to actually land those hits on those units. So, yeah, Mutas, I would say, are the biggest threat to, uh, to Protoss right now. Other than that, though, Void Ray is very good versus everything. And, yeah, a lot of fun there on ladder. So I am able to defeat a couple of master players here and there. I don't think I'm quite master level just yet. I still see big gaping holes in my play, and I definitely want to improve on them. So thank you guys for watching. Remember, go out and play your one ladder anxiety game. Let me know how it went. Come back here. Post a comment below. Let me know. I love reading through these as I'm cuddling into bed. For some reason, it just helps put me to sleep. I don't know what it is. But uh, reading about how it went for you guys is always fun. So hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Guest here back with some more StarCraft II Ladder Anxiety series. Got so much harder to say that while I'm actually focused on like trying to build my first probe, trying to understand what map I'm on, trying to realize that it gave me another Master League Zerg player, which keep in mind that I would, uh, I would say that Zerg is my weakest matchup and it keeps giving me master level players. I feel like they overestimate me. GLHF, have fun and a heart. There we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, this is actually, I got really lucky on the new maps. You guys realize that? Uh, very, very lucky actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down, I guess right there is where I should do. Now, I believe that the spawn locations that are available are gonna be towards the right side. I almost feel like I should just forge fast, expand. And oh my God, I could like almost I can almost forge fast expand right here, man. I might have to try that sometime just to be ridiculous. Be absolutely ridiculous, actually. So for now, we're going to go ahead and go for the probes. Um, I remember on this map, they did say that vertical spawns are disabled. So I assume that he can't spawn down here, but he might be able to spawn here or here. We'll find out exactly where he does spawn and just, oh, he is up there. Okay. All right. So we are going to get lucky on that scout as far as I know. And I'm going to go ahead and send this probe. Let's see. Ah, uh, you little stinker. You little stinker. You would. All right, so we got to go ahead and drop this down there. I could actually put a pile on here, too. But I think I might have to put it in my main base. Uh, might have to do that. And we're going to go ahead and send my probe over here. And just keep chrono boosting out for now. Got to get the pile on right there. Actually, wait, wait, not there. Like right there. That's probably going to be better. That's probably going to be better. And I'm trying to delay his mining right now because you got to remember that he doesn't have any drones. So uh, he actually got a lot of hits off there, though. All right, so my for forge should be done in time. Just have to build a cannon right here. Come on. Come on, cannon. Come on. There we go. Get the cannon going down. And that should be okay, I believe. He is going to force me onto one base, though. 
which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. That's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I should be able to put the gateway there. Oh god, he's actually gonna, he's actually gonna get in here for now. And oh, oh, he actually can get across this map very quickly. Turns out. All right, so there's that, and we should be okay now. Yeah, we're gonna be okay. Gonna be okay. I probably have more probes than he does, so that's kind of nice. Uh, well, he's still, he's not trying to kill my forge for some reason. Should be able to guard these guys just fine. I will need a pylon right here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop down gas. Come on, gas, there you go. All right, well, let's see how I can deal with this. I'm actually not sure how this is gonna go. Um, I do have a hidden probe over here, though, which actually, does he have a base up here? Oh, he does have an overlord, but I might actually be able to cannon rush him right now. Wait, no, he's gonna kill off the forge. No, I'm gonna cancel that. Uh, the Overlord, I think he actually has that on patrol. Overlord's on patrol, man. All right, so go ahead and get our Zealot out right now. He did kill off my pylon. I don't think I can actually get this gas up yet, can I? Nope, not yet. Not yet, but soon. Oh my God, are you serious? That's not within range. That is just silly. That is just silly. All right, got that. Do, 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 do. Here comes my zealot. All right, so we're good there. I do need a cyber core now. I'm not going to put it there, though. I'm going to put it over here. And actually, I think he has enough zerglings to uh, kill off my zealot, which is unfortunate. Whoa, did he actually get that? Really? Really? That's a bunch of baloney. That's a bunch of baloney. All right, I think I can actually kill these guys just directly. Ain't no thing. All right, so that zealot will hopefully not get stuck up there. Yeah, I can just take this gas right now, actually. And if he kills another probe, so be it. Not even worried. All right, zealot, you're going to go over there. I'm going to go ahead and go for this. And thankfully for me, I didn't really lose all that much, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and go for that. You guys go there. Come here, Zerglings. Come here, Zerglings. Unfortunately, since I supply blocked myself, I'm gonna be late on that. So I need to go ahead and go for that. And he's trying to scout me out right now to see exactly what I have, which is actually a pretty smart choice. All right, so Stalker is on the way. That guy is dead. And no, let's see. Actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and expand. I think I'll be fine for that. And then we do have that. Stalker is done. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, go Zealot. Ah, you lucky Zergling. All right. Oh, whoa, what are we doing? Why did that happen? All right, there we go. Got that just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a robo now. A pylon. That one did finish. Kinda wanna go for a forge. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for forge right now. And we are gonna have lots of gas, which is actually quite nice. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go for this for now. Oh, so basically what I'm gonna do here is, I do like how easy this wallin is, at least. They made that pretty husky proof. Kinda sucks that I need extra probes up here, but it is what it is. And let's go ahead and drop the pylon over here. All right, so that should be fine. I wanna try. I don't know if that's actually going to work. We shall see. I'm going to go for a Dark Shrine right away. So you go there. Apparently I have Idle Probe somewhere. You guys go there. Are you stuck? No, you're not. Okay, good. All right, so they finally did kill that off, which is a good sign for me, actually. 
All right, I kind of want to get gas again. I did get warp gate, right? Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go for there and there. Go and get another gateway. And another gateway. All right, so I'm gonna try and set up a pylon over here. I'm just gonna drop one right there, which isn't the best location, but hopefully, I'm only gonna have one gateway, I think. Oh god, this is gonna be trouble. This is gonna be trouble. Yeah, he does have a score caller there too. Okay, I wanna try and keep him distracted with that for now. Let's go ahead and get Immortal out. And should be able to hold this off with E keys just fine. Oh my god, I did not power that with just one pylon, did I? Oh my god. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh, big mistake there. That's no good. These roaches have definitely gotten the better of me. Oh god, that was like the stupidest placement ever. Alright, that immortal will spawn, which is fine. Come on, come on you guys, there we go. Alright, so this is gonna be okay. Oh god, he does have guys down there. Alright, so we gotta send this over. Alright, that was really dumb. That was really dumb. Alright, we go ahead and send this back. Did he kill off these rocks? Is that what happened? No? He didn't do that. The problem is that he does know about my DTs now. So even though the DTs saved me, did they really? Okay, so what I'm actually going to have to do here is double Stargate. And hope that he's not able to scout it. Alright, so you guys need to go ahead and get gas. You need to come down here. Let's go ahead and drop more pylons here. Alright, so for now we're just going to Chrono Boost out workers like crazy. And let's see. So he does know about this. I'm going to get my probe out of here. I really want to try and keep him distracted if possible. So he does have an Overseer right now. Notice how the roaches move to the right, though. Um, keeping an eye on what their roaches are doing is very, very important. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go for more Zealots. And we do need more pylons. We also need more gas. I'm also going to go hide a base down here. Just because for right now... Actually, I think I can just go for a third up here. And then start walling this in. Which is kind of weird, I know. But void rays are freaking good. And I basically want to deny scouting as best as I possibly can. Which is very, very difficult to do on this map. So you guys are going to stay there. You go there. I'm literally warping these guys in just to try and deny scouting. That is the whole point of those guys. Alright, so this is going to be the most ridiculous long to get wall in ever. Gonna keep going for those. And you go over there. So I do know he already has some spores. So I don't think Void Rays are gonna win in a straight on battle. But, what is this guy? Crab Beetle? I'm okay with that. Uh, 19 out of 24. All right, so he's gonna spot this. So this is what I wanna try and deny if possible. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. Oh, no, he's just gonna go for it. He's gonna go for it, but not spot anything. All right, so hopefully that makes him feel a little bit uneasy. Cause I know I sure feel uneasy. All right, so let's see. Oh my God, this is not good. All right, we're gonna try to hold this off with whatever we've got. We shall see how this goes. I definitely would have loved to have been able to cancel those. All right, you guys need to go for that. And we're gonna go for Prismatic. Right there. Nope, you guys need to kill this off. Alright, you kill that. Just trying to kill off the Overseer. Got that. Alright, so he does have a lot of mutas, which is annoying. I don't know why he stayed there. That's the thing I don't get, is why he decided to stay right there. Alright, so basically he killed my forge again. So we gotta go ahead and go for that. You guys and you guys need to transfer now. I took less from my main base just because it has that weird placement. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and rally down there. So I've managed to hold off several attacks at this point, but he's also been able to uh, 
like, he's, I don't know, I haven't been able to put on any pressure right now, which is kind of a problem. Um, so at this point, I'm basically going to try and get up enough Phoenix to deal with Muta. I'm going to have to scout him out pretty soon, and I'm dealing, uh, I'm just going to be placing a lot of cannons right now. Keep in mind, I still do have that cannon from before. So two there should be okay. We're going to go here, try and get a ground attack again. And go ahead and go for that. And I mean, I have lots of probes. I haven't lost too many probes this game. Yeah, so there he goes right there with that. He's going to kill a couple probes here. Not too worried about it, honestly. Uh, we can go ahead and kill this off. And I also know that I can go over there. Actually, what I need to start going for, I feel like, is Robo. Oh, here's some Mutas. Why, hello there. Let's go ahead and take these. Thank you for your kind donation. And actually, what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch to... Oh my god, he really... He is all about scouting, man. Unless that was just a bad rally on his point, but gotta say, his scouting is pretty freaking good. Then again, he is master, so... Alright, so for now, my Phoenix count is actually really high. Did I ever get plus one? Probably not. Alright, so let's go see what we can spot. Oh my god, he got another Overlord. So I'm at least gonna be able to kill those off. Uh, let's see. Apparently these got unhotkeyed. Go ahead and go for Forge again. You need to go for that. Let's get Observers going. Alright, so at this point I think I can pick up these guys. Yeah, so see, he's switching to uh, Roach Hydra right now. So if I can actually get out these units, i am got to be okay. I mean, this is kind of what I wanted to have happen. I just don't think I'm prepared for it yet. That's my main problem. Um, I think that he could just... Okay, so we're going to go over there. So basically, I need to try and get these guys out. That's going to be my primary concern. Upgrades as well will be quite useful. And unfortunately right now, I don't have too many units. I need to... All right, we at least got a counterattack up going on over here. So I know about this base. This is going to get his army out of position, which is great. All right, so now I need to get Colossus out and this. All right, so I'm actually feeling okay right now. Not, not saying I'm in a great spot. I do want to try and hide a base if I can. Uh, but I do have the Immortals, and I have Colossus Tech on the way. I'm also maxed out. And actually, I kind of want to go for another Robo just to see. Just to see if I can afford it. I have too much Minerals. Not really any room for any gateways, though. So we're going to go over there. And basically, if I can get out Thermal Lance, we're going to try and hide a base down here. It's probably not going to be the most effective. And add on additional gateways. All right, so there's that. As soon as I get a couple more Colossus, I think I actually stand a chance. Uh, definitely want to make sure Thermal Lance is here. Make sure my upgrades are good. Can I get a Mothership Core? Yes, I can. All right, so he spotted that. My upgrades aren't doing the best. But I do have Observers in here. I got my Colossus. Oh, this is going to be tense. I don't know if I can actually do this. I'm going to try and rely on just a lot of Colossus right now. Oh, God, he does have Locust, too, which are annoying. Um, I'm going to have to go as soon as these Colossus spawn. Uh, go ahead and finish off with some Stalkers. So, let's see. He has a Changeling over here. Um, though, yeah, I don't think he has many, though. Alright, so you guys go there and there. Alright, we're going to have to go ahead and move out. So, he did spot this expansion. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to get this going. I'm going to cancel this for now. Alright, so I should be able to kill these off. Get Void Rays going. Go ahead and pick up the, these guys. Alright, I don't know why he's fighting this. I don't think he can win that. 
Oh, he did snipe my mothership core, though. We're gonna pick up you guys, and we are just gonna have to go for this right away. Oh god, I need these. All right, reinforcements, come on. Gonna kill that off. So at this point, I'm gonna try and just get reinforcements rolling. Uh, he's gonna try and go for corruptors, I would imagine. So I feel. Uh, let's see, can I actually pick these guys up? You guys all alone? Yep. Oh, that is so many mutas. Oh my god. Oh god, he's gonna force me to have to go back to Phoenix. Oh, nice. That was really good on his part. That was really good. All right, so this is because he has so many bases that I'm unable to really deal with this, and I'm almost mined out, so I think he actually has this. Got a hand to him. He did pretty good. I was able to uh, at least hold on for a while. Let's see. I think he has just so many bases now. He has lots of roaches as well. Ah, my stalkers don't have blink. This is going to be a pain in the butt. I also don't have the, uh, yeah, Mass Mute, I mean, is just so good. He's just killing my stalkers head on. All right, I don't think two Phoenix are going to be enough here. I think that is going to be it. Although, I don't feel too bad about this game, actually, considering that uh, it's been placing me against a lot of Masters players. I think that is mostly going to be it for me. I had I had to hit before... Uh, I had to hit before these mutas came out, and I just wasn't able to. And I also don't have Phoenix range right now, which is a pain in the butt. I think I can get out DTs here, but uh, this is only gonna prolong the inevitable. That is gonna be it. I'm feeling okay about this game, though. That actually wasn't the worst thing ever, because I held off his rush. Uh, honestly, at this point, I'm just gonna try and kill off these roaches, but he has so many bases right now. Um, I just want to see, though, he's on five bases. If I was able to hit a little bit earlier, I think I would have been okay. Or done some sort of harassment. But, uh, yeah, see, the Ultras, they wouldn't even have been a problem for what I had. I'm just going to keep uh, keep the DTs rolling for now. Honestly, at this point, you should have an Overseer pretty soon. All right, so you guys can just hold position here. That's fine. Uh... Yeah, he never got, uh, he never really got that many bases. So five bases, I could have, I definitely could have dealt with this. Um, GG, well played. All right, so I actually don't feel too bad about that one. Number one, he was Masters, and uh, number two, new map. I never got to play on that one. And number three, I kind of know what went wrong there, is that I wasn't aggressive enough, and my, my tech switches were okay, but I wasn't, I, I just needed to be more aggressive, is really what that one came down to. And you can see... Um, workers active, I pretty much stayed toe-to-toe -to -toe there, which is really, really good. Um, army value here, though, you can see that he was able to cost-effectively trade against me because of the amount of mutas he was able to cram out. And really what it comes down to is that my ideas were okay. It's the problem is that uh, I was way ahead in army supply, but since I never did any economic damage, the strength of Zerg is going to be that he can make lots of mutas right here. And so... What I had to do is be more aggressive to delay the economy so that he could not do this. Um, so that is uh, definitely something to keep in mind there. And you can see I was able to keep up. Even right here is okay because I had a much larger army. Um, but you can see I was able to keep my army alive for the majority of the game. And then the Mutas just cleaned up. Which I got to say, in, in all honesty, Mass Muta is very, very good versus Protoss. Um, I needed to have Archons in the mix instead of leaving them as DTs. So uh, several mistakes made there. But also a lot, of, a, a lot of good actually came from that, I feel like. So a great game. I actually like that game a lot. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gaski here, back with another episode of Letter Anxiety. Yes, guys, I know it has been months since my last episode of Ladder Anxiety. In all honesty, I've had a little uh, Ladder Anxiety of my own, and I've also been extremely busy. Uh, very, very busy with a lot of other projects that I've been working on, so I haven't had much time to play. Uh, I love you, too. There we go. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Um, so this is actually my first game played since... Well, basically, the last Ladder Anxiety video, I've hardly been playing any team games. Normally, I play a lot of those, and I can't really hear my in-game sound, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem here, but that's okay. That is okay, so this will probably be a very, very embarrassing game, which, uh, you know, I'm okay with. 
Because, hey, you know what? If I can overcome my ladder anxiety in front of 100,000 people, you can do it in front of just one. So the whole point of ladder anxiety is to get you guys playing more ladder. Really, the whole point of a lot of my videos is to make you guys realize there's so much cool stuff to do in StarCraft 2. So get the hell out there and do it. What is your excuse right now? There is none. Even I'm playing a ladder game here. Um, I do want to talk about really quick. Uh, number one, I'm playing this while I'm uh, casting, which is always a bit of a challenge. We'll see, though. Um, but I do want to talk about the whole fact that I was in Masters. That is not going to still be a thing. They have made Masters once again more difficult to get into. Um, so that's probably not really going to happen. Just, uh, just a heads up. That when I got into Masters, there was about 8% of players were in Masters when it's supposed to be 2%. And they are quickly pushing it back towards 2%. So, uh, yeah, chances of me staying in Masters are very, very low. So this place and match, I assume, will put me in Diamond. Uh, it might also put me in Platinum. I don't think it would put me in Gold. That would be a pretty low blow, Blizzard, if you put me in Gold. But uh, basically how they – what the, the change they made is, is that your placement match will place you lower than, you're use, uh, than you usually are but you cannot get demoted. So it's only going to promote you when it knows for sure that you deserve it. So that is uh, that is a thing. And, okay, so he's not cheesing me or anything that I can tell. Go ahead and get our cybernetics core. Unfortunately, I can't hear my game sounds. I don't know what setting I changed. But, uh, oh, well, what are these things doing? Well, I'm I'm okay with that. If they want to chill out over there, then that is that is fine by me. Oh, did he move them yet? Oh, he did. Okay. So he did go ahead and move those. Let's go ahead and grab the gas now, just because gas is super handy. Handy dandy. Let's see what we got going on over here. Keep my keep my probe scouting around. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this for now. want to see exactly what's going on back here. And, oh, this is going to be done. Let's go ahead and go for that. Actually, I want to go for a mothership core right away. So cancel that guy. Get another probe. I know, I know it's delaying my stalker. I don't even know if I need to get a stalker, though. That's the thing. That's the real thing. Um, let's go ahead and go for... Let's just go for a safe robo. Robos are always safe. They're, they're kind of the easy one to play. Oh, God, where's my probe at? Nope, nope, probe. Get out of here. He's trying to predict where I'm going to go. I... Actually, really quickly, I kind of want to scout over here. See exactly what's happening. Yeah, I, I do need to build a stalker at some point. Uh, I do need our pylon as well. Should probably leave it over here to power this. And, oh, there we go. He tried to chase it with his probes. And, okay. All right, I'm feeling okay about this. The supply block's going to be annoying, but what can you do? Oh, and my, my probe gets out of there. All right, I am, I am very content with uh, how that progressed just now. Pylon should be nearly done. I might go ahead and drop another one right away. Got my stalker up. You guys are coming over here. I, I love how this map has the horde symbol in the middle. That's probably my favorite part. All right, so you're going to do that. I'm going to make two observers, actually. Because being able to scout them, but also being able to defend is, is quite a good thing. So we're going to go ahead and go for that. You come over here. Let's go ahead and throw down Colossus tech. Colossus are always nice. Not necessarily the I win button they used to be. Uh, you are going to stay here. So I want to make sure that nothing gets past me. And we got that. Okay. I'm feeling I'm feeling okay here. We should have the other observer pretty soon. You're going to rally over there. Yep, you go over there. And you hotkey there. Whew. All right. Well, we're going to see. We're going to see exactly how this pans out. I'm honestly not sure. Throw down another gateway. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. That is a little bit suspicious there, buddy. Okay, go ahead and upgrade that. Hey, what do you think you're doing over here? Oh, get this guy out of here. Time warp it. I don't know if that was the right choice or not, but hey. You know, I should probably get an immortal. Probably can't get a Colossus just yet. Oh no! My Mothership Core! Retreat! Oh, he does have DTs. He 
Hey now, that was supposed to be my immortal. Oh my god, where's my observer at? Get over here. You guys back to work. My crisis management, not so good right now. Alright, if you want to kill that, I mean, I'm okay with losing that. All right. Well, that didn't uh, that didn't go the best. Oh, he did hide it down here, though. All right, we got to get these pylons going again. Get our pylon over there. All right, take this one out. Okay, we got the pylons on the way now. I am the voice I eclipse. I'm gonna go for the pylon first. Oh, we do have every mortal out. Alright, we'll come up here. Start working there. Guys, this is not a good game to uh to be coming back to for my first one. Alright, so you're gonna go over there. You go there. Kinda need our mothership core, but I also need probes, so. Alright, so lots of gateways and plus one attack. We gotta try and get a Colossus out. Well, we shall see, I suppose. Shall see exactly what's going to happen on this. Hmm. Oh, here's another pylon. So right now I'm going to see if he has anything else on the map. I don't really want to bring my... Oh, here we go. Here's random Archons I can kill. No, my Immortal! My Immortal! Up on the high ground. This guy really hates my probes. <sighs> All right. Well, I should probably get some other tech going. Although Colossus is nice. Oh no! No! Oh god! Come on, you can do it, Mothership Core. Alright, throw that down. 
We gotta keep throwing pylons around. I don't know if I can actually kill him at this point, because I'm kind of overextended. So he does have a base going on. Uh, well, we are killing off this, which is quite nice. Oh, he's trying to go for Stargates over here. Alright, that should be okay. He did end up killing that, though, which I'm kind of sad about. He does have lots of upgrades, which is definitely something he beat me on, but... Oh, nope, there's everybody back here. There we go, Colossus is stepping right on top of him. Oh my god, if I actually win this, this is going to be ridiculous. Alright, so you go over there. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this. Oh no, my Colossus stepped on the last force field. I gotta scout down here. See, he's still he's still sending units up here. Not sure what that's about. Going to attempt to find any other buildings that he may have. It's not over till it's over, guys. see what was that flying thing that thing's kind of cool all right well I think I might have this I don't want to I don't want to get too excited I just gotta find where this is at uh I don't see any hidden bases yet does he just have a Nexus hidden somewhere? I'm going to make more observers just in case. Alright, what do you got over here, buddy? What do you got going on over here? He does have one warp gate, okay. I won't tell a soul. Okay, so I think I have this game. My god, this was so sloppy, but hey, a win is a win, guys. A win is a win, and I will take it. Let's see what's, uh, which one it puts me in. We will see what league. It might put me in, like, platinum or something, but I will not be getting back into Masters. I will try, though. I will try so hard. Yeah, so it's going to put me in, uh, in platinum, excuse me. Now, I want to clarify that they did this intentionally because they made it so you cannot get demoted, so they only want to promote you if you have earned it. So it's going to put me in platinum. We're going to have to work our way back up. Again, uh, apologies for such a late ladder anxiety, but remember, every time a ladder anxiety video comes out, that means you have to go play one ladder game. Come back here and tell me how it goes. So go play your one ladder game. Let me know how it turns out for you. Were you as sloppy as I was? Or did you completely crush your way to Grandmaster? Let me, get, let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time.
Hello everyone, this is HGS Gask here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. It has been quite a long time since I have played some StarCraft 2. I've seriously been so busy with the launch, been very busy with the live events, uh, making my regular videos, and really just everything under the sun. And we're going to go ahead and do this. This is my first game really since the last game that I uploaded. So I'm going to be casting this in real time, GLHF. So this is going to be this is going to be pretty rusty, which uh, is totally fine. Totally going to be fine. I'm going to make sure that my nervousness does not get to me. But remember, guys, every time I play a ladder anxiety game, you are required to do the same. That totally rhymed, which was awesome. But uh, anyways, a lot of times when people play random, they cheese a lot. So you always want to make sure to go ahead and wall yourself in. Always play it safe. And I'm just going to go ahead and scout out right now. Putting things on the low ground would be suicide versus a random player. He was random, I believe which I think I can see up here. Yep, he did select random. So we're gonna go ahead and see exactly what race he is. And gotta wait for our pylon here. But yeah, you you this will probably be a disaster, guys. But hey, if I if I can fail in front of 100,000 of you, or however many are gonna end up watching this video, then you can fail in front of one. So get out there, play your game, come back here. Let me know how it went. Uh, I'm in a 13 gateway, because I'm not sure exactly what race he is just yet. Uh, I wanna say not Zerg. But we'll see. Oh, he is Zerg, actually. So good thing I didn't say that. All right, so we'll come up here. Except I did say that, which is totally fine. All right, so let's see what he's got over here. Don't really see a whole lot going on there. I am going to go ahead and throw down a gateway first. You're going to go ahead and throw down gas. And I just want to see. I think he's throwing down a spawning pool right now. But I want to see if there's a drone down there. Just in case. And there's probably not a drone over here. But, hey, it is worth checking just in case. And I think he just threw down his spawning pool. So we should be okay in that regard. Go ahead and throw down our other pylon to play it safe. And I assume that this is a spawning pool kind of like right here somewhere. Somewhere in that area. You go there and there. Now, casting while playing is definitely one of the most challenging things, especially since I'm talking so loud I can't really hear the game, which is quite unfortunate. Oh, what do we got going on over here? Oh, just a little drone. Going to town on that. And actually, I'm going to put my Cybernex core down here. I do not want him blocking it. That is super de duper annoying. And let's go ahead and get a Zealot just to be safe. And go ahead and do that. Start zapping away at this poor little drone. He has one mission, which is to try and block this entrance. Not going to let that happen, though. And we do have the Overlord actually coming on in. Oh, do I got to attack you, buddy? It looks like I do. I think he's just trying to distract me as long as possible. He's going to throw down another gas. And we should be getting on supply. Zealot almost out. And what I'm actually going to do here is stick the Zealot over there and you oh I actually took him out very nice and had a little bit of lag there which is totally fine and just to play it safe let's go ahead and throw that down sell it get over there you go there go ahead and get our gateway I don't know if I need a stalker I'm actually going to go for oh is he actually trying to expand here let's find out but I do kind of want to get Mothership Core out because Mothership Cores are awesome and alright you're going to hold position there I'm actually not quite sure what I want to do versus him. I could go for... Oh, my Zealot. My Zealot. Oh, my gosh. Is he actually going to kill all those? Oh, uh, Zealot. Zealot. Oh, God. That was super close. Uh, we're also going to be putting this guy over here just to make sure he does not do something tricky like that and go for that. Is he going to continue this? Yes, he is, evidently. All right, so you should be able to kill that off. Okay, cool. Didn't get any scouting in. Oh, my God. This guy really likes uh, attacking my poor Zealot. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw this down because he has thrown away a lot of stuff, which is fine by me. Mothership Core Man raking in the kills up to five kills. And I did kind of waste those Chrono Boosts. I was a little bit worried, though, that he was going to be more aggressive because he's being more aggressive than... The average, the average Joe. That is for sure. I think what I want to do though is get out several Phoenix. Yeah, see, he's still he's still making lings. That is a lot of lings. Alright, so for now, just to play it safe, we're gonna put him there. Also put so you're gonna go there, hold position, you're gonna go there. And we can go ahead and start sending out our motion core just to see what we can see. This should be almost done. I do need pylon. Come here, little guy, throw down a pylon quickly. Wasn't nearly quickly enough, but hey, we will take it. All right, you guys are going to go over there. Actually, I kind of want to send this guy there to make sure that he doesn't scout me. 
And I do need additional pylons. That is a fact. So you're going to go there. And there is no watchtower anymore. So definitely keep that in mind. That's something very, very important. I don't know if actually going for this is a great idea. Because I still am only on one base. So maybe we should go ahead and expand. Yeah, buddy. You better stay over there. All right. Let's go see if he has a third base yet. And you are going to go ahead and throw down an expansion. Which may not be the best of ideas. But hey, we're going to try it anyways. All right, so nothing over there. We do have the Overlord. Go ahead and upgrade these. You're going back. Oh, that's annoying. All right, let's see if I can actually save this or not. Oh, God, cancel it. All right, so nothing else. I did scare that away. Does he not have a queen over here? Oh, he does. All right, he's just still making lots of low-tier stuff. So let's go ahead and back on out. And maybe, maybe three Phoenix will be enough here to start harassing. Let's see. I feel like I can expand on this now. All right, go ahead and throw this down. I don't know where those lings went, but uh, let's see if we can find any ovary lords over here. Alright, there's one. Should be able to do a little bit of harassment. Oh, there's banelings. Oh god, this is not good. This is definitely not looking great. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can actually hold this. So far, so good. Uh, looks like he's still going to try to attack this, but we should be actually okay here. As long as I keep making void rays. All right, looks like he's still hovering these guys here. All right, I think we are okay for now. All right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind of okay for now. I may be eating my words later, but I think we are going to be okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and make this work. We shall see. Gotta keep following these guys around, just to make sure. We agree. We are one with you. But I feel like I can actually do this and actually make it work. Because honestly, at this point, did he burrow? I feel like he must have burrowed. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get a little wacky with it, guys. We're gonna try and make it work. Let's just go ahead and pick out a couple of these guys. Just to let him know. I, I know where he's at. Alright, so there's going to be that. And actually, let's go ahead and look for any overlords over there. Uh, see what we got. And now it's time for some carriers, baby. You guys are going to go there. You go there. I still got to send a couple probes down. Do I need more pylons? As long as I have the carrier on the way. Oh, hey, overlords. Go ahead and take those out. Hey, it looks like I can kill another overlord here, too. Oh, oh get back here, overlords. All right, we're just going to fly away. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this, guys. I'm feeling pretty good about this pretty dope two-base timing we got going on. We're even going to mix in these guys. Oh, there's the Overlord. Well, hey, I'll kill that. That's, uh, that is fine by me. 
but you you had best be ready for the follow-up. We'll see, we'll see exactly how this goes. It's probably not gonna be the best. And in all honesty, I'm just gonna try and wall it in now. All right, there's carrier number one. You gotta go there. All right, I think that's fully walled in. It may not be the best wall in. It may actually be one of the worst, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, guys. And let's actually get some stalkers to back it up. Should be good on the worker count. Uh, you are idle, which is bad news, so you go over there. Oh, uh, let's go for it. It is time. It is time. All right, so you are going to come over here. You got to throw that down. And then you are going to go over here. Oh, back it up. Oh, God, he has those. I don't have detection. That's not good. That is not good. We're going to come over here. I guess I could go for detection. All right, any bases over here I should know about? Nope, not really. Oh, well, hey, we'll kill some queens. I will definitely go for that. Oh, gotta pick up these. Graviton beam. All right, so you guys go over here. But hey, if you didn't make any anti-air, then I will, I will gladly take it. I don't think he actually has any anti-air, really. We're gonna go ahead and kill that off. Oh, can't kill those, but hey, I can kill your hatcheries. All right, observers on the way. Oh no, you guys, you got, you gotta run away. Kill off the hatchery. Go for that. We gotta get these carriers up. Oh, you never built a nexus. All right, carriers, keep making that. Kill off drones. Oh, here come the hydras, one by one. Yay! All right, well, hey. Hey, at least I was able to win with, uh, with a couple of carriers there. So, probably not the most refined build. Probably not the best way to go, but hey! Hey, for my first game back, able to win with carriers, that is okay. Now, I do want to discuss really quickly, guys, uh, a lot of you were asking about me being in Masters League. Keep in mind that they changed how the ladder works in several ways. Number one, getting into Masters is much more difficult because before there was actually a slight error. I guess I get that. I guess it's what I'll call it as an error, is that they did let a lot more people into Masters League than they previously have. So uh, chances of me getting in there have just been reduced. Number two, when you do your placement matches now, it places you in a lower rank than it did before because you cannot go down in rank anymore. So once you hit a certain rank, it is impossible to de-rank. So it, it, it did put me in Platinum League. Uh, I think that that's where I currently belong after watching that game. But hey, Carrier Rushes, man. That, that wasn't really a carrier rush, though, because he uh, he played random and was trying to attack me with lots of banelings, and I had none of it. But uh, anyways, a lot of fun there. You can go make fun of me in the comments, but make sure you go out and play your one ladder anxiety game. We'll come back here. Let me know exactly how it went. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Kioski here, back with some more StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm 4 versus 4 action. Wait, wait, we gotta find me. Where am I at? There I am. Uh, I'm gonna label this one as... Ladder Anxiety Light. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because normally Ladder Anxiety is all about the one versus one, but uh, I decided, you know what, I haven't played in a little while, I want to get back into it, but I got to start it easy, and I still have to do my placement matches, so I figured, you know what, I'm going to do a random placement match, four versus four, and uh, I'm playing with people I don't even know, because it plays me with some random. So let's go ahead and introduce the, uh, the gladiators in this game, spawning as the purple Protoss, which I think is quite fitting to my personality. Hey, look, purple's a royal color, okay? That's what I always say to make myself feel better. Anyways, it's got to be myself uh, in Clan Husky, the most prestigious uh, never-heard-of clan in the universe. And my allies are going to be Marcio, 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 something like that. It's going to be a teal protoss. Red Zerg is Kingson, or King Sun, and then Nail Bomb. Oh, for a second, I thought that said Buzz Bomb, but no, it does say Nail Bomb. And we are going to be going up against 
Uh, I I K S I I Kuzi K. Kuzi K. And that uh, looks like he has an ally from the same clan, uh, Slam Dunk. We're also going to be going up against Extinct and Inca. Now, I don't believe that these are actually, I mean, these are some pro player names I've actually heard of before. Uh, one of them has high APM. The other ones are relatively low in the opening stages of this game. So I don't think it is actually the real players. I know Inca, for example, is a, uh, is a pro player. But let's go ahead, and I'm wondering if I should actually do... Should I do this? Should I do red versus blue? Does it let me do anything else? Yeah, I mean, red versus blue is all we really get. So we'll go ahead and go with that. Uh, keep in mind, though, I'm going to be this Protoss. It'll be kind of hard to tell us apart from the other Protoss. But basically, the player who's making all the fancy moves, like uh, scouting, for example, is, is going to be me. So if you see someone doing something cool, it's, uh, it's, obvi it's obviously me. I can't even say that with a straight face I'm so terrible. But uh, either way, I did scout out right away. I spotted that he does have a spawning pool on the way. And I'm pinging. I'm telling my allies, watch out for the Zerglings. They are on the way. And they are actually going to be spotting this expansion for Nail Bomb. He did go for the high yield expansion. But with great reward comes great risk. And uh, does decide not to kill this off. He actually wants to try and do more damage to us economically and directly. We actually do have a second gateway on the way for Marciayo. And this will be up here. I'm going for a Cybernetic score. Also, have my Zealots on the way. I'm Corona boosting them out just because this is a lot of links. Got to be careful. Now, thankfully, Marciayo did something really smart here, which was actually go ahead and go for the uh, the pylons right now. And actually, hang on. If I if I go here, this is really important, guys. If I go here and then I go to gameplay, we got to do damage. There we go. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. So there's going to be the links right there. I also do spot some Reapers down the bottom right side, which is what I'm pinging, trying to tell my allies, you know what? These guys are a pre-made. They're going to be going into try-hard mode. Unfortunately for us, Marcia, uh, Marcio is going for uh, pulling off the probes off. Not quite sure if that is a necessity. Also, you can tell my Zealots are different because they got the fancy Zealot skin. Obviously showing that my skill is way too good. But either way, my hero Zealot going to be marching down here. We do have enough to hold this off. It is kind of annoying to have to micro versus this because Zealots will never actually catch up. But we do have enough to really prevent any of these links from doing too much damage. The probes, you guys can go back home. That's uh, Marciao. You're, you're playing a little bit too safe, buddy. Uh, either way, though, we are not going to be taking too much damage here. The problem is, though, that we do have the Reapers now up here. SCPs are going to be pulled off the line. So you can see that this game does get underway right away. Now, as this game is getting underway, yes, guys, I am calling you out right now. If I am playing one game for, uh, for Ladder Anxiety, you guys know the drill. You have to go out there, and you have to play one four versus four yourself. Come back here and let me know how that game went. No excuses. If you're someone who's going to forget about doing that right now, then uh, or doing it later, you have to stop and do it right now, okay? That's all there is to it. Doesn't like the Reapers are going to get cleaned up here. Looks like those two will survive, but uh, either way, the fact that he went for so many Reapers and didn't really manage to make anything happen with that tells me that we're actually not in that bad of shape. We do have a Baneling Nest on the way for uh, for Extinct here, but he does have his Lings being heavily revealed here. I'm going to go ahead and march my two Zealots here. Now, these Lings could kill my Zealots, uh, but I, I knew that there was more Lings on the way, so I wasn't too worried about that. And actually, going to get a pretty sick surround here. This is something you almost never see, which is Lings chasing down other Lings and actually doing it successfully. There's going to be this Circling speed finishing right up in time. To say the majority of those, sorry, I got distracted by this awesome meteor blast. That looks actually really dope. But either way, it's back to the action. The links right there. Got to go ahead and, uh, you know, they retreat all the way back home. So not too much we can do about that. However, we do have the high yield expansion, believe it or not. This is some Ripley's, believe it or not, right here. As we do have the bunker now down. Uh, no units are inside of that. But maybe he's going to scare his opponent into thinking that there are. We do have our Stalker Zealot moving out here. I'm going to go ahead and kill off this Overlord. Because I realize that they are trying to rely on early rushes. So if I can supply block them in any way, that would be ideal. It does look like the links are going to continue over here. They do chase out those Reapers, and uh, down goes the Overlord there. So nice little play here by Huske. Going to be taking out that Overlord. And uh, let's take a look at the Army Supplies. I'm actually kind of curious right now. So keep in mind that we are top, and they are bottom. And we do have a slight advantage from, who is this? This is Kingston, is, is really out in the lead. But, uh, you know, we do have one player who is at 27. And they have one. Their lowest is at 28 there. So relatively even. It's just our one Zerg player, King Sun, has apparently been macroing quite well right here. So it does look like the Lings are going to be running down here. And actually, this is relatively undefended. Not a whole lot here to defend, except for these Baylings right now showing up just in time to try and get the big detonations there. Not going to quite happen. Instead, we're going to be having a Ling versus Ling battle. My Stalkers show up, and hopefully they, they can absorb some of those Baneling hits. If nothing else, they are going to be absorbing a lot of these Ling hits, buying time for the Zealots and other Stalkers and more Marines to be showing up. So we are going to be returning the favor as far as aggression is concerned. This is a lot of aggression, only at the 8-minute mark. Big Baneling hit right there, and it does look like they have enough defense here to hold off the uh, Ling counterattack, but it does look like the Queen will go down first, but they don't have enough to clean up this. Here comes some Banelings rolling on it. I'm trying to intercept them with my, with my Stalkers there. 
That is not going to happen, though. And actually, we have lots going on. Reapers over here have been massacring this base up here at the exact same time. Got to be going for the uh, the hatchery there itself. I have backed into the corner to try and get as many kills as possible. Keep in mind that I do have the mushroom core here as well. And actually killing off quite a few workers. Not bad overall. And I can go ahead and mass recall out of here as soon as I would like to. And I'm going to go ahead and just do that for safety. Not a whole lot more I think I can actually do there. And uh, do you have some units right there? Ah, there they showed up that party at the absolute wrong time. At the same time, though, we do have another counter attack. Got to be going down the bottom left side. And honestly, this is an action packed game. And this is my first 4v4 in like months. I honestly have not been playing that much 4v4. And already, this game is like way too out of control. This is actually my placement match, like I said. No exaggeration. You guys can check my match history. This has got to be my placement match. Uh, having not played in a long time, definitely rusty, but having an awesome game right here. Looks like those drones have either been killed or had to transfer away. The Queen's going down as well. But uh, either way, they are starting to get a lot of Marine and Marauder, which actually kind of has me a little bit worried. But also keep in mind, this high-yield expansion over here really paying off dividends right now to our Terran player. Um, I did move my army down here to try and spot if there's any stray overlords. I think I intercepted one on the way. But uh, either way, not able to kill off any more overlords there. There is one here, but I'm never, ever, ever going to be finding that guy. Here comes a lot of links right now. Got to be going for the counterattack up on us. Now, I'm completely out of position here. It does look like the queen is going to get taken down. Banelings are going to be morphing in. The drones are here trying to hold their own for now. There are two spines. They should probably move those spines a little bit over there. Got to be careful of those banelings right now. And uh, we'll see. I am pinging right there saying, hey, banelings are on the way. You got to watch out, buddy. And those two banelings right now are going to try and run around the spine call here. The queen got to try and hold off as long as possible. Again, the banelings going to be running inside, though. And they are right in the drone line. Some pretty big hits. Uh, Bailing refusing to detonate, though. He was like, you know what? I know my life is to kill myself, but I just don't want to. Uh, the, a lot of drones did get taken out there, though. But I kind of want to look at the overall workers here. 21, 31, 24, 27. That's going to be to our 36, 33, 28, 39. So we do have a distinct worker advantage. Do we still have a supply advantage? It's getting kind of close because they do have uh, the Terran player with 72 supply. Got to be in first place as far as supply is concerned. And our Terran player, Nail Bomb, not in a good spot. Yes, he's got lots of uh, money right now, but he's just not been able to spend it here or has decided not to. So he's actually fallen way, way behind. And that's kind of how team games are. You're going to have players of different skill sets, which is honestly, I know it's frustrating to a lot of people, but it's actually what I like about team games. It's a lot less stressful, not a lot more fun. And you know what? If you lose... Just, uh, just blame it on your teammates and, and just keep playing. I would rather have people playing more games than not playing games. But uh, either way, we do have the barracks right there. Getting covered in their creep, but not really producing a whole lot. He doesn't have that money. Stim pack going to be on the way. Heavily, heavily delayed. I am going to be working on uh, Size Storm right now. I mentioned that in chat. As uh, really, I've, I've only been able to stay on two bases. And the reason I am going for Size Storm, I actually want to talk strategy here for a second. The reason I'm going for Size Storm is look at the army supplies once again. Their highest army supply, uh, really in the game, at least uh, I guess they're basically tied right here, going back and forth, but uh, is a Terran player, Marine and Marauder. Look at the time in the game. 12 minutes, 45 seconds. What does that mean? That Marine Marauder is absolutely powerful right now. They can take on a lot of our stuff in a direct fight. Uh, and, and gateway units are just not going to cut it. This amount of Zealot Archon, not really going to cut it. Sure, they have legs. They have no upgrades, though will easily be kited here by the Marauder Slow, by the Stem, and by the 1-1. One, one. So army supply advantage, I would say, uh, especially goes to that one Terran player. So that is what I'm most worried about. And uh, the strategy part of that is going to be me getting out the High Templar as quickly as I possibly can, given I only have two bases to do so. But I also have lots of High Templar right now, so we're going to go ahead and uh, try and move out with everything we've got, which I feel like is just not that much stuff. They have two players over 100 supply. We don't have anyone over 100, but overall we have relatively even distribution of our supply. Um, I still got to say, though, unfortunately, Nail Bomb. Nail Bomb, this is a nail biter for me. Also just lost that command center as well. Trying to clean up these drops. There's only so much I can do with just gateway units, though, which is always the, uh, the, the sad thing about playing Protoss, that if you don't have anything to chase down those drops, they are going to give you one hell of a time. Here comes a huge drop from Slam Dunk. He's got to be doing this NBA Jam style from downtown. Uh, he's doing one of those dunks from, like, half court. At the same time, though, we are going to go ahead and kill off one of those bases, and hopefully he can micro here well. Ah, the Bane gets get some pretty good hits. But not devastating hits. Does manage to keep some of those units alive. Unfortunately, this is my base over here. And these medevacs are ready to go. My army completely out of position. This army right here is not reacting in time to help out. So this base is as good as dead. But honestly, at this point, I was focused down here. My high Templar are in position. This is exactly what I made them. They've waited their entire lives for this moment. Can they actually make it happen, though? And there's going to be the huge storms. Oh, my God. 4v4 team storms, always the best versus Terran. And more and more storms coming on down. Got to be executing that entire army. And that was my goal, was to kill that off, finishing off the medevacs as well. 
sure I lost all the High Templar, but man, did I kill his army. Uh, the drops over here have killed off this Nexus over here, so both teams have lost a lot in this game. But uh, you also have to remember that... Do I have anything back here? No, I don't. No, I don't. Hopefully he doesn't actually end up dropping me. But uh, either way, I'm trying to cannon rush down here. As I do see that this base is there, I am finally working on plus one, plus one, managing to find the resources somehow. Uh, even though I thought this drop was going to be doing lots and lots of damage to me. I don't think our Zerg player actually realized that there is a drop over there. I'm moving my army back now to try and defend against this. I do have my probe over here. Haven't really found the resources or time to throw down those cannons. I do ping up here because even though we can't see these medevacs, I'm like, you know what? I think those medevacs are there. So I really like to utilize pings as, uh, as best as I possibly can. He is going to be dropping inside the space. Keep in mind, he really has nowhere to run. So we're going to be able to get a nice engagement here. Yes, guys, I know that time warp was really bad. It's okay. But hey, if nothing else, I get a storm it right there. Oh, my God, the storms and the feedbacks. My High Templar MVP of this game trying to go for the cannon rush over here. It does get taken out, though. And I think I realized that my probe's there. It's like, oh, God, got to get out of here. I don't think there's really anywhere for this probe to run, though. So uh, we'll see. Oh, my God, he put a planetary there. So definitely nowhere for him to run. But hey, at least I did spot that base. But the problem right now is if we take a look at the income here, they have uh, 1,500, 1,200, 1,100, and 900. We are actually way behind in the income right now. They have more bases. Oh, God, we have creep tumors touching creep tumors. You should never let the creep touch. And uh, the creep tumor over here is actually pretty good. So this game getting a little bit out of control overall, I would say. But uh, either way, it does look like King Sun is uh, deciding to lag my game by having so many units right now. I think he's probably got the highest supply in the game. He's at 168, so yes, he does. The Medalists are right here trying to engage. I think we can win this directly, although we can definitely win it directly with all these Marines. Our army is going to be moving forward. And this is the attack of the giant red blob. As we have all managed to group up now, we are going to be going straight for the kill here. And we'll see exactly what we can make happen. Keep in mind, my Zelts are the fancy ones. They're black outfits on. And they do have lots of roaches, lots of marine and marauder. Actually, really good angle for these marines and marauders, but there's just overwhelming amounts of forces right now. It does look like our roach ally, our uh, roach enemy is going to be backing up here a little bit. So we are able to kill off one of those bases. And keep in mind, they do have that income advantage. I would say they still do, as uh, all their players are at over 1,000. Whereas uh, me right here, I have, like, no extra income. I am trying to get that base once again. But uh, my Zelts do decide to run in there, which is not going to be ideal for them. Uh, sure, they're absorbing some damage, but not really doing that much else. And at this point, I do lose the Zelts. I honestly don't have that much stuff at this point. I kind of lost the majority of my army killing off that Terran player. So I'm hoping my, uh, my allies can help out here. I've got to throw down a couple last storms, though. I'm not quite done just yet. Time Warp right there, trying to just buy us as much time as possible while still saving us, uh, enough for Mass Recall. Not that I really have anything to Mass Recall, so... Uh, I'll see if I can do anything with this mothership core here before my High Templar. Well, they kind of ran out of juice. They don't really have any energy whatsoever and aren't really even close to it. They still need about 15 energy, which is going to take a little bit too long. So I'm going to go ahead and morph that into an Archon. And uh, my supply is actually atrocious right now. I'm only at 32 supply. And they are actually going to be cleaning up our entire army down here. So particularly the army supplies once again or uh, active forces, I suppose. I mean, look at this supply distribution. I'm at 32 because I went all High Templar and I lost them instantaneously. So I'm actually the lowest in the game right now. I feel like I've done my job, which is kind of whittled down the Terran player. But uh, either way, 191. So it's basically up to Kingston at this point to kill all of them because look at this, 140, 85, and 120. Those are all ahead of where we're at. So uh, not looking good. I'm like, they have too many bases, looks like. of uh, L, L. Cooks. L Cooks like is uh, what I decided to type right there, but uh, either way, they do have these bases on the left side, which we just don't uh, we just don't have anything to match that. They're just now getting the high yield base over here and on the left side, which is not ideal for us. So at this point, man, it is up to you, Kingston. You got to make it happen. Zerg players always lag in StarCraft too, but hey, it's got to be worth it. He's actually running directly into this base. Does he decide to go for the kill right now? Bailey's got to be rolling into the roaches. Is it got to be worth it? We're about to find out. So many units go down. Honestly, not sure who's got to come out uh, ahead right now, but keep in mind it's the Mutalist count is just absurd. It's absolutely out of control. 35 meters down to 32. The Marine and Marauder showing up here to scare this away. I think he'd actually engage that directly. There's just not a whole lot of anti-air there. But again, cutting into that supply in a big way. 162. He doesn't have that much money reserved right now to be replacing those units. I am going to try to expand over here on the left side. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to get my, my own economy back on track right now. But again, I, I really just want to be the guy who's relying on High Templar. The reason is that High Templar are almost always valuable in team games, especially against Terran, especially against Zerg. And that is exactly what we're going up against right now. So uh, we're going to try and go for it here. And this is going to be the most embarrassing moment ever. I was looking somewhere else. I actually remember this happening. 
And uh, somehow my, my guys were set to auto follow and they ran into those main links. So you guys can laugh at me all you want. But it looks like our army might actually get destroyed here. The Roach is decided not to engage directly, but instead go for the kiting action, which I think is the correct move. Keep in mind that we are swinging around on the right side as well. An absolutely ridiculous battle taking place. Unfortunately, I have no units for me to throw in this battle. We're going to be losing that battle pretty one-sidedly at the same time that we are going to be taking out one of the high yield expansions over on the right side. So an absolute slaughter fest going on this game. And it uh, makes me kind of miss playing team games. I feel like I need to be doing this more and more. So uh, even though this is ladder anxiety light, this is uh, this is definitely a stressful game for us. We're going to be killing out the base down the bottom right side. And keep in mind that we're actually killing off a lot of workers here. So even though we're trading a base for another base, we're going to be the ones who are killing off all of those workers. The probes right here. I don't know if you want to be running in there. Probably not a good idea. He could just log this as mine with these or something. I don't think that's worth it because I think that uh, it would have been, uh, well, now it's an eye for an eye. It would have been a lot less. It would have been like an eye for a pinky where we would have really come out ahead in that one. But uh, either way, all those probes do get taken out. The roach count is absolutely out of control. There are Marines here to guard them. Three attack, two armor. Keep in mind that I really don't have anything on the field right now. Uh, do I actually have anything? I literally have nothing except for probes. Literally nothing but probes. So it's got to be all up to uh, our Zerg player. I mean, again, I, number one, made a huge mistake. And actually, you can see Marcelo ends up leaving the game. Uh, I wonder how much money he had. Did he did he give us any money with that? I'm actually not sure, but that the teammate has left the game. This game seems to be winding down, but we are not out of this game just yet. Even though it's four on three, we are not going to go down without a fight. Remember, guys, it's never too late to cannon rush. Got my fatty cannon rush down here on the bottom left side. Four kills and uh, one kill there. Well, what's the total amount of kills I get? It looks like six, and I'm going to be able to kill off the, uh, the missile turret there. Allowing the Mutalist to easily attack that location relatively soon. We're going to be losing lots of drones up here as well, but this is kind of just a ridiculous game. A big battle on the right side. There's things happening literally everywhere on the map, and uh, I do see that they are marching down here. They do finally kill off one of my bases. Did I ever make any units with this? Uh, well, keep in mind, guys, it's never too late to cannon rush, and it's never too late to DT rush. Uh, 24 minutes in the game. All I can afford is some DT, so I'm going to try and uh, scrape together some utility out of what few resources I have left. I kill off both refineries as well. I didn't realize I did that uh, when this game was being played, but uh, either way, I am able to cut off those refineries. That's going to be less and less gas here. The Mutalist count, what is that actually up to right now? 54. And keep in mind that one of our players has still left. He's going to be chasing down the Overlords, chasing down the Roaches. And the thing is, is that if they don't have enough anti-air, then they're going to be paying the price dearly. Here we go. First DT is going to be going inside the base. Uh, going to go ahead and follow these guys for now. Now I decide to turn around. And the Mutalist count right now might actually be enough to kill off everything. We've killed off their Terran player. We're killing off all of his workers as well. So the base down the bottom right side is in a lot of trouble. I do decide to send all my DTs down here to try and kill off the uh, the base right now. And actually, it's going quite well. I kill off every single drone. Got to try and get the, uh, the sport car there. I do manage to. I was hoping he doesn't realize it and scan but he does scan. Those guys melt away instantly. But at the same time, I am on the loose with more and more DTs. I literally send these DTs to every corner of the map, and they do have quite a few kills going on. Scans are cleaning those up, but the problem is they don't have the anti-air that they actually need here. I'll keep an eye on the production tab because it is low for every player, and uh, it does look like the Roaches here are trying to find something you can actually do. That is a lot of Marines, but they are stemmed all the way down. It does pick up a lot of those Mutalists, though, and uh, that brings the Mutalist count down to 48, which is not something I normally say down to 48, but uh, either way, the Marines able to cut it down now to 44, so losing quite a few Mulas right there. My DTs are still going to town. Uh, I do hide this guy back here just to try and uh, keep full efficiency out of these guys because I don't have a whole lot of money. Sure, I have minerals, but at this point, uh, it's honestly more important to be doing economic damage to them than warping in a few extra zealots. So uh, I am going to try and do I send my DT down here. Yes, I do, but he's confused because his, uh, his AI is telling him to go straight for the planetary which is not the ideal situation for me. But either way, I do have that. Looks like my DT down here finally got cleaned up. I do have another one going to be slipping in there. I have a DT hacking down here, really trying to send them every which way. The DT right here as well. He is at the seven kills and is raking in more and more. We got our hero DT taking place right there. He is going to get scanned, though. And uh, he, his life for ire indeed. But uh, either way, this DT might actually get this orbital command by himself. Decides to lift off there. We'll see if that actually burns down or not. But the sub DT is loose in these bases. So even though we are down a player, we are trying to take out their Terrans. If we take out the Terrans, that is all of their anti air. I don't think you're going to save this command center in time, to be completely frank. So that DT did indeed kill it off. There it goes as it does tick down. Army supply, our Zerg player is max, but overall supply is about tied here. I think we are actually ahead. It's just that we did lose that one player there. My supply is starting to crawl its way back up slowly, but surely I do have nine DTs on the field now, still trying to harass with these. And actually, uh, in all honesty, doing quite a good job at it. Just going to be killing out these supply depots. I mean, honestly, supply depots don't matter at this point. What does matter, though, is uh, making them 
be be terrified, not want to be able to move out. And here we go, Bailey's rolling in. All oh, the Marines, all oh, the Marines, and the Bailey's eat them all alive. Oh my God, gonna be taking those out. I, I'm pretty sure I, I I blew out my microphone just right there. Ends up destroying the Marines. That was their last hope there. He needed the spatty splits, was unable to get it as he does end up losing all those Marines and uh, not looking good for them at this point as uh, we were actually able to uh, somehow win this game. I thought for sure we were we were going to lose, but they just don't have any anti-air now. And there's going to be the GG coming out from them. Sure, they got a lot of roaches, but that is it. No anti-air on the field. So what an exciting Exciting return to 4v4s for me, and this game did place me in Platinum. Keep in mind that uh, they, they kind of changed the ranking system, so you rank lower than you normally are, but you cannot be demoted. I believe they're still doing that, uh, as that was kind of a new feature they added, so that you can't actually be demoted, but uh, it, it places you a lot lower than you normally would be. Normally in, in team games, I'm either Diamond or Masters, depending on if it's a, uh, a good season for me or not, but uh, either way, had a lot of fun right here. They are basically out of options at this point. I mean, they do have quite a few Marines. Uh, I can't remember if Slam Dunk has actually left the game or not, but uh, either way, that is not looking good for them. I do believe this game is nearly over here. Uh, I mean, they might want to do one last push. No, they decide to go ahead and leave the game, so there we go. Oh, my God. So this is going to be uh, Ladder Anxiety Light version, so you guys know what your homework is. Go on to StarCraft 2, download the patch if you haven't, and uh, play 1-4 versus 4. Come back here. Let me know how your game went, and uh, did you have awesome players? Did you have noobs? Did you rage at your allies? Let me know all the juicy details. I love reading through them. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gask here, back with some more StarCraft 2 Ladder Anxiety. Now, I did upload a Ladder Anxiety video to my second channel, which it was a 4 versus 4. I decided to go ahead and put that one there. Number one, it was actually partially air. I, I, I started to upload it, and I'm like, wait, this is on my second channel. But then I gave it some thought, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it there. I haven't played in a long, 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 long time. And uh, in all honesty, I have kind of have missed team games. I mean, the team games have always been my favorite part of StarCraft 2. So in the Ladder Anxiety series, I'm not only going to be doing one versus one, but I'm also going to be doing ladder games uh, in, the, in the team games. And the point of Ladder Anxiety has always been to get you guys to play more StarCraft 2. That has always been my, uh, my goal with that, and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing here today. So if, uh, if you're watching this right now, you guys know what your homework is. You actually need to go out and play a three versus three. And if you're going to watch the other video as well, you have to play a four versus four. Come back to this game, uh, or this video, I suppose, and let me know how your game went. Because if I can fail in front of this many people, you can fail in front of just one. Or in this case, five other people, which is no big deal. No big deal. But uh, let's go ahead and introduce our players, our opponents are going to be from Clan BTYD. It's going to be Prophet up in the top left side. His ally is going to be Dan Watt. Dan what? As uh, he's in the same clan as well. And we also have Mohican Love. Quite the, uh, quite the name that we have going on right there. And introducing Team Husky down the bottom right side. Representing Clan Husky. Well, it's Husky. And uh, down the bottom center side, it's going to be Molto Vivis. I don't know what that means, or Molto Vives, Vivas. I don't know exactly what that is. I'm sure you guys do, though. And his opponent, wait, wait, ally. Al oh, sometimes in these team games, your ally is really your opponent. Uh, it is going to be Red Rum, which is, of course, murder spelled backwards. Very intense. I think there isn't there like a rum that's actually called Red Rum. There has to be. I mean, someone's marketing department needs to get fired if there's not at least one Red Rum out there. But uh, he's from Clan 2 Ups, and uh, I'm going to leave the color scheme this, and I'm going to tell you how you can differentiate. Actually, it's really kind of hard to. Uh, well, we could do... Let me know down below. Which one do you like? Do you guys like the, uh, the, the, the red versus blue, or do you like the differentiating colors over here? Either way, we are going to be having the probe. Uh, this, is, this is me doing some initial damage here. I think I'm actually going to be first blood, though. Unfortunately, my probe is going to get taken out. Now, I got to say, this is my second game uh, this month. The first one, of course, was a 4v4. This one is a 3 versus 3, and I am playing with random allies and opponents. I don't know anyone in this game other than myself, but really, I hardly know myself, guys. Yeah, it sounds like a... sounds like a country song. I hardly know my opponents. I hardly know myself. But if I keep on playing, 
Uh, I don't know what rhymes with opponents. So that's the end of the song right there. But uh, either way, it is going to be Terran Zerg Terran versus Protoss Protoss Terran. So uh, we do have a little bit of uh, representation for all of the players in the game. Keep in mind that this is my placement match. So we get players of all different skill levels. Uh, Red Rum going for Forge and Cannon in the base after Cyber Next Core, but before getting any Stalkers. So uh, he's going to go for that. He's got his third gateway down. He's just going to be doing the good old classic. Uh, I like to call this a campaign build, which is something you do when you're playing the campaign, where you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back on one base. It's going to be totally fine, and I'm going to take it from there. So he's going for the campaign build, which is always a lot of fun there. Uh, Molto Vivis actually is going to be walling in here. He's going to be going for a straight-up drop. He's already got the Marines. He's got the Widow Mines on the way and one more Marine on the way as well as the Medivac. So pretty good shape there to go ahead and go for that drop right away. Now, I want to talk about this game a little bit as my thought process, exactly what my thought process was. You guys know me. My biggest weakness is in team games is that I love to go macro mode. I love to try and get away with things that you really shouldn't get away with. By the way, there's four Reapers on the way at a time, which is actually just ridiculous. So what that means in this game is that uh, I'm going to be going for an expansion. I'm going to be obviously going for a gateway, but I'm also going for Templar Archives at the six-minute mark. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, is because anytime you go up against Double Terran, they are extremely powerful at around the 15-minute mark if they just both go Mass Marine Marauder. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to go straight for Storm, hope my allies get the beefy units like those gateway units, like the Marine and Marauder. What's he got going on in Robotics? Twilight Council, yep, he's going for the campaign build, man. He's just getting everything in the game. Reapers are going to go ahead and move out here. But anyways, my thought process is storm as quickly as I possibly can. And that's why I have a lot of gas saved up right here. And uh, do I start researching storm right away? No, I think I warped in High Templar. So there we go. I got two High Templar at the seven-minute mark, which I love doing in uh, in these types of games. Sounds like the Reapers right here. Going to be attempting to clean this up. Big hits coming out of the window. It's killed off all those larva. Oh my god, he killed like six or seven larvae there with that shot. That would be that would be something that'd be extremely awesome in uh, in like a pro level game. But hey man, it's just ladder anxiety, so I think it makes it even more awesome. The Reapers are moving out. Keep in mind, I don't really have anti-Reapers, so when this guy's saying, hey, a lot of Reapers are headed your way, I'm like, well, I have two High Templar without Storm, a Stalker, and one Zealot. So I'm trying to warp in two Stalkers here to help with this, but I'm going to take substantial damage here, and this is the price you pay in team games uh, for going for the extremely fast High Templar here. So I'm going to try and run over here to clean these ones up. Gotta go ahead and transfer those probes out of here, but uh, I am taking way too much damage from this. However, I do want to say... I do want to say that uh, I have been placing down lots of proxy pylons, so I have them, I would say, actually in pretty good spots, even one hidden up here, trying to send this probe over here. He's finally got to get it intercepted and taken out there. But uh, either way, Reapers, got to continue to harass over here, and my poor probes, they just get back to work. All they want to do is earn an honest living, and here come the Reapers to massacre them once again. And now I do transfer them away relatively quickly. Uh, I still end up losing, I think, three probes there. But uh, either way, not the worst thing that could have happened, and I'm going to be able to kill off a couple of these Reapers right now which uh, ends up being no problem whatsoever. So I was going to go ahead and get scooted on out of here. And uh, apparently people can message me, even though it's set to busy. Whatever. Hi, a a Adam Adamix Red. Uh, Atomics Red? I, we'll go with that. Sounds like a soda flavor. But uh, either way, we do have Danwit going to be landing his command center right there. And uh, no one actually taking this expansion yet. I'm the... Well, I guess I guess uh, Maltovic has uh, finally... Malto Vivis, not Maltovic. But uh, either way, players trying to expand here. And we do have... Going with the campaign build, Red Rum going to be going for the Zealot drop right now. And I think we'll actually be able to kill it off. Yes, he does force the cancel right there, which means that these roaches are going to boogie their way all the way across the map. Now, keep in mind the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is to cast all games, whether they are good or bad, and to encourage you guys to play some more. So if you're like, Husky, this is not the most action-packed game I've seen uh, ever. And well, yeah, that's not the point. The point is, is to get you guys out there playing more and to make fun of me when I'm playing terribly. But it does look at the Zealots right here are going to eventually get taken out. And uh, this army is going to get destroyed. The War Prism, I love how the War Prism like, doesn't even decide to save anyone. They're just going to go ahead and leave every single unit to die there. Which, uh, that's all you can do, I suppose. But uh, either way, the Marines are going to be taking down these destructible rocks. And I just realized these rocks are kind of weird. They have rocks on the side as well on the ramp. But uh, either way, the Marines now chilling out, trying to take out the destructible debris. We do have combat shields on the way. And, uh, oh, I remember this game now. I remember. I played this game a little bit earlier. Uh, this game, there was a guy lagging the entire game. And that's, uh, you know, the little, the little lag screen? It would keep popping up 
over and over and over again, and uh, that's what the one two one two one two three was. Is me basically spamming there during that uh, during that lag screen. So yes, I do remember this game as it was very, very laggy. However, I do have my High Templar out now. Lots of High Templar, more High Templar than I'll really ever need. But uh, I do also want to say High Templar and Team... Whoa, what is, what is going on with this crystal here? It refuses to uh, actually fall as it is apparently just floating there. But uh, either way, in team games, I love getting Storm guys because there's always going to be that one opponent who does not micro and clumps his units up too well. So my goal is to be landing those ridiculous Storms. So that's going to be exactly what I'm looking for here moving forward. Also, I, I kind of want to start getting a little bit of Colossus here. I am going to go ahead and leave one High Templar back in my main base. The reason I'm doing this is to help with drops. Uh, you can feed back any medevacs. You can Psy Storm any uh, Marine clumps there. Having, having one of those guys back at home is uh, never never that bad of an idea, unless you absolutely need it with your army, but I have so many High Templar that that is not the case. Now, some of you may be saying, Husky, why are you not making Archons? Archons are so good. Uh, hi, funny man. Uh, Archons are indeed good, but High Templar are way more fun in team games, let's be honest. Either way, it does look like Zeltzer going to try to harass. Not that much damage going to be dealt here. The War Prism is still alive, trying to dodge those sport cars as best as he possibly can. But I am going to be able to expand up here. No, High Templar, get out of there. You can't You can't throw down an expansion. You're not a pro. Here come some Reapers right now to try and intercept me. But I am going to go ahead and spot these guys. Do I throw a Storm down? Yes, I do. Oh, God, Storms are so good. Every single Reaper there gets taken out. He'll probably think twice. Ooh, one joining there. He's like, take me. Uh, he'll probably think twice about trying to attack me with Reapers again. And I think that's actually kind of the end of the Reaper era. Uh, Dan Watt does have now Marines on the way, trying to recover from the fact that he invested so heavily into those Reapers. Uh, Roach Hydra now going to be on the way for Mohican Love, which is uh, quite the awesome name, I must say. I mean, really, who doesn't love Mohican? Uh, Mohican Love. I I don't know, guys. It's it's a fun name. It's a fun name. We do have the uh, the Overseers now in this army. He's going to go ahead and start taking out these destructible rocks, which uh, is kind of annoying for me, as it is going to open up a counterattack potential location, especially since he has so many units now. He definitely could move up here and start wrecking my world. He's actually going to scout down here, though, and uh, see if there's no base. He might actually back out right now. Doesn't want to overcommit just yet. I think I have probes eventually that go over there to uh, to try and set up a base or a pylon. But either way, a couple of Woodbines going to be waddling their way up here. Places them down on top of the ramp there. So that's going to be uh, somewhere that we really cannot attack just yet. But uh, there's a big scan there revealing that exactly, well, that's exactly what the army is. A lot of Roach Hydra. Now we're starting to get uh, a little bit of momentum on our side. And keep in mind also... That versus a double Terran, Psy Storm is going to be good for basically the entire duration of the game. They're most likely going to be going for Marines and Marauders. They're most likely going to be going for more Marines and Marauders. So you might as well be throwing down that feedback. God, don't you just hate those disgusting Zerg neighbors? All you try and do is keep your house clean, and they just poop all over it. Yeah, typical Zerg. But uh, either way, let's go ahead and start uh, start doing red versus blue right now, so you can see exactly what's about to happen. As it does look at the Roach Hydra, going to be moving on down here. does intercept a lot of our Marine Marauder, and actually he runs right into it. Both these players just face planting into each other. That's going to be favoring uh, us in a big way. However, this battle is about to get a little bit out of control as uh, we do have major, major engagements got to be taking place here. I finally bring in a Colossus as well to join in. High Templar here are ready to go. Got to try and start throwing down those storms. Storms are where it's at in team games. One big storm on the left, more and more storms to follow. And uh, they are deciding to continue the attack here. Unfortunately, I do lose a Colossus there. But what I don't lose is my High Templar, so I'm going to continue to storm. And uh, one more storm there to finish it off. Not the best storms, but at the same time, they were the best storms. I think I lost my observer somewhere in there as well. So they do have Widow Mines kind of chilling out over here, which is annoying. But hey, what can you do? No observer right there. But after winning that battle, this looks like I may be winning my placement match as we're able to kill the majority of their army right now. And uh, taking a look at the supplies. Well, actually, uh, I mean, they're definitely behind in supply uh, across the board. But they definitely aren't as low as I thought they were. So they probably do have a lot of money that they could start spending if they wanted to. It does look like the uh, the Widow Mines there eventually do get taken out. And my poor High Templar right there. I'm like, oh, God, what's happening over here? As uh, they do get taken out, or at least one of them does buy those Widow Mines. Either way, though, I do have Stalkers over here. Or actually, that's Red Rump Stalkers. You think I go ahead and try and back out? My Pylon is still alive over here. Not that I think I ever use it, but uh, having it there is always a good idea. The more proxy pylons you can have established, the better for counterattacks, things like that. But for now, oh, I remember this. I got super supply blocked. Oh, God, this is this is embarrassing, but I have to admit to my mistakes. I got super, super supply blocked, and I was like, oh, God. Because the probe I had sent out to build a bunch of pylons actually got killed, so they never finished completing. 
And I was like, well, it's time just to throw down enough pylons to get maxed out. So that's going to bring me close to the 200 max supply. I also am going to be having lots of gateways on the way. And the thing about Protoss in this situation is that as long... Oh, my God. That was so many dead units from that Widow Mine. That was a huge chunk of his army there. And uh, hi, Tyler. It's going good. It's going good. But uh, either way, I do have a fourth base. It's not going to be the way. Anyways, the thing about Protoss in this situation is as long as you aren't dying... Even if you have lots of money, you're still going to be able to spend it. Um, it's not like Zerg, where you want to save up as much larvae as you want, uh, or as you can. It's not like Terran, we have to individually make those units. As Protoss, as long as you have enough gateways, you are going to be able to get maxed out pretty darn quick. I'm also going to be adding on Robos to get uh, more and more Colossus out right now. Because at this point, uh, Psystorm's still good, but the problem is that they start going mech, and they start going Thors, Ultralis, things like that. I'm going to need beefier units like the Immortals, like the Colossus here to back up my army. So I do have that. Um, I also have three Forges on the way, working on the triple upgrades, getting them upgrades, which is not something I always recommend doing, but uh, I obviously had too much money to spend, and also I am getting pretty close to max out. So even though I have a little bit extra money, uh, I'm not going to be able to spend it on all that much. So having the upgrades right away is kind of the way to go. That Marine right there is realizing he probably doesn't want to take on that entire base by himself. We actually are having Red Rum long this is mine because he has no bases to act. Oh my god, poor Red Rum. I think that, hang on, let me, let me see. If I go here, uh, let's see. Purple, does he have anywhere to, oh, he does have the one base over here. I like how he's long this is mining, even though he has plenty of probes over there. And I'm yelling at my teammates to go by accident. Didn't mean to have caps on, but this is going to be potentially the final battle. Uh, Ultralisks are here, but the problem is that he doesn't have any backup. That is a lot of Ultras, actually. But they are just going to melt away this army. We do have the 2-2 upgrades. The Ultralisk is at 4 armor and 1 attack. But uh, either way, this is looking good for us. we got a nice good concave, a nice good angle. High Templar is showing up at the absolute wrong angle. That is not where you want to be, High Templar. But uh, either way, now that the Marines are coming on down here, even though they have Thors. Oh, God, my High Templar, they are so dead. They are so dead. That was all me. That was all my top three North American control, man. As they try and run right in there. Lots of drones do go down as well. But either way, this is going to be a big old victory. Uh, this is my second game for this month in Ladder Anxiety, ending up winning uh, both of them. But definitely, guys, your homework. Go play a 3v3. Go play a 4v4. Come back here and let me know exactly how it went. If your computer cannot handle team games, then you have to play a one versus one. But uh, either way, we are indeed victorious in our 3v3. So I believe that this actually put me in gold. But remember that the placement matches, uh, they put you a lot lower ranked than you than you used to be. So I got, I got a lot of work ahead of me, guys, to get back up to platinum and diamond. And maybe Masters. We'll see. We'll see how the season goes, though. Either way, guys, let me know down below how your game went. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HSS here back with some more Ladder Anxiety. This time we're going to be playing some 2 versus 2. Now, uh, for those of you who have been following along, I did play a 4v4, then I played a 3v3, now we're playing a 2v2, and I guess you guys probably know what that means for the next episode. Yes, I will be playing some more 1v1 in the near future, but for now, I decided to go ahead and do my placement match since I hadn't done it yet. So anyway, spawning up the top left side, it is going to be me! In clan, me as the uh, light teal ish Protoss. My ally is going to be Oz. Maybe I'll just be calling him Ooze throughout this game. I know it's not quite Ooze or Oze or Oze. Either way, he's going to be the uh, the purple Protoss. And our opponents are going to be Bebop down at the bottom right side. And his ally is going to be Doryu from clan IPOI. So uh, good job to Doryu. But uh, either ways, I have decided to play more team games, but also continue Ladder Anxiety. So these are going to be ranked games with uh, people who I do not know. I almost called them no names. But really, that's kind of rude because they do have a name. I just don't know anything about them. Are they nice? Are they handsome? Or do they do good in school? I don't know. I don't know a thing about them, but I do know that they like playing StarCraft 2. So that's going to be what we play from here on out. No, I'm not going to be switching mid-game to a different game. We are going to be completing this one. And a lot of you were calling me out in the last videos, and I agree. I agree. I do need to play some more 1v1, so that is going to be happening in the near future. And also, you guys know what your homework is. If you're watching this video, you have to go out there, play one ranked 2v2. Come back here. Let me know how it went. If you don't own StarCraft 2 or you don't have a computer that can run it, 
Uh, makeup a game. Tell me what your rush did and why it, it worked uh, beautifully in your makeup game. But uh, either way, in these team games, especially in placement matches, uh, well, number one, I'm only going to have one placement match. But I personally, when I play games, I like to practice things that I might use in one versus one. I also like to practice macro, and I really don't do any sort of super cheesy all-ins. Although this game... Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys decide if this is a cheesy all-in. What I'm going to be going for this game is a one-base robo with a, uh, a war prism, and I'm going to go four gateways to pressure one of them. Does that count as cheesy? I honestly am not sure. Doryu's poor little probe over here is stuck inside of his allies' base. We'll see if that actually manages to make it out of there or not. But yes, since this is a placement match, it will be a lot lower level of play. And also, since I haven't played in a while, that'll that'll heavily affect my skill set as well. I'm trying to keep my probe alive as long as I possibly scan, scouting around. But unfortunately, run into a Marine right there. He's got the custom Marine skin, which uh, makes them look way more badass. I kind of wish they would melee, like if they're getting attacked by Zerglings or something with a little bayonet there. But uh, alas, I digress. So I go ahead and get my uh, Cybernetic score here. I'm going to be throwing down another gateway here. Now, what I actually wanted to do in this moment is throw down a robotics, but I didn't know exactly how long this SCV was going to be scouting me out. And the problem is, is that the SCV is scouting me out. I am not going to be able to hide anything. So I have to make sure that, that gets out of there. So I do have the one stalker on the way. Chrono boost that out. That's pretty standard to uh, kind of seal the deal at the front entrance there. And I will go ahead and drop another pylon. Then eventually we'll get the robo. But I'm going to try and time it. Of course, I don't have the timings perfectly in my head. But I want to try and time warp gate with the four gateways with the warp prism. So we'll see if that lines up here very well or not. And, uh, oh, that SV is going to get out of there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring a probe off the line. I do remember doing that. And zap goes the probe onto the SCV. Does manage to get that. Is that first blood? Uh, no, my probe, I guess, technically was first blood. But that probe has the very first worker kill in the game, at least. But uh, either way, all right, he's the very first worker to get a kill. Look, it's, a very, it's a very small ribbon that, uh, that you're handed to by the, uh, by the army. If you're in the army, the husky army, you do get ribbons for these things. But uh, either way, I do have the robotics on the way. I knew that my probe was able to kill off. Uh, Purple's checking my base out, man. He's getting a little, a little touchy feely here. O's saying it's not huskies, so they're they're going to be having a debate on if it's really me or not. Which honestly, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, am I really husky? I don't know. I don't know. I, I have the same StarCraft name that the real Husky does. But uh, either way, it does look like actually a lot of expanding going on here as we do have Doryu going to be expanding. It looks like Bebop has his Orbital Command on the way. And O's, or Ooze, has his on the way as well. So everyone is expanding but me, which uh, is honestly a shocker. This is a shocker. Normally, I'm going to be the one who actually expands first, but I'm going crazy with it. I got the Warp Prism on the way. Gateways look like they'll be lined up relatively when they should be. Warp Gate is nearly done. And I should be able to warp in a couple units here to go ahead and throw those inside of the Warp Prism before I start heading out. Now, keep in mind that uh, the Mothership Core is moving out here. And the Mothership Core, I think, has, like, the longest vision in the game. I, I don't know the exact stats on it, but I feel like they have the longest sight range in the game because they can just see for so far, so many miles. Look at this. He can basically see my entire base. And also saw my Warp Prism right there, albeit barely. He does know about the Warp Prism. I try and hide it. But he's already seen everything, so uh, not really hiding it much there, unless, you know, he wasn't paying attention there and is going to go ahead and back out, which, honestly, he does have the one Void Ray on the way, doesn't have Warp Gate yet, because guess what? He's going for mass Void Rays, baby, in typical team uh, league action, is going to be going for that. We do have the one Bunker going to be coming down for Bebop. Keep in mind, yes, it is a lower level game. Uh, I think I've already kind of emphasized that a little bit, but in team games, you never know what you're going to get when you're playing with random allies and random opponents. So I'm going to go ahead and start the attack right away. I decided to pop Guardian Shield. Was hoping to force field the ramp, but figure Guardian Shield would help out against Stalkers, the Void Rays, the Mothership Corp, and all that stuff. So I do manage to go ahead and kill that off. So now, right now, I'm going to be forcing these probes away. I honestly don't know that he has this base right here. I just assume that he probably has one or two Stargates. But so right now, he does have a lot of money as he's unable to spend. Just now, did finish the Warp Gate. But at this point, I'm going to try and micro my units as best I can. I don't expect to kill off everyone with this rush. I feel like I've already done the damage that I need to here, and if nothing else, he is losing a lot of mining time as he decides not to go ahead and transfer those workers down to uh, to the base. And also, the fact that Bebop is microing so much, uh, in my eyes, is saying, you know what, that is micro that could be used on macro, but is instead being used on micro. 
Did that make sense? Because when you're macro, macroing, it still takes micro guys, or your APM. It's APM that could be used on macro. There we go. And anyways, I'm going to go ahead and kill off a lot of these Marauders, a lot of the probes as well. Goodbye, Marauder, which means a lot of dead probes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and warp in a couple units here. And uh, just as long as I'm not getting supply block too heavily back at home, I think I did a little bit, but at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and expand. My thought process here being, you know what? I haven't killed Red, but I've made his life a little bit more miserable. He's not mining nearly as much. He's lost a lot of probes. He's down to nine probes right now. His ally is having to swing back over here to try and help out. So, you know, even if I'm throwing away some gateway units here and there, at least I'm causing a lot of damage. Overall, I've still lost less. Uh, I've, I've lost less than the red player, and that doesn't include even the blue player mixed in there. So definitely going to end up being worth it there. And again, he's going to continue to micro right now. Got to try and kill off as many units as I possibly can. Do get one last Marauder there. I think I'm trying to remember if I kill off this Marauder or not. I think I do. I turn around there. Boop. There we go. Kill it off. And, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I lost a lot, but uh, not nearly as much as them combined. So they're at, uh, what, about 3,500? 30, 3,425. I'm at 2,300. And on top of that, my ally, look at this, Ballertoss, man. He hasn't lost a single thing. Now, the reason for that being is he is also going for Massive Void Race. He also has a fleet bacon on the way. Everyone loves bacon. And uh, is going to be... I I assume going for carriers or Tempest or getting lots of upgrades or something like that. But either way, Red Player has survived. Now, at this point, my thought process is, all right, my ally is obviously macroing up. He's obviously got to be going for something ridiculous here. He's he's as good as dead to me right now because he's he's doing his thing. He's got his three bases. He's macroing. I doubt he's going to want to move out with me. So I have, uh, I have a tough decision to make. Do I expand again? Do I try and end the game by myself? Because I didn't really get a whole lot of help in that last engagement. Or do I just kind of build a standard army from here on out? So my process right now, thought process is, you know what? I did a lot of damage. I'm going to have fun. I need practice. So I'm going to keep playing it out uh, to the later stages here. I do have a lot of money in the bank, which is shame on me. We'll see if I do anything to actually deal with that. I do have the uh, robotics bay on the way. Starting that Colossus. Extended Thermal Lance on the way. Now, uh, I want to tell you my thought process at the time and why I actually don't necessarily agree with this is, number one, I already saw that Red is obsessed with air units. We saw him that even in the midst of all that chaos was still trying to get out air units. So for me to go for Colossus, that is good versus the Marina Marauder. Uh, I'll have Zelts as well to help with that. But what it's bad against is those Void Rays. Now, it puts it in this kind of weird... Uh, or puts me in a weird position, really, where I have to rely on my ally to protect my units from the Void Rays. And that is a situation that uh, is not ideal. When you're playing with Pugs, you should not rely on them for anything. So anyways, I'm trying to go for Colossus. We'll see if my ally can help defend them or not. I am going to go ahead and continue this harassment here, warping in some Zealots right now. Uh, just got to try and force these units away, which I actually do manage to. And the fact of the matter is, take a look at the income here. It plummeted down to basically nothing here. He's at less than 300. And I'm trying to go for the missile turrets right here. Not necessarily to uh, to be able to continue these drops, but just to make my opponent feel very uncomfortable. He's going to go ahead and kill off my war prism here. I do kill the missile turret there, which will... I would assume make him feel uncomfortable because is there going to be another war prism? Is there going to be a war prism from the other uh, opponent, which would be my, of course, my ally? We don't know. But uh, either way, Oz or Ooze, he's just he's in his own little world back here. And uh, O's saying, uh, yeah, that is not Husky at all. Haha. Ha. So I guess they, they have come to the conclusion that it is not me. So we will, uh, we will, we will let them think that. As uh, we, uh, honestly, if I sit and try and type it out, uh, my APM is going to take a big hit right here. And I do. Apparently, my Colossus is joining in the fun. And a couple of Zelts are like, all right, we'll join in with this. As uh, they are slicing down. And uh, do I have my forges yet? I do have double forge now on the way. Uh, but either way, it does look like they have quite the concave down here, actually. So their defense at the front is pretty good. The main problem is that they're going to have to worry about these bad boys. The Tempest, they do have plus one, plus one right now. Two, two is going to be on the way. However, at the same time, Doryu is working on his air unit still. He has the plus one attack and uh, sending out a probe right now, I would assume, to go ahead and expand. So my thought process right now is, you know what? Let's have some fun. Uh, so what does fun in, in Husky Town and Husky Lingo mean? Well, it definitely means going for Psy Storm. It means going for Colossus and uh, working on Zealot Legs and things like that. So to me, getting out those high-cost units is really fun. Also going to be working on lots of upgrades here as well. Going to be double Corona boosting out those uh, double Forges and also are going to be able to take the high yield expansion. So I am personally deciding to go ahead and macro here. And so uh, it's going to be a little bit boring from here on out as, uh, well, not here on out, but for now, as we do have a bit of macro for both of our teams here. And uh, honestly, that is what I like to do. That is my, my, my top three favorite things to do in StarCraft. I think my top three favorite things to do in StarCraft would be storming an entire bio ball. 
That one feels great, which I'm hoping to recreate that right now. Uh, macroing and killing someone who's winning with DTs. Those are probably my three favorite things. What, what are your favorite three things? I never really gave that any thought, but definitely size storming a giant bio ball. That is, uh, that is number one, front and center, without a doubt. Look at these birds, man. They are, they are flying quite fast right here. These birds uh, uh, probably don't want to be here. This is actually kind of scary, but at this point, uh, Herbal Blair owes or ooze. He really likes cannons. Oh my god. I feel like at some point, you make so many cannons that uh, you you really aren't even able to mine that much money out of the base. So I don't know the exact math on these cannons here. I'm not even going to try and figure it out. But uh, the main problem being is that they're all in the front there. So not a whole lot they can do versus things like drops. Uh, speaking of drops, Bebop not going to be dropped himself. He has a lot of anti-air there kind of everywhere. Looks like he is actually going to be moving out with a drop of his own and actually may have found... This is like the Death Star, okay, where it's very powerful. you got lots of frontal firepower. You can set up traps, you know, against Admiral Akbar and all that. But the main problem is that you leave a glaring hole in your defense, quite literally, where they can shoot the torpedoes, blow up your Death Star from behind, which is exactly what's actually going to be happening right there. And uh, this drop is most likely going to be killing off this next great location. We are completely out of position here. And uh, honestly, seeing this army is making me a little bit nervous right now as it is over on the left side. And again, you cannot rely on your allies in these team game situations. It is every man for himself. That's how I play. That's how I play team games. Anyways, unless I play with a friend, it is basically every man for himself. And I do have quite a sizable army. I did decide to go ahead and go for lots of Stalkers, just because I know he has Void Rays. And, you know, Stalkers aren't the best answer to Void Rays, but uh, at least they shoot air. And I don't really have anything else that does shoot air. Now, it does look at this drop over here. It's going to get completely cleaned up, and uh, we'll be able to save that Nexus. Doryu is saying, LOL, the Nexus getting one kill of its own. And uh, the main thing is, which is actually something I think a lot of people don't realize, is that air attacks do affect the mothership core. It's not like a, a drone or something that doesn't benefit from upgrades as much. But uh, it does have now 11 damage, which is still a tickle cannon at its finest. But uh, either way, he does have the 3-3 three, three upgrades now. So basically what that means at this point is, uh, th this is kind of a little bit of foreshadowing, is uh, let's say that Husky maybe accidentally engages both players at the same time by himself, and maybe Husky ends up losing his entire army. Uh, you know, just hypothetically. Uh, no foreshadowing involved, but uh, either way, I'm at least able to do lots of damage here, so let's make myself feel good as I am able to kill lots of that. Oh, it's with the offensive GG coming out of left field, man. As uh, we do manage to kill off these Void Rays, the upgrades are only at one attack, while O's has three, three, and even one shield here. So I'm going to go ahead and be running down here. Now, I've got to be honest, guys, I'm back home macroing, so uh, this army... This army that you're witnessing right now, it is past the point of no return. So I do go ahead and just throw down a couple of storms here to try and deal as much damage as I can. Even the Seeker Missile here I feel like is going to be helping out me uh, more than it helps out them. But either way, I do manage to kill off every single Void Ray except for one. That is the one last Void Ray there, and I do manage to do a lot of damage to the Terran as well. But you can see my resources lost is uh, in first place. So, hey, I'm at least doing the best at something, which is sacrificing my army. So what I'm going to try and do now is, uh, well, number one, two can play at that game. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it out a bunch of Stargates right now. And honestly, you know, I just wanted to even things up a little bit. Let's take a look at the army supplies. And actually, they're not that uneven at this point. After me losing my entire army, they have 120 supply plus 90, putting them at about 210. Uh, we're going to be at about 260, but I did just warp in a lot of stuff there. Widow Mines here. Do they activate? No, they died too quickly as uh, I have my observers following him around. So that actually helps him out a big deal here to be able to spot those. Not going to get hit by the Widow Mines. And uh, I'm going to be the one getting counterattacked by Void Rays. Keeping in mind that I only have a handful of Stalkers. I do have Blink on the way, but it's not nearly done just yet. But again, don't want to be relying on my ally to defend me. He's going to be moving in with his Void Rays, but he is separating his army a little bit, which I think is a little bit sloppy. He does kill off that uh, that Raven, which are not cheap by any means, and does kill off all the Marines as well as they die in a nice synchronized line over here. But uh, he's actually delaying my 23-minute Void Ray rush, so I got to hand it to Dory, you man, with the Void Ray counterattack. Does activate that Prismatic Alignment, which is actually something I was hoping for. So that I could possibly engage these with the Stalkers as well. Although I gotta say, Oz or Oz or Oze is going to actually be backing up here to help me out. I do get several shots off on those Void Rays, but the main problem for uh, Doryu right now. Uh, you can run, but you can't hide because my Stalkers can move over here to lock down this side. And, of course, my ally is moving in with all of his Tempest right now, just blasting these things down. Let's take a look here. 39 damage uh, to ground units versus massive air units. They do 95 damage. Can you believe that? It is a unit that almost does 100 damage. 
in a single shot. That's pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Of course, we're probably not going to be going against any massive air units, but my god, if we did, they would be super, super dead. But uh, either way, we are able to clean that one up, but at the same time, they are being quite a nuisance over here. They got the Viking drops going on as he is going to go ahead and land those down. But at this point, it looks like things are winding down for our opponents in this placement match. And Doryu is going to go ahead and leave that game. The Vikings get taken out. And uh, it does look like Bebop has left the game as well. So we are going to win this game pretty one-sidedly. Uh, I do want to upload this game, though, because the point of Ladder Anxiety is to upload the games I play, whether they are good or bad. Sometimes I cast them when I'm playing them live. But sometimes I like to go into a super hyper try-hard mode which is uh, where I played and then cast it a little bit later. That's what this was. But I do like to talk about my thought process and strategy a little bit. You know what my strategy really needs is a much better base layout. This is uh, this is not this is, this is not how a base should look, guys. Uh, definitely needs a lot of work there. But either way, I have won all three of my placement matches so far. Can I actually do it in one versus one, though? We're going to find out in a future episode of Ladder Anxiety. Go play your game, guys. Play 1-2-V-2. Come back here and let me know how it went, won't you? Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HGS Gusky here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. And uh, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But spawning down the bottom right side, it has got to be Husky's Husky. Uh, I guess it's bottom center, whatever. And up at the top center side, it has got to be Bumblebee, my Terran opponent. And uh, I do want to mention a lot of things as this game gets underway. So listen up, buckle up. Why, why you have a buckle on your seat is beyond me. Unless you're watching this on a phone in a car, then you better be buckled up. No excuses, guys. Safety first. Uh, or second, if it gets in the way of fun, obviously. But uh, anyways, this is Ladder Anxiety. I'm finally doing a one versus one. I've read your comments, guys. You wanted me to do Ladder Anxiety a lot. I got literally thousands of messages saying, Husky, why did you start a series about Ladder Anxiety if you have crippling Ladder Anxiety yourself? And that is true. So today, I am donating my time to help cure Ladder Anxiety, which is a global epidemic. And uh, I'm going to be playing my first 1v1 in a very, very, very long time. And I will be the first to admit that I do have Ladder Anxiety very bad. However, anyone else out there who has 1 versus 1 Ladder Anxiety, today is your big day. If you own StarCraft 2 or, or you don't, I don't know, go out and buy it. But either way, it is now your homework to play one one versus one game. You can even pause this game and go play it right now. Come back and watch it afterwards. But uh, either way, go play your one versus one. Come back here. Let me know how the game went. Did you win? Did you lose? Did you make big plays? Did you make big mistakes? Uh, either way, if I can embarrass myself in front of all of you guys, you can embarrass yourself in front of just one person. So get out there and play. Uh, right now, I'm actually really confused because I didn't scout this. Uh, I didn't scout this supply depot, so I don't know if he's doing a proxy. I don't see any barracks or anything like that. But I do see that he is going to be sending a probe down here. So that tells me that he wants to. If I'm reading this correctly, he wants to go ahead and expand right now. Now, something I really, really want to talk about is uh, how placement matches actually work these days. Now, most of you know that if you're ranked last season, you only have to play one game to be put into a league, which uh, whether it's bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, masters, I don't think you can place in a grandmaster. But uh, okay, he's going to go for the uh, the good old attack his own command center strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and attack the SCVs to try and prevent that from happening. And uh, he does go back to work, so very interesting strategy there. I'll talk about that in just a moment uh, as it kind of leads me into the point that I'm trying to make, which is uh, now how it works is you cannot be demoted from a league. But what that does mean is, uh, number one, this pylon, he is tanking it like a beast. Uh, I do go ahead and throw down Nexus after Gateway. Uh, I was going to go for Nexus first, but then I didn't see a barracks anywhere, so I threw down the Gateway. Then I saw he was going to go Command Center, so I threw down the... Uh, Threw down the Nexus, and then I'm going to go ahead and go Cyber Nexus on the back. Anyways, I'm trying to prove a point here. Uh, in that the placement matches now place you much lower because of something called MMR Decay. They place you much lower so that you have to work your way up. Now, uh, you'll see after this game, whether I win or lose doesn't really matter. It's actually going to put me, get this, in Silver League. Now, that's totally fine. I, I don't care. 
It's not going to hurt my manhood. It's not going to hurt my ego. But uh, the, the fact that it does put me in Silver League, it, it has me a little bit sad because I feel like if I'm going to be going up against Silver League players, that it may be slightly mismatched considering that I was in Diamond League the last time that I played one versus one. So I do feel bad, uh, but do know that after this game, it does put me in Silver League. And actually, several of you messaged me and were like, hey, bro, nice, uh, nice Silver League placement. That is actually how the new system works. So I think it's good for people like me who haven't played in a while and you want to work your way back up and and uh, kind of see exactly where you settle because I think I'm going to be settling much lower than diamond especially after they made it much more difficult to get into masters which means a lot of those master people that were in it last season are now in diamond but uh, I think I'm going to settle around gold platinum right now since I am so freaking rusty but anyways, that does mean that my placement match is against a much lower skilled player. I, uh, I do make a promise, though, that I like to show off every game that I end up playing. And so I'm going to do it. That's the whole point of ladder anxiety. But just know I do outmatch this guy. And I could tell right away by the fact that he sent two SCVs down to kill a pylon when he could have easily just dropped down the command center somewhere else. That's, that was my tell that I probably outclassed this guy. And uh, so I decided to go ahead and just be aggressive right away because I can probably kill him right away. Is it the best practice for me? Probably not. I should really play more team games to, uh, to kind of get back into the groove of things. But either way, the Stalker is loose. He's already up to two kills right now. Should be able to kill quite a few with my with my pro Gosu Micro, which you will, you will, see, uh, you will see me fail here pretty hard in just a moment. But uh, either way, go out there and play, guys. Your place a match. If you are ranked above silver, then you'll probably be playing someone who is ranked lower than you. So there's that. Uh, and if you're in silver or bronze, then who knows? Who knows, man? But either way, your homework is to go out there and play. So I'm just going to be aggressive here with lots of gateways. And you'll see my macro slip horribly, which there's never an excuse for that. You should never, ever, ever let your macro slip. But uh, mine does just because trying to focus on micro and not doing that the best here. I do have warp gate uh, now completed. I have a couple stalkers that are just finishing up right now inside the main base. But I am focused on my micro here because honestly, I just have a feeling that he has no marauders on the way. And again, this is uh, this is what I like to call risky decision making where it's it's technically the right move. But I don't know that for sure, and I'm taking a big risk in assuming that it is the right move. And I've just been chewing up all of these marines, so I'm feeling pretty good because now I can start killing off the workers here as well. And that worker's loss is going to start getting much, much higher. The SVs are pulled off the line, but there's just not enough here to do that much damage. They do kill off one stalker, but honestly, this is going to be one of the most anticlimactic games. But I just wanted to fill you guys in on number one. I'm going to start playing more 1v1s as well as team games. And I am going to go ahead and plump those all into the Ladder Anxiety title. I think it makes it much more easy to kind of locate those types of games. However, if you're a big fan of just one versus one, I will put one versus one in the title. Uh, I may even start putting them in the thumbnail. We'll see if I can make that work out or not. But uh, I will start putting them in the title right towards the front. So it'll say Ladder Anxiety dash one versus one, two versus two, three versus three, whatever. And the SV's pulled off the line, so I am going to lose these stalkers. But he also has no workers left. So uh, 16 workers of 42. Kind of straightforward. Number two, I want to talk about the uh, the placement matches and how they are a little bit different and why I'm in such low leagues. I think that overall, all of my placement matches put me in silver and uh, silver and gold. I think is where it ended up putting me. That's just because, again, the new ranking system. I just kind of wanted to explain it to you guys a tiny bit. And uh, Bumblebee, I do feel sorry that it placed me against you. If I could change the ranking system, I would. And uh, I still do have way too much money here. But I mean, I've killed his other command center. I've seen his entire base. Uh, and just for practice, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a robo. I'm also going to be expanding here in not too long. And that's just for, for trying to realize, you know what? I'm not always going to win my game with my first couple of units here. And uh, my opponent is not always going to go just pure Marine. So I'm going to run a bunch of zealots up here right now. And uh, some other mistakes that I made was dropping this many pylons here at the front lines. I mean, I knew that I was going to win pretty early on in this game. It was pretty straightforward. But uh, still, if you want to be getting better, uh, I'll, I'll talk about actually some of the mistakes I made in this game uh, because there's a lot of them, especially since it's my first game in several months. We're going to go, there's going to be the GG. So very manner player there, Bumblebee. My apologies that it did place me against you. And uh, did, I, did I just stay in this game for a while? There we go. Uh, so I do want to talk about some of the mistakes I made. Uh, I do honestly think putting this pylon on here is not that bad. If he would have moved out with uh, with drops or something like that, I very well may have spotted it. It also allows me to, to reinforce relatively quickly if I throw him down, you know, right at the edge of the power here. Um, dropping one right here, not that bad. Dropping the two right here, though, this is just a bad idea. You know, having extra pylons all around the map is not usually a bad idea, but keep in mind that this is not all around the map. This is actually right in front of his base. So if I was to ever lose this army, he pushes out, 
but he kills three, possibly four pylons instead of just two or even one. And uh, look at this. I, I, I obviously have these probes that are trapped here, which is no good. But also, this is all powered by like one pylon, so that is obviously a big mistake there. And honestly, that is a mistake that pros make. So make sure your stuff is powered by more than just one pylon. This game threw me off just because I was like, wait a minute, am I actually just going to win right now? But I should have had an extra pylon here. Should have had an extra pylon here. Definitely could have laid my base out a lot more efficiently. Uh, also, my macro did slip quite a bit, and uh, the one rule that I did not follow this game, which uh, is bad, it's bad, I don't think it makes me a hypocrite, it just means that I'm not listening to my own advice, uh, is that I should have been focusing on macro the entire time, I should have never gotten over about 200 resources at a time, I should have expanded a little bit earlier, uh, I feel like I was so far ahead here that, uh, you know, why not get even further ahead, I did have the nexus on the way there, and uh, I definitely should have teched up a little bit. I mean, you're rarely going to win with just pure gateway units versus Terran. Um, in this game, it's kind of a bad example because I could tell, again, really early on that I was going to end up taking the game, but I would say if you're looking to improve your game, which is what I should have done this game and I was feeling dirty as I was uh, actually making this attack happen, is that uh, just practice on the macro, practice on the mechanics. I mean, he didn't even have a normal command here, so he needs to watch some Bronze League Heroes, by the way. Bumblebee, I highly recommend Bronze League Heroes. Always get an orbital command, but uh, either way, I can do a lot better, and I hope to, in future games. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, eh, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up anyways. Really, what's the worst that can happen? Anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. And I promise to play another 1v1 before five months from now, okay? All right? I probably sound as shady as this stalker looks right here, scratching my noggin. What actually is that? I just realized that. Is that those front? I, I guess it's the front claws. Except they're just way bigger. I just love how he scratches his head, though. Pretty awesome. Anyways, I'm going to go, guys. I already did my outro, so this is kind of awkward. This is super awkward. I have officially made it even more awkward. That, That's great. Hello everyone, this is HUS Gaska here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety, and can you guys actually believe it? I'm going to be doing back-to-back -back one versus one Ladder Anxiety cast. I honestly can't believe it. I feel like it's more 1v1 than I've played all year, but uh, either way, guys, you know your homework. The whole point of Ladder Anxiety is to get you guys out there playing some one versus ones, and uh, come right on back here after you play your game. Let me know exactly how the game went, because if I can embarrass myself in front of all of you guys, then uh, you can embarrass yourself in front of just one person. And remember, StarCraft is meant to be fun. While uh, I'm sure lots of people talk about how terrible I am, uh, well, lots of people aren't going to talk about how terrible you are. So get out there and play, guys. Come back here. Let me know how your game went. I don't know if you can tell my voice, but I actually just woke up. So uh, I played this game while I was a little bit sleepy. My voice isn't quite awake yet, but hey, I think that makes for some good StarCraft. Now, in the last game, well, I'm going to introduce my, uh, my opponent here. It's going to be uh, the foot. I have been wondering where, where the foot is, and uh, he's right here. So my opponent is going to be the foot in the top left side. And to be completely honest, I haven't really played that many games on this map, so I was kind of learning it as I went. But I do want to mention that you do have an expansion in the back of your base. This is a full-on expansion. We do have eight mineral patches there, eight mineral patches there. Uh, wait, no, there's four and four, which makes eight. But uh, either way, your entrance is pretty standard. Third base, super easy to secure. So uh, definitely a macro-oriented map here. I feel like, uh, for some reason, I was just watching Wolf Blitzer, and I can't get his voice out of my head. I'm I hope that I'm not uh, sounding too much like him here as I attempt not to mimic him. But uh, anyways, in game number one uh, of Ladder Anxiety, or the last game that I played, uh, I, I did go for a super early strategy. And uh, in this game, I'm actually going to be doing something similar just because, again, it is placing me in Silver League. Um, so this is my second Silver League match so far. And I am going up against an opponent who I believe is uh, either in the same boat I am, or they're in a league too low, or are about equally placed. Um, I did scout him right away. I also saw that my, my gateway was a little bit earlier, and uh, I also spot that he does have an assimilator right away. He is not going to be going for the gas instantaneously. Uh, where did where, those two probes come from? I honestly don't know where those two probes came from. But anyways, as I'm kind of thinking throughout this game, I'm thinking, all right, well, 
I haven't seen him be too active with scouting. I haven't seen him get his uh, Cybernetics core down super early. Didn't see him harvest the gas, you know, to the exact second that you need to. So I'm thinking I can get away with a little bit of silly play here. So I am actually going to be going ahead and hiding a pylon up here. As you'll see in a little bit later, I am going to be hiding a pylon down here as well. My thought process being, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and attack him here pretty darn soon. I also like the uh, the scouting pattern on the map right there. But uh, he does have his probe going to be scouting my base right here. I do have my zealot now out, and uh, he's going to be chasing him around. Unfortunately, zealots are super slow. Now, the reason I decided to go for zealot right now when uh, normally you could just go straight for a stalker is that I did kind of want to have the little extra beef. Uh, I wanted to show him that, you know what, if you drop a pylon, if you are aggressive, or, or even if I'm aggressive, that zealot is going to come into play. Because the thing about Zealots in this matchup is they are always, always useful. I mean, really for the first, like, 20 minutes of a game, uh, having lots of Zealots is not that bad of a strategy. So getting them out early is going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and drop a Stargate here. But uh, spoiler alert, this is going to be mind games. I, I don't know if these type of mind games ever actually make a difference. But, you know, as I'm playing it, I feel so, I feel so just, like, sneaky. I feel like a genius. I'm like, hehehehe. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it does actually just delay my stuff and all my other gateways and doesn't really make that big of a difference here in this game once again managing to get my probe stuck as well so he's gonna slip on out of there there we go ahead drop down that gateway right now and uh, I do have the Stalker kind of chilling out over here. I do have the Zealot as well. So basically what I'm going to try and do is uh, essentially delay foregate him, but I am going to be doing it with big macro backing right now. I mean, look at this. I have 22 probes on minute. Well, let's just take a look overall. Uh, I do have 26 probes to his 25. But keep in mind, I'm the one going for a foregate here. So the fact that I have this many probes is actually really, really good for me uh, if this doesn't work out. Now, that what that does mean, though, is it's not nearly as good for me if it does not work out. So... Oh, wait, 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 I messed that up. If, look, if I, if I start warping in a lot of units, I'm not going to have the timing that I want. And so it's kind of a, I'm not going to use the term double-edged sword because I hate that term. But uh, basically, I probably won't be able to kill him here. Because the fact of the matter is, is that uh, I do have lots of probes. So I'm basically going to be trying to do economic damage to him. I do split up my probes here to chase down these stalkers, just try and do as much damage to them as I possibly can. In the meantime, I am going to go ahead and start warping these in. Now, unfortunately for me, he is actually going to be expanding here, and my hope and my prayer is that he doesn't see me actually starting to make lots of units right now. Now, as you can see, his resources are starting to climb. That was kind of the point of having the two Zelts chase down these stalkers, other than doing damage, of course. But uh, I am going to begin trying to warp in in the backside of his base. Uh, I am a little bit supply blocked right now. I do have these gateways, though. They are just coming off a of cooldown here, so the supply block isn't going to be the most brutal thing ever. Uh, but I was forced to drop down just tons of pylons there. Not ideal, obviously. I do have another pylon going to be on the way, which, uh, if you want a pro tip of the day, I should not be putting the second pile on here instead I should just uh, maybe drop one or two in here maybe even expand on the back of this but I, I was determined I really want to try and make something happen right here now I do know that he can probably see me but uh, at the same time I also want to be making as many units as possible so he's got a photon overcharge which is actually a great angle for him to do so and I could sit here and fight the photon overcharge if I want but remember since I know he's ahead in the macro but I do have a lot of probes back at home I actually have more probes than he does right now so sure he has the uh, the expansion upgrade, sure he has, or the expansion advance, sure he has a lot of buildings on the way, sure he's getting a Stargate, but if I can keep that probe count low, I actually am in pretty good shape right now. So uh, we'll see right here that I do actually end up losing the army, but my thought process right here is like, okay, you know what, I am exchanging uh, a little bit unevenly for me. But later, you'll see, I'll actually try and run up into the mineral line there. And I do have a, a, uh, a macro advantage, so losing a couple units here and there is okay. I'm, I'm not feeling great about how this is going, because I don't know how many probes he has exactly. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm not able to count that many probes that quickly into a game. He is microing here quite a bit. I do manage to kill off the last few units. A couple more results are going to be running by. The photon overcharge has finally wore off. And uh, I do see that there is going to be a Void Ray on the way. We'll see actually right now how many workers I can kill. There is three already dead. He does decide to attack with his probes here. And remember, this is exactly what I'm trying to force, is just having my units in his mineral line, doing the economic damage. That was my goal from the start. Uh, it wasn't executed perfectly, of course, but uh, still doing everything I can to kill off any last probes. I'm even trying to focus down that last probe, not able to get there. 
but I am, I am able to kill 14 workers. So if we take a look at the units tab right now, it is 18 probes to 31. In my eyes, even though I lost more resources there, I'm delaying that economy. You can see I am ahead at income, which is kind of silly because he already has a second base, which is uh, beginning to get more and more saturated. Now he's going to be able to kill off my pylons here as well. So overall, we probably broke about even here because he can duplicate probes twice as fast whereas I had the expansion on the way. However, I do currently have more workers than him, so there is kind of a little bit of a buffer zone right now. Now, at this phase of the game, my thought process is, okay, game number one was very, very quick, and uh, kind of, kind of I, I ended the game super, super early. So this game, I was like, you know, I'm still going to be aggressive, but I'm going to go uh, with a lot of probes on the back of it. So I, my goal is, instead of killing him, again, to do that economic damage. And now I can fall back and go into macro mode. So what you're going to see here is me transitioning into still doing harassment. I have a Dark Shrine on the way. But also going into macro mode. Now, at this phase of the game... My opponent's income is actually going to start getting ahead of mine. And this is something that I was actually correctly gauging uh, while I was playing. I didn't gauge a whole lot of things correctly, but this is one of the ones that I was like, all right, well, I did economic damage. I bought myself a minute or two, uh, but he is going to start catching up here. So what can I do to transition? Well, win behind Dark Shrine. Now, I'm not that far behind. I think that uh, even if you were to attack me right now, I could hold it off. Although he does have lots of zealots in there, which would be kind of a pain. But uh, my thought process is, you know what? I saw the Stargate. I saw the gateways. You know what? I didn't see a Robo. So I am going to be having Dark Templar on the way. Uh, they are just moments away here and should be able to begin harassing him. However, the foot does actually have a delayed Oracle right now, which is not something I'm used to seeing. Uh, really, players tend to try and go for the harassment right away. There is going to be a Robo right there. That is going to be too delayed, though. I will already have Dark uh, Templar out on the field, and I have set up more and more proxy pilots. This is something that I'm actually trying to get better about, which is why you're seeing, you know, way too many pylons out in the center of the map. I mean, you saw two to three inside of his base alone. But the idea is that if I force myself to, to do proxy pylons, they're going to pay off in the long run. Now, he does spot my DTs right away. I do see the Dark Shrine there. His Oracle is completely out of position right now. So I am going to have a couple of moments right here to actually begin doing damage. Now, I don't know about this Oracle just yet. If nothing else, so take a look at the income tab here. His income is plummeting. So even though he uh, has a, a worker, I guess not advantage, but we are tied right now, his income is basically nothing, as uh, his base down here has very few workers. Now, I do see the Oracle right there. Keep in mind that this lasts for a very, very long time, so I'm probably only going to be able to do a little bit of damage. It is a full minute of detection, and so I am going to try and run my uh, DTs around as much as I possibly can and just try to harass as best as I can. Now, this DT has managed to slip away as this army is uh, trying to find it there, and the DT does go ahead and slip on into the main base. He's going to be raking in the worker kills right now. He up to five and we will see if we can continue that now up to seven overall workers killed 24 to one which again was really kind of my strategy from the get-go and is uh, oracle is going to be flying back here the dt will go down but i have done substantial damage to him in both these attacks and resources lost yes i am still behind that is a fact but you know what able to kill off these workers just fine uh bringing it 41 to 23 now again this is going to buy me a minute or two. And I also realize, you know what, his army size might be a little bit too much for me to handle. 41 to 29. Of course, I don't know the exact army supply that he has right now. But in the game, I was like, okay, I saw a lot of units there. Uh, so I need to try to expand somewhere that that army is most likely not going to find. And in the meantime, I'm going to sit back at home and make Archons. Uh, and you can see my army supply actually getting tied up there. So even if you were to attack me right now, then that would be no good for him. Now, my thought process, again, I don't know if me saying that is getting annoying, but my thought process at this point is that, you know what? I saw Zealots, and I saw Void Rays. Uh, what's a good unit versus that? I also saw a couple sentries make sense. A good unit versus that, in all honesty, is going to be Archons. I mean, Archons do additional damage versus Zealots, and also... They uh, they aren't gonna take they aren't going to take additional damage from the void rays. So Archons are gonna be a nice little buffer here for me. And I also realized, you know what? He didn't have an observer in that army. Uh, I killed off his robo, and I think the chances of him actually building an observer now that my DTs have already kind of uh, have done their thing. I'm assuming he will not have an observer with his army. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of making an additional Archon. I'm going to make two Dark Templars and just leave them like that. Now, this is something that is something I feel like is underrated, in all honesty, because a lot of times there's battles where there is no observer, and uh, your opponent doesn't quite realize it until all this stuff is already dead. Not saying you should always bank on Dark Templar being effective and being able to kill off uh, a lot of units, but definitely something to think about right now. 
Uh, also, something to think about is that we are both basically supply blocked right now. Uh, as the foot right now definitely needs to go ahead and drop down those pylons. At the same time, though, I am going to go ahead and go to Stargates. My thought process here is that, you know, Dark Templar are great. Sure, they can kill off some of the army. Archons are great as well. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that if there are so many Void Rays that I can't deal with them, the only counter to Void Rays is more Void Rays. So having a couple Void Rays mixed in uh, are actually extremely helpful. You can use them for killing off Colossus. You can use them, obviously, for killing any ground unit that the Protoss has, but also just for getting that air superiority, which is oh so nice. Now, uh, we do have Fleet Bacon on the way here for the foot, and uh, he is going to be working on the double upgrades. He has plus one attack and plus one armor, which uh, I do get my forge here in a little bit. I think it is definitely delayed because I'm more worried about army supply. Now, at this point in the game, I'm thinking that, you know what, I'm behind, but that is actually not the case here. 61 probes to 37. I mean, again, I killed 27 workers there. So even though he's making two workers at a time, he's still not really able to, uh, to, to keep up in that regard. I do accidentally attack my own robotics here. Um, I do decide to mix in one Immortal just for fun, but remember, in this game, I wanted to try and make it a macro game. After, I mean, even since the beginning, my first attack was very macro-oriented as opposed to micro. Then I did follow it up with DTs. That was just to do economic harass, though, so that I could get my economy back on track. Now that I have my economy back on track, I'm going to worry about trying to just get maxed out as quickly as I possibly can. And honestly, that is just a personal choice of mine. Could I move in and kill him right now? Very, very likely. Do I know that? Kind of. I have a feeling that my army is quite powerful, but again, I'm choosing to go the macro route. I'm not going for, for pure entertainment here. I'm going for trying to feel comfortable uh, in, in the late game. And honestly, if you can force a game into macro game, even if you end up losing that game, I personally think that if you're just playing ladder games, it is pretty good for training. I mean, really, StarCraft isn't all about winning. It's about getting better so you can win more later, uh, if that kind of makes sense. So... That is my uh, my decision making here. He does actually have a Tempest right now. And at this point in the game, I was actually thinking of going for carriers. So the fact that he does have Tempest is quite nice. I do have Void Rays on the way for now, though. They're going to be a good counter to the Tempest. Um, I am warping in just additional Zealots to supplement my army. Remember, the Zealots are quite good at absorbing damage. They're really good at dealing damage and uh, really good at kind of mitigating splash damage on your more valuable units here. So both of us are essentially just sitting back and macroing up. And you can kind of see where my macro is really starting to kick in right now. Now, in a normal game, being maxed out at around 18 minutes as Protoss is pretty good. You can do quicker than that, but uh, I would say average I get a, uh, in a standard no attack game, I get maxed out at around 18 minutes. Now, we're at about 20 minutes here, and uh, I, I'm at 165 supply, which I'm actually okay with. The reason being is that I've lost a lot of units, and I've also attacked. I also saw the Oracle moving out with my Observer, so I tried to position my army to intercept it there. That was a success. But uh, either way, uh, the 177 supply now, I mean, we're getting super close to being maxed out. And I'm okay with where my supply is at in this game. I feel like, you know, maybe my macro is slipping a little bit. But I am focusing on macroing and getting maxed out. And uh, we are doing just that. I do go ahead and expand to the top right. Because all of his scouting has been centered around the bottom left side. And you can see how much of the map he's scouted on this left side. I mean, he's just expecting me to expand in this location. But uh, the hidden bases up here are obviously going to be paying dividends throughout this game. And uh, he may be wondering, you know, where are all these units coming from? Well, they're coming from the base of the top right side, which is fully saturated with almost like down to the probe. I just need one more probe uh, for full saturation. Not for most efficient saturation. Uh, mind you. It is better to have 16 workers on each mineral patch there. I do have the upgrades now going to be on the way. These are super delayed, but I do have the plus one attack done. I think I have the one armor as well. I decide, honestly, just to go for it because I feel like as long as I kill off a lot of this army, I can just back it up with more and more units here because I do have tons of money in the bank. I'm just waiting to see, you know, do I need to make anything? So far, I'm winning this battle. Uh, all things are looking good. And I am kind of suffering from Observer uh, I don't know exactly what's called. Observer Syndrome. Where I'm just sitting back and watching the battle. I do have DTs going to be moving in, though, and that should be more than enough to finish the game, and it is. So currently 2-0 on my ladder anxiety run, and uh, we'll see if it promotes me pretty soon. I think after a couple games it should promote me, but remember, guys, your homework is to go out there. Uh, apparently achievements are disabled until further notice, but go out there, guys. Play a one versus one. Come back here. Let me know what the matchup was. Let me know how the game went, and uh, I do read through a lot of the comments. Now, also... Actually, I'll talk about this in another video. I just am wondering if you guys are uh, are able to comment on the videos. I know that they're kind of weird. Hi, Stefan. It's great to uh, see you there. But uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.
Hello everyone, this is HGSKSK here back with some more ladder anxiety action, if you can call it action. It's more of me just me fibbing my way through the one versus one ladder. And a lot of you, I think we're getting a little bit uh, comfortable thinking that you didn't have homework this weekend. But now you do. The whole point of ladder anxiety is uh, to make you guys realize that StarCraft, even though it is a very serious game, it doesn't mean that we have to take it very seriously. Go out there, have some fun. If you lose, hey... That's okay, we've all lost a StarCraft 2 game, unless you never played before, in which case I feel sorry for you because StarCraft is awesome. But uh, either way, the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is to get you guys out there playing more games, and if I can embarrass myself in front of 50,000 of you guys, then uh, you can embarrass yourself in front of just one, all right? So I'm going to be spawning down the bottom left side as Husky's Husky. Remember, if it's not a Husky who is in Clan Husky in all caps, then it is not the real Husky. Down the bottom right side, it's going to be Dewback who was saying very nice things about me, so a special shout-out to him, being pretty well-mannered. Now, I do have several things I want to talk about as the game is getting underway, but remember, your homework is to go play a StarCraft II game right now and come back here and let me know how that game went. Did you try a cannon rush and get absolutely raffle stomped and they BM'd you for trying to cannon rush? Did you win a sweet macro game? Did you lose to a six pool? I don't care how bad it was, but I want to know how it went for you. Now, a lot of you have actually been having even worse ladder anxiety, and that's not necessarily your fault. You don't need to get medicated. You don't need to go talk to a counselor. I think I feel you, and I think I may know what's going on with your severe case of ladder anxiety. And that's actually something called MMR decay. It's kind of like tooth decay. Uh, no, it's actually nothing like Tooth Decay. It's more like George Decay, all right? It's more like George Decay, who was super and awesome and was in an amazing TV series. But uh, either way, MMR Decay, I can't believe I made a George Decay rhyme joke with, with the word Decay. I'm sorry, George. You know that I love you. But uh, either way, MMR Decay is something that Blizzard has actually very recently made posts about saying that they are going to end up looking into this. Now, what MMR Decay is, is if you play StarCraft, play StarCraft, say you get into Masters League. You are in the top several percent. You are the 3% or the 4% or wherever it's sitting at right now. You're in Masters League. You decide, I'm not going to play StarCraft for six months. It happens to the best of us. No one is going to judge you or think of you differently. Uh, what a loser you are. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, anyways, you come back after the six months, and you find out that once you play your placement match, you're actually in Silver League. That's because of something called MMR Decay, where if you're inactive, your MMR starts to deteriorate. Now, the idea of MMR Decay was actually a really, really, I can't, I, I have George Takai stuck in my head. George Takai is how I think you actually say it. But anyways, the idea of MMR Decay is that, uh, you know, if, say you did get in Masters League, you go away for six months, you come back, your skills may not be fully polished. Oh my god, I actually trapped that probe super hard. That was amazing. Uh, that was like a zealot hug. I wish that zealots were always that sticky, man. Just stick those probes right to them. But uh, anyways, you're away for six months. You come back. You're, you're, if you were still in Masters League, would you be able to hold that? Or would you end up losing 30 games because you're super rusty? The metagame has changed. You don't have any practice. You're not warmed up, yada, yada, yada. So the idea was, you know, if you're going to be in Masters League, just prove it a little bit, and then we'll place you back in there. Oh, my God. I've never really looked at this thing, I feel like. He is, uh, he is super creepy looking there in the little uh, in the little 3D portrait. And so anyways, the idea was that if you come back, you got to work your way back up. Kind of makes sense. No, no big surprise there. But what the problem is now is that, number one, it demotes you so far that it can be demoralizing to actually try and rank up again. Because you got to go from silver to gold, from gold to uh, platinum, from platinum to diamond, and then diamond to masters. And then maybe, if you're good enough, get into grandmaster. So it can be very demoralizing. But the person it is most demoralizing for is people who are in Silver League, people who are in Bronze League. And I think right now there's some math done that silver and bronze and maybe gold make up about 65% of the game. I'm actually not sure if uh, gold's included in that one. But basically, there's a lot of silver players out there right now, uh, like legit silver. Like, that's the league you should be in. You should be playing against other silver leaguers, but it's placing you against these diamond, these masters, these platinums very, very consistently. And I have a feeling that a few of you are suffering from uh, from ladder anxiety because of that. But hey, Dr. Husky is here. I am not an authorized doctor, but uh, my, my prescription is more StarCraft. So go out there and play a game. Anyways, let's talk about the game here a little bit. I am going to go ahead and be scouting out with my Mothership Core. Now, normally, I wouldn't recommend being this aggressive with the Mothership Core, but God, they're so fast and their vision is so good that I can't help but scout around his base. And I'm also able to see, you know what? There's not a whole lot of anti-air here. 
So I'm going to be able to scout out exactly what's going on over here. And uh, I do see that he has his base already down. Mine is already done. Now, I do want to say in an average PvP, getting an expansion this early, probably actually not the best idea. It's not really going to be suing you that well, especially getting it as early as I did. However, remember, the point of Ladder Anxiety is not to show you like if you're watching Scarlet versus J-Dog, which is actually something that's going on right now, which is pretty freaking exciting. I should also upgrade my warp gate here. Not sure uh, what Lazy Husky is doing there. I do take out yet another probe, and I'm going to kill this stupid Scanned. Get out of here. But uh, anyways, the whole point of this is not to show you what it's like watching J-Dog versus Scarlet. Obviously, that's way better than I'm ever going to be, but it's more to show you kind of actual real ladder games and wacky things that can actually happen in, that, uh, in those games. And uh, also, I am casting them after the fact a little bit, or, or most of the time, just just because I like being able to analyze and tell you guys what my thought process was and also be able to focus while playing, to be completely honest. Now, there is going to be a motion core, I believe, harassing me over here. He did kill off a single probe. I was able to evacuate those probes out of there, get them right back to work. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my stalkers. I also do have an observer out now because even though I was able to scout everything, he would have been able to throw down some sort of tech right now. So I want to kind of get in there and get around and see exactly what's going on. Now, we do have about the same as far as workers are concerned. Uh, we have 35, and our saturation is almost identical here. So uh, very similar openings here from both of us. And uh, like I was saying, also in these ladder anxiety games, since I am in Silver League, quote unquote, uh, even though I'm going up against someone who has been in Platinum and Diamond, I checked his stats a little bit earlier, and he has been in Diamond in team games, and I believe Platinum in 1v1. Uh, regardless, either way, I want to practice in these earlier games because later I'm going to have to be in super tryhard mode to see how highly I can actually get ranked. But for now, I'm actually going to be practicing some macro games. So I do have my observer here. I do spot that war prism, so I do know that a war prism is on the way. And my observer here does see that this army is moving to the left. He himself is not going to be getting an observer just yet, I believe. Yeah, he just has the war prism, the mothership core, and uh, then the gateway units here, as well as one immortal. But I do know that the war prism is going to be moving on over. I don't know exactly where it's going to be because uh, they're super, super fast, and I may... Uh, can I see it now? Yes, I can see it now. So I'm going to go ahead and place my units over here to spot it. And at this point, it's not really worth it to me to make a phoenix or anything like that. My mothership core is like, yep, confirmed. There is definitely a warp prism there. And he's going to try and run over here. Probably not the best idea. Got to scare that away. What I actually could have done, which would have been a little bit better, is if I keep my mothership core pretty far back, but just far enough to see all the vision here, wait for the warp prism to swoop in, and then try and pounce on it as the units are warping in. That would have been my recommendation. But honestly, since I am so rusty right now, I'm just thinking, you know what? Survive, survive, survive. If there's an attack coming, I just want to make sure I have as much stuff as I can and to transition right into my supply block. However, I saw that he was going for some Immortals. I think I saw the Immortal a little bit earlier. And I also saw that he does have a second Robo here. So I'm thinking, you know... Double Colossus is going to be the way to go right now because he's not going to have a whole lot of air. He's not going to have that much stuff that can actually hit the Colossus. And as long as I have lots of Zealots in this army, I should be A-OK. -okay. And I'm getting free reign of scouting. Remember, we talked about this in a lot of our other games. The importance of scouting is huge. Even if you feel like you're wasting time, you're wasting APM, and you're wasting money, get in there, see what's going on. And if you're someone who doesn't know how to react to what you see, then uh, don't spend too much time scouting, but still try and make scouting work. It does look like the War Prism is going to be moving on in. He does have two Zealots inside. My army is looking quite healthy. Now, right now, this is one of those situations where he does have a higher supply and a higher army supply as well. But I do have a tech advantage right now in these Colossus. I mean, I have three Colossus to nothing else for him. And yeah, he's got a Zealot uh, advantage. He's got a Stalker advantage. But really, at what point? do stalkers stop being worthwhile uh, especially at this level of play and also I want to say that these games for me as I was saying a little bit earlier are mostly primarily for practice I'm trying to be as good of a player as I can so I'm not necessarily trying to win my games right away all the time you actually saw me do that in the other games but in this game I was going into it and thinking you know what I want to go for a macro game. I want to be practicing my macro. And as you can see, it needs some work. So I do have more pylons on the way to uh, to kind of lessen that supply block for now. I also have one proxy pylon established over here. This proxy pylon not in the best spot. I should have actually placed it right there. But uh, I did try and send my probe over here to place a very aggressive proxy pylon and ended up paying the price by losing that probe. So my, uh, my pylon placement is not going to be the best right now. He does have a robotics bay on the way, and I'm finally able to cut into that money as I've just been gathering way too much. But at this point, I have 51 workers. He has 56, so he's in pretty good shape there. Uh, my saturation, 21 out of 24. 
Main base is 17 out of 24, and really what I need is a third base. So I do have that on the way, but I am attacking while also expanding on the back of this. That's going to be the idea behind it. And uh, he did send an observer there, so he's going to see what's headed his way. Too little, too late. I am going to go ahead and just run in here. No side put the cell to the front. That was very intentional, and just going to go for it. He does have Zell legs, but it doesn't really matter if they're just running into my zealots anyway. And I'm just going to try and steamroll through. Now, he does have lots of Immortals, and he is focus firing down these Colossus, but I should have enough DPS output that the Immortals don't really matter and I should probably warp in more zealot reinforcements to go ahead and start pushing this back and I'm gonna go ahead and march right in here it's not looking great for him and uh, as, as long as I'm able to keep these Colossus alive then I should be just fine so overall a pretty one-sided game however these games are more for tutorial purposes uh, I wouldn't say tutorial purposes only because some of the games are actually pretty good right now but I do actually kind of feel bad here for Dubak as uh, he's saying, you know what, you're too pro for me, Husky, and even throwing out the GG as well. So nothing but manners coming out of there. Apparently, Foss is having a hard time getting up the ramp as I do have more reinforcements going to be streaming down. Now, also note that even though I have basically won, I'm not giving up complete hope uh, in the fact that he may actually end up killing me if I'm not careful. So I'm still trying to throw down tech, still trying to throw down buildings and all of that. He's asking, are you the real Husky? And you know what? I am in try-hard mode. He said, just in case, hi, YouTube. So uh, hello to you as well, do back as he is going to go ahead and leave the game, and I shall claim victory. So overall, a pretty quick game, but I think there's a lot of things that can be learned from this, or at least a lot of things that I noticed were going on, and uh, I tried to adapt. Uh, number one, when I scouted with my Mothership Corps, and I noticed that he wasn't attacking it right away, that tells me that, okay, I'm probably going to be able to get this Mothership Corps either back in here, or if I start constructing an Observer, I can see exactly what's going on as well. And I did go for the Double Colossus because I didn't see any sort of air tech from uh, from Dubak. And I gotta say that Mass Void Ray would have been just as effective, if not more effective, given the situation. He was not being aggressive. He was not getting that much anti-air. And uh, obviously Immortals and things aren't going to be very good versus Void Ray. So I think I could have won with Void Rays as well. But overall, my, my thought process in this game is I need to practice macro. Because later on, if I'm, if I'm continuing to play so many games, I'm going to have to rely on macro. I can't just rely on gimmicky plays all day, every day. To me, that doesn't make you a better StarCraft player. Sure, it might get you into a higher league, but I feel like leagues are not kind of a uh, an end-all for if you're good or not. So either way, uh, a lot of fun here, guys. Go play your games. Come back here. Let me know exactly how they went. Uh, I, I do get a kick out of them. Also, if you want to send Bronze League Hero replays, that is huskyreplays at gmail.com. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into yet another ladder game. Currently 3-0 in this series. But I do feel kind of bad because I'm going up against uh, some players who are also stuck in Silver League. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, then this is, oh wow, why is that so hard for me to say? Hello everyone, this is HUSTSK here, and uh, it is time for another Ladder Anxiety. I'll talk about what the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is in just a moment, but I'm going to be spawning down in the bottom left side, and remember, Husky, Husky is who I am. Uh, if you ever see me online, if it's not in the clan Husky in all caps, then it is not me. And my opponent up at the top right side, it is going to be Thunderbolt! The blue Zerg. Uh, now, I do want to mention a couple of things. Number one, he is playing as random. So I currently do not know what race he is playing, which will factor into the build that you see me throw down. And also the map. I want to point out, if you haven't played many games on ladder, just know if you spawn this map, there's a freebie base in the back of your base uh, that you should be taking as basically every race, as uh, there is the eight mineral patches there. So it's not one of those gimmicky, like, small little bases that uh, it's a tough choice on if you should take it or not. You should definitely go for that one. And I am going to be scouting after Pylon. Lately, I've actually been preferring scouting after Gateway because that makes the transition into getting your Cyber Next Core and your next Pylon while also not stopping pro production a little bit easier. You feel like you're a little bit further ahead. However, since I am going up against a random player, I do decide to go ahead and scout out with my pro because I've already told him to go ahead and kind of move down to that side. And uh, as I was mentioning, the fact that I don't know his race is already factoring into my build, so I'm going to be going for a gateway first here. It would be foolish of me to go for Nexus first or something like that, so I have the gateway at the wall in. I actually prefer not to wall in like this if I can help it. Uh, versus Protoss, there's really no point because you're not going to be delaying their push uh, really at all just because Stalkers have such a long range. Versus Marines and Marauders uh, or Terran in general, I don't like putting it here because Siege Tanks or, uh, again, their bio on the lower ground can kill us off without much defense. And then versus Zerg, I would just rather have a, a Forge Fast Expand if possible. So I, I prefer 
prefer not to do this, but since they are random, I don't know what race they are, I'm going to go ahead and scout them out here, and I'm going to be happy when I see that creep, knowing that my Wallen is not a complete waste, as uh, this is really the best uh, alternative to going up against a Zerg player is get that wall in. Now, I do see the spawning pool right away, and I do not actually scout out his uh, his hatchery right now down at the expansion. Honestly, that is a bit of a mistake. I should get uh, clarification that there is a base over there. But let's be honest, my probe is a little bit terrified. He's going to turn around, though, start zapping the drone in the face. Keep in mind that drones do defeat probes in a one-on-one -on -one fight just because of the in-battle uh, or in-combat health regeneration. But probes will win a one-on-one -on -one fight if you run away and get a little bit of shield regeneration going on, which is actually exactly what I'm going to be doing right here. And I will turn around and begin uh, punching him in the face. So remember, the whole point of ladder anxiety is uh, to get you guys to dust off your ladder anxiety, to go out there and play just one single game, come back here, let me know how that game went. You can either do it uh, before or after you're done watching this video. But if I can embarrass myself in front of 50,000 people, then you can embarrass yourself in front of just one. And uh, remember that even though StarCraft is a very serious game, it is a very seriously fun game. So get out there and have some fun on ladder, guys. Um, now, I also want to mention I'm currently undefeated in my most recent games. But I do, it's kind of one of those like bittersweet things. It's nice to win, but I feel really bad defeating players who are in Silver League. Now, keep in mind that the, uh, the recent ladder changes have kind of shoved everyone, I would say, into Silver League. So it's definitely something to uh, be aware of. If you haven't played in the last couple of seasons, there's something called MMR Decay, which uh, really cuts into your MMR and bumps you down in leagues. Now, uh, that's something that a lot of players are upset about. It's something that a lot of players are dealing with. I don't think it should affect on if you're going to play or not. Just know that you may be going up against tougher opponents. And uh, right now, for me, I'm going up against weaker opponents because I was in, I think, technically Masters League last season. Or maybe that one was in uh, Platinum. I was in Masters not too long ago, and it bumped me all the way down to Silver, which is totally fine. I think Masters was too high for me, uh, but I definitely am not down in Silver. So my apologies, but uh, the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is to show you guys my progress. The drone right there really wanted to take a look at those rocks. And uh, LabBot 1X chilling out, looking pretty awesome, I feel like, as he does hang out there. My one Zelt is going to move out. And uh, also, one thing I really like about ladder anxiety is I get to tell you my thought process in everything that I do. And remember that I'm not, uh, I'm not hero. I'm not going to be Naniwa. I am going to be making very uh, basic errors that uh, you know everyone would hope to not make. But that is the whole point of ladder anxiety is to show you my thought process. And uh, if the if that thought process works out, great. If not, you can kind of learn from it. Now it does look at Mazel right here going to be scouting around. He's seeing if there's any bases going on. That's really kind of the point of him is to see. All right, is the Zerg player going to be going for a two base or is he going to be going for a three base? That's something that as a Protoss player I need to know. Uh, right now I do have a Zelt back at home. My warp gate is going to be finishing up right now. And a lot of links are actually headed on down here. This may be a little bit too many for my Zelt to handle. And you'll see a little bit of a minor mistake on my part, but uh, it's still not the worst thing ever because it actually ends up being in my favor, I feel like. I do go ahead and force field right there because I didn't know exactly how many links were on the way as my Zelt over here did not really detect uh, the fact that there were lings, um, and so I didn't know how many, if there, if there's going to be any reinforcements or not. Now my sentry right here, trying to hang on as best as he possibly can. We'll actually see how this uh, shapes up in just a moment. My soccer should be able to clean up right now. Uh, the Zergling, though, dismissing his Zergling speed is going to be running all over my base, which is pretty annoying. Keep in mind that he is going to see basically everything. I don't think he saw the gateways, but at this point in the game, uh, I actually thought that he saw the gateways. And uh, he did see the robotics facility as well. So my, my thought uh, process right after I kill this Ling is, okay, well, he saw Robo and three gateways. That doesn't really tell him a whole lot, but my, my assumption is going to be that he is assuming that I'm going to be playing fairly standard. So maybe going for Colossus, maybe going for some Immortals and uh, some gateway backup. However, I uh, am not always a standard player after he, him scouted me out and kind of seeing what was going on. Keep in mind that while I was playing this, I thought that he did see my gateways. I'm going to go ahead and add on two Stargates. So I'm going to go ahead and go for Void Race here. And uh, I feel like Void Race is one of those units that everyone's like, oh god, why are you going for Void Race, Husky? But I got to say, versus Zerg, if you can get double Stargate out with a lot of Void Rays, it, it can do an astounding amount of damage. Because because if you think about it, what are the options that Zerg are normally going to be going for? Well, they could go for Mass Roach, uh, or they could go for Baneling Muta, or they could just go for Mass Muta. I guess you don't really see Banelings that much versus Protoss. Sometimes you do with uh, with Bane Rain, which is quite annoying. But there's not a whole lot of stuff that's great versus just uh, Void Rays. 
and that's why I like to go for them if I can get uh, completely hidden there. Now, uh, my thought process here is I need to try and prevent any amount of scouting that I possibly can. The positioning of these Stargates is pretty good considering he has no Overlords on the map, but very bad if he would have had good Overlord placement because there would have definitely been an Overlord here, could have hopped over, spotted this, and uh, then kind of hopped on back, and I would have never been the wiser. Um, the idea, though, is I just want to throw these down as quickly as possible and try and hide them from the Lings as best as I possibly could. I really should have put them either down here or uh, even right here or a little bit in the center of the base would have been the best option. But for now, I'm going to try and keep it as private as possible, even though I'm kind of hiding in plain sight. And remember, guys, scouting, so important. I've been saying this uh, in a lot of my casts recently, mostly with pro players, but of course it applies to standard games as well. It is crazy how important going for scouting is. Now, I do spot this uh, Spire right here. I'm trying to remember in-game if I actually realized there was a Spire or not. Just because my unit saw it does not mean that I necessarily am aware of it, which is something I think that we've all kind of suffered through, where you actually scouted something, but you didn't recognize that it was actually there. I do have my Stalker on patrol right now, just because he's going to go ahead and defend this. But honestly, in this game, I'm thinking I want to go for a two-base play. I've done a couple of macro games recently, and uh, I do want to kind of just end the game early. Now, my, my reasoning for that is that this is a huge map, Everything I'm saying with this observer is macro, macro, macro. He's making lots of drones. He's getting some upgrades, but he has 60 drones. I'm at 45, which is not too shabby, but I'm seeing all of these drones when I'm floating around. I'm seeing how well this, uh, these bases are saturated. And that tells me that he's not going for a huge maxed out army and that I actually have time to get away from, uh, with something like this. So I do have some Void Rays already out. And uh, you can see this army is quite terrifying. I mean, we're 11 minutes into the game and I do have quite a sizable army. I have macroed quite well. Uh, a couple supply blocks have been mixed in, but uh, nothing too terrifying. I'm going to start placing these proxy pylons. This is actually something that I should have done a little bit earlier, considering the timing that I am moving out. Um, just because look at how large this map is. This probe has got to work his way all the way down. So I prefer to drop them as I go, because if I get intercepted by a unit, then uh, that is bad news, and I have nothing to back up my army. And this is a long march all the way across the map. I'm also feeling very confident right now, because my observer sees this army, and uh, I'm basically made to kill roaches. So even though he has a lot of roaches out right now, that is not a threat to me because that is gas that he's not using on Mutalisks. That is gas that he's not using on Hydralisks and uh, is just gas that he's not using on any anti-air. Now, it does look like he's caught wind of what's going on. A lot of the Overlords kind of be moving back on home. Now, really, the whole point of the Zelts right here is to try and force an engagement with uh, with the roaches to try and make them stay a little bit longer. And uh, these Zelts are basically sacrificial because the, the Void Rays can basically go to town right now. Got to go ahead and pop that Prismatic Alignment. Not the best timing. I should have got the, uh, the Void Rays a little bit closer, and they are wasting that timing on a lot of links and a lot of Mutalists, so definitely something to keep in mind. But the idea right now is that I need to kill off those Mutalisks and uh, everything else is not anti-air. So as long as I can do that, then my Voider is going to be absolutely fine. Now, I am running my Stalkers. That was intentional, again, just to try and buy a damage time um, with these Void Rays as much as I possibly can on their army. Now, I've hacked down their army to a reasonable size, and my thought process at this point is, okay, his only option right now is going to be to counterattack me. So I need to get defense back at home, but I also know... It's going to take a while for that counterattack to get there. I mean, even with those speed links, I still have several seconds to begin uh, responding to exactly what's happening. Now, he does have score cars up here, but guess what? I can just kill these two with prismatic alignment, go straight for the hatchery, which is exactly what I'm doing, using that prismatic alignment to do, do, uh, do additional damage versus the hatchery. But keep in mind also that I have lost uh, quite a bit of resources here. It's not going to be too much more, I'm, I, I feel. But uh, either way, I did end up losing some stuff there. I lost my entire ground army, so I have to keep my Void Rays alive. He does have Corruptors on the way, which unfortunately Corruptors are not really ideal given these uh, given the circumstances right now. Just because, yes, Corruptors do additional damage to uh, Massive, but not to Armored like the Void Rays do. So uh, the, the Void Razor is able to chew through these Corruptors here. So unfortunately for him, he really needed Hydralisk. Um, Corruptor is not really going to be the best choice. You can see just how much damage is actually dealt out. And remember, they don't need to use prismatic alignment to, uh, to clean those up. He goes ahead and taps out in another relatively short game here. Overall resources lost, resources lost 8,300 to 3,800. And uh, I, I still remember, I promised guys that I would upload all of my games, so this one is no different. Um, even though it was relatively one-sided, I think there was a lot of things that were learned there. Um, number one, I didn't upgrade my gateways into warp gates uh, quickly enough. I definitely let those sit around for a 
while. There's always the threat of supply block, which even in the later stage of this game, 107 supply out of 108, and uh, also 1,300 minerals in the bank, almost 800 gas. That is way too much. I should have a lot more supply in my army already, or a lot more production, or another base on the way which I was actually planning to throw down another base here pretty darn soon. But uh, either way, uh, one of the things that I, I need to focus on is just uh, playing better, which I know is kind of silly to say because that's always the goal. But uh, need to make sure the supply blocks aren't happening. Need to make sure that my decision-making isn't completely screwing me over. Because in this game, I mean, I took a little bit of a gamble. I was like, all right, I'm going to go for Void Ray, which is a very good unit. Uh, very good versus Zerglings Roaches. Pretty good versus Queens. Very good versus Corruptors. If there's not enough Mutalists out, then uh, they do just fine. So it's good versus a lot of stuff but it's also susceptible to a lot of stuff I and mean, we're talking about counterattacks. we're talking about roaches with burrow uh running all the way to me because roaches with the burrow now move extremely fast we're talking about mutilus caress in the main base we're talking about anything other than just a big beefy attack from me without a whole lot of uh kind of the counterattacks going on because the the kind of ebb and flow that uh, a lot of players suffer with uh, i would say on both sides of the aisle is uh you know protoss gets a big death ball um, Zerg, uh, once that death ball is moving out, Zerg is slowly whittling away, slowly hacking away. But what they need to do is make sure to get a couple of counterattacks going in so that the Protoss death ball does not grow larger and larger and larger. And But as Zerg, you can't commit too much to the counterattacks, and you still have to leave enough back at home to actually kill off that army. So it's a very uh, it's a very interesting ebb and flow. For me, though, I did get lucky with the Void Rays because I noticed, you know what, this has not been scouted. And fact of the matter is that if your mass Void Ray does not get scouted, then uh, it has a very high potential of doing damage. Is it going to win you Master League games? Eh, maybe. Maybe if you got the good execution there. But uh, for now, I, I also want to say that Thunderbolt messaged me after this game, and he, uh, he said good game. He also said... Uh, uh, just basically all nice things, saying, oh my goodness, uh, was that actually Husky and all that. So a special thanks to Thunderbolt. So far, thank you to everyone uh, I've played against. have been to Super Manor for the most part, so I definitely appreciate that. So guys, do you know your homework? Get out there, play one game, come back here, let me know how that game went. Uh, I actually love reading through them and kind of seeing how your game goes, because every single game is, of course, different. So uh, yeah, get out there, have some fun. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Kesky here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety. We're going to be talking about that in just a moment, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our two players. Me, spawning down in the bottom left side, really the only member of Clan Husky. I think technically my friend David and also Sinvicta are, uh, are in the clan as well, but uh, I do want to mention if you ever see a Husky in-game, it is only me if they have the Husky Clan uh, tag in all caps, and it's a capital H, the rest of the word Husky. I know there's a lot of impostas out there, but that is the only real one, and that's also only on the American server. If, if you see it on another server, I don't have a clan on those ones, so they are also imposters. But uh, my opponent up in the top right side is going to be Peregrine, and uh, it is going to be another PvP. And honestly, I've always really enjoyed PvP. I wouldn't say that it is my strongest matchup. I wouldn't say that's a matchup that I fully understand. It's just a matchup that I kind of I kind of get what's going on throughout the uh, throughout the match. I kind of understand what's going to be the most viable options at what times, uh, what to kind of expect here and there what the cheeses are, uh, what unit composition I, I may probably want to be working towards. Whereas when I play versus Zerg, I feel like I'm playing in the dark with one hand. Uh, okay, that sounds like something else. But uh, I feel like I don't know exactly what I'm doing there. And uh, PvP, though, I at least have my sea legs. I can at least kind of understand the matchup a tiny bit. But of course, this is Ladder Anxiety, where I overcome my Ladder Anxiety by embarrassing myself in front of 50,000 of you guys. And uh, if I can do that in front of 50,000, you can do it in front of just one. So go out there, play one ladder game, come back right after, let me know how your game went. And uh, did you lose? Did you get rushed? Did you do the most humiliating thing, like forgetting a spawning pool? Let me know. Honestly, guys, we've all had terrible games. And so far, I have cast every single game that I have played. I am currently, I believe, 4-0 uh, in, in this. But I will say that MMR Decay is something that I know is causing even more ladder anxiety. And I think I do actually lose my probe up here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I did. And uh, I do want to talk about that. I sent my probe at the scout. 
but one thing I did this time, I wanted to try it and it actually did not work out, is I told my probe to move on the attack command. I didn't move him on the regular move command or, or the patrol command like I normally do. Uh, my thought process then was, you know what, if I see a proxy pylon, he's going to start automatically attacking it, alert my opponent that I do see it, and uh, try and stop the rush in its tracks. However, uh, in typical uh, husky fashion, I actually forgot about the probe. He wandered up here, began attacking people, and then I got taken out right there, which was totally my bad. I was focused elsewhere. And another point of ladder anxiety is to tell you guys what my thought process is in the moment of the game and also explain why it either does or does not work and also to point out my mistake throughout the game. So if you're watching this and you're like, Husky, these are not super high pro level games, that is not the point. I am a completely average player, and I love uh, trying to learn from my mistakes. And one of the best ways you can learn from your mistakes is to watch your replays and see what you could have done better. So I highly recommend doing that as well. Don't watch your replay and just be like, oh my god, Zerg is overpowered. I can't believe that I lost this game because Zerg is so overpowered. Well, no, that Zerg player is defeatable. I know uh, that it, it's kind of weird to think of it that way. He is defeatable, but you got to look at exactly where your mistakes were and try to improve, improve, improve. So uh, regardless right now, I do go ahead and get a second gateway. I do have a uh, warp gate research on the way. I did save quite a few chrono boosts this time. Uh, I am always worried about early four gate rushes from Protoss just because they can hit very, very early and uh, they can do lots of damage. My opponent here is actually going to be going for a robotics off of two gateways right now. So he has a much earlier robotics but I will have the three gateways here, so that actually does balance out. Now, one thing I did with my Zealot was try and scout for proxy pylons. This is something I've been doing a lot more, and also I can bait out the Mothership Core, and that's exactly what my plan was, and so far is actually working correctly. I'm going to be bringing back my Mothership Core because I know that he's about to scout it, and also I want to make sure he doesn't run this over the high ground. Um, so I am going to use my Stalker to take out the Mothership Core. This was something that I had planned to try, from the very beginning, I didn't expect it to actually work, but right now I'm just moving all around the map, trying to get map vision of exactly what's going on here. I do spot his proxy pylon over here. Did he plan to actually use this, or was he just preemptively throwing that down? We'll never know, but I was able to spot that and take it out quite easily. One thing I could have done as well, is uh, waited for the pylon to finish and then kill it. However, that is a bit of a risk. Uh, oh, he looks like he's making a small mistake here. Of course, I don't know if this is actually taking place here. Uh, oh, I see. It's because he has, I think he's doing it because he already has 16 workers here. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the math still adds up that you want those two guys mining over here. I think that's why he's doing that because he does have the 16 out of 24, which is the most efficient mining. However, I believe, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that still having them on these mineral patches is worth it. But uh, maybe, maybe I am mistaken on that. He is going to go for a relatively early expansion here. And uh, I'm playing it more safe, as in I have an uh, extra game ways uh, my scouting has actually not been great because keep in mind that I did end up losing my uh, my scouting from there so I'm gonna do a little bit of cheeky play there as I do kill off the zealot however I I'm gonna actually make the same mistake I should have mass recalled out of here as soon as I saw those two guys but I'm like you know what I can just safely run over here unfortunately didn't realize the map well enough and I flew to uh, directly into two more stalkers so he's gonna kill off my mothership core and again I don't really have any scouting going on here uh, I've seen kind of the outskirts of his base but I have not seen the robo I have not seen the expansion so really I haven't seen anything uh, worth my time I mean I saw a gateway and a, a cyber deck score and a, a, a assimilator which everyone knows about he does have four guys in there as well which i do believe is not ideal i know some maps in the past have had unideal uh kind of geyser placement there i don't believe that they do that anymore but for now i did decide to go ahead and go for lots of zealots as long uh, as well as with two centuries uh, my thought process here is that you know i saw lots of stalkers pretty early on and uh, there's a chance that he is going to be pretty aggressive uh, pretty soon, so I'm a little bit worried about that. I am going to go ahead and uh, get a lot of zealots out now. I am also going to be going for my expansion as I am a little bit supply blocked here. However, I do want to say that I do have my robotics bay on the way. My observer just finished here, so even though I was supply blocked for a moment, I'm still using my resources relatively well. Uh, I wasn't there a moment ago as I was waiting for these buildings to complete, but now I can do the extended thermal ants. I'm going to be working on uh, another observer as well as a colossus to follow this one up. Uh, the reason I'm going for two observers is because I did not get any scouting in. Uh, originally throughout this game. I mean, I haven't scouted anything. It's almost 10 minutes in the game. I'm, I'm getting a little bit worried here. And this is actually a big mistake on my part. I really should have scouted earlier. Now, I tend to play Protoss out uh, what I consider very safe. So I'm not trying to scout with my army. I'm not trying to scout with, uh, with anything, really, other than something that I feel is safe, which is going to be an observer. Now, I want to talk about what he's doing here a little bit. Um, the early expansion is a big risk, but I don't necessarily like, as Protoss, getting cannons if you don't absolutely need them, which uh, I'm trying to 
wonder if he throws another one down in this expansion or not. My Observer right here does spot this army. However, I do actually manage to save it, which is very rare versus a Protoss army that has detection. However, what does that scouting tell me? Well, he has an Observer in that army, which means he has a Robo. I also saw the Immortals, so I know he's not getting Colossus right away. I know that he's not going to have a Twilight Council, and I am going to be able to scout through here quite a lot. And uh, I think I get taken out by this cannon. I'm trying to remember what happened to this Observer. Yeah, he definitely gets taken out over here. Too low on HP to really begin saving that, as I wasn't paying super close attention, and down it goes. And honestly, in StarCraft II, uh, when you're when you're at my level or below, there's only so many things that you can do. It's like having an old computer. You can only do so many multitasking things at once. And for me, losing the observer is a lot less important than uh, not keeping track of where this army's at, not macroing, and uh, falling behind in that regard. If you can see, I am actually ahead in supply. Uh, I'm not supply blocked right now. I do actually get supply blocked again here pretty soon, which uh, is really my fault just for not staying on top of that. But really, losing an observer, I mean, really microing that observer so he stays alive, to me, is not the best thing to improve right away. Obviously, if I want to become a pro gamer, I need to learn how to do that. But I still think that the macro and the decision making is what's most important. And micro is kind of secondary. I feel like you should really begin practicing micro kind of in Diamond League, which I know is kind of silly to say, but really your builds and your macro will carry you to Diamond League. Uh, I don't know how the new system works, but it did before carry you to Diamond League, maybe Platinum League right now. But if you are not in that kind of area, definitely focus on the macro and the decision making as opposed to cheeky micro, which I, I do a little bit too much still uh, but either way the uh, the macro on my end is looking pretty good I'm at 92 supply now uh, I finally remember you know what I have two sentries at this point in the game he probably could be going for Colossus so force field is probably not going to be ideal I am going to go ahead and scout around with hallucinated Phoenix and this is something that again I've had very little scouting this game but I'm actually going to be passing him in, uh, in, the, in the time scouted after using these uh, Phoenix right here. So one thing I do see in his base uh, is the Forge with a second Forge. Now this in my brain is actually going to cue me to be aggressive. Why is that going to cue me to be aggressive? Because I see a Robotics bait, I see a Twilight Council, those are both heavily delayed. I also see a second Robotics, but most importantly, seeing those upgrades tells me that my army is going to be much more powerful for the next couple of minutes. Why? Well, number one, because it is 56 to 45, but also upgrades and PvP, I would say, are the least important upgrades out of any matchup. I, I don't know if Day9 or Artosis would agree with me, but when I am playing, that is the way I think about it. Upgrades, of course, in this game are great. You should always get upgrades if you can, but I feel like in PvP, the units have so much HP, they're already doing so much damage anyway, that upgrades really are negligible. Uh, so when I saw that he was getting double upgrades, that is 300 minerals on the forges. Uh, I saw over, what, 450 minerals on cannons, and the fact that he spent the money on the upgrades are not really going to benefit him yet. Uh, also, he does have a lot of immortals, which I do kind of worry about here in just a little bit, and he is a little bit low on money. However, now it's going to be the perfect time to strike, so I do go ahead and decide to move on out, and uh, I do intentionally kill off his observers just so that mine will stay alive but he is forced to engage right here really nowhere to run and the force field right going down there and that just goes back to the two centuries I had before more reinforcements gonna be streaming up here now keep in mind in the midst of this I'm gonna try and be macroing at the exact same time he does get a flank attack with the stalkers but again the upgrades don't really do anything at this stage of the game and uh, the zealots I gotta say mass zealot is so good versus everything except for Colossus. I would say it's even good versus Void Race because you can just do lots of counterattacks. I do force a cancel on that expansion, but I mean, overall, the damage has already been done. Uh, 4,700 resources lost. I've only lost 900, and uh, the reason I did switch to Archons is because I didn't know if he was going to have a counter for my Colossus or not, which, uh, in all honesty, Colossus can be countered a little bit easier now uh, just uh, with Immortals, and also there's going to be the GG coming out but uh, Immortals obviously counter them if micro correctly, and also Void Rays so much better than they used to be back in the day. But I am going to continue to reinforce right here. And uh, he was a very sweet player. He said, an honor playing you. Good luck getting back to Diamond. And a uh, big shout out to him for being good mannered about this. I do apologize about the MMR decay. There is literally no way for me to avoid games like this. So uh, I'm currently 5-0 and uh, trying to work my way back up to Diamond. And a uh, big shout out. A big shout out to Paragrind. Being, being a good sport about it and having nothing but nice things to say throughout the game. So guys, go out there. Do your homework. Your homework is assigned one ladder anxiety game. Go out there. Play a ranked one versus one. Let me know how the game went. Come back here. Post a comment down below. Uh, honestly, those are my favorite comments to read is reading through those games and trying to visualize in my brain how the game actually went. So uh, thank you for everyone who has not only been supporting the series, but has been going out there.
there and actually playing more and more StarCraft 2 guy, uh, games. You guys are an inspiration to people like me, and uh, yeah, I love StarCraft 2, so we're going to continue playing one versus one until the end of my days, which got really dark really fast right there. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoy, and of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HUS Kesky here, back with some more ladder anxiety action. If you can call it action, it's normally just me playing really bad. I'm going to be spawning down the bottom right side. Remember, if you see anyone that is not uh, in the clan Husky and their name is Husky, it is an impasta. Although I do love pasta, so I can't blame them. And my opponent up in the top right side is going to be Omar, the blue Zerg. Now, uh, again, the whole point of ladder anxiety, guys, is to make you guys get over your ladder anxiety. I'm not trying to give you ladder anxiety. I'm actually trying to do the opposite of that. As uh, if I can embarrass myself in front of 50,000 people, you can embarrass yourself in front of just one. So this one is going to be a PVZ, which is, I would say, my weakest matchup. Uh, I, I feel okay in PVT and uh, and PvP. Not to say that I'm good by any means, but when I'm playing, I at least feel comfortable. Uh, in PvZ, I always just feel like they're a step ahead. And uh, I also do want to mention, and actually it's more of a question, what type of music do you listen to as you're playing StarCraft 2? So when you log in, you're, you're doing your ladder game, uh, what is the music you have playing in the background? Do you have uh, the, the in-game music playing? Do you have the StarCraft game music playing? Do you have a favorite band that you listen to? Or uh, do you mute the music to, to get a hyper focus in the game? Uh, probably muting the music and just focusing on the game is what's going to make you the best. But that ain't nearly as fun. That's like going on a road trip without music and no friends. I mean, really, that's just depressing, let's be honest. But uh, either way, the map is going to be Frost, which is quite a large map. And uh, remember, guys, your homework is to go out and play one ladder game. Come back here, tell me exactly how that game went. Uh, I, I love actually reading through the comments. I know I say this every time, but in the last uh, in the last one, I was having a lot of fun reading through your guys' comments. Um, so I also like to tell you my thought process throughout these games, even though uh, I may not execute them correctly or you may see the bad decision making and how it pans out. But for me, I, I like to tell you my thought process going in and uh, how I react and why I react the way that I did versus what I'm seeing from my opponent. So for now, I am going for a pylon into gateway. Um, I did go Nexus first. Now, unfortunately for me, I did scout the incorrect way. I think he did as well as his drone. His drone's getting a workout as well, trying to find me here. But uh, I did take a risk. Did go for Nexus first. I gotta say, going Nexus first is not that uncommon, even in pro-level games, even when they haven't scouted their opponent yet uh, on a four-player map like this. So, it, it is a risk at the end of the day, but one that I think is gonna be worth it. And uh, in this game, uh, it ends up being right, as Omar actually goes for three hatcheries before spawning pool. Now, I would recommend not doing this as Zerg. The reason I say that is because normally, if I was uh, scouting him correctly, I would have been able to block all three of these hatcheries and just made his life miserable. Uh, now, thankfully for him, I scouted the incorrect way, so I, uh, I, I know that I wasn't able to delay that this game. But what I also know is that this spawning pool is super late. I'm trying to find it. I do spot it here. Now, I'm really bad when I'm actually in the game in the moment of knowing the exact timings, but I know that something here is not right. I, I, I just get an inkling that he went for a third base because that spawning pool is mighty late. Mighty, mighty late because my zealot's almost done already and he doesn't even have a spawning pool yet. Now, uh, in my mind, that means he most likely does have a third base. Uh, that was my guess during the game and uh, thankfully for me, I was correct in that. I also, since I made the zealot, I'm going to go ahead and attack with that right away because I know his spawning pool is late. And if nothing else, I want him to hopefully overreact in getting the links. If I can get him to waste a couple larvae that he had not planned on uh, wasting, then that's going to put me in an even better spot. Now, also remember that if a Zerg player goes for three bases right away, he is going to be terrifying at around the eight minute mark. And you want to try and slow that down in some way. And if you don't slow it down, you are at a huge, huge disadvantage. My Zealot right there does realize, hey, there's a base down here. I do go ahead and send this down. The reason I decided not to go straight from the main base is just because he's probably going to have some sort of links on the way, and I'm not going to be able to get reinforcements up anytime soon. Uh, but I do have a pylon established right there. It has not been spotted by this Overlord just yet. I think he is about to spot it. Um, or is it barely? I don't know. He, I, I think he's got to spot it. But either way, I was trying to set it up in a position that it would not be spotted right away. I do go ahead and make a Mothership Core as well. Notice that I do have a Forge on the back of this on the way. What I 
should be doing those throwing down gateways right now. That's actually a mistake I make as I am focused on the actual attack that's going to be taking place right here. The, he does make some Zerglings here. I decide to move my Zealot behind the mineral line, which does actually trap those links long enough to actually begin saving that Zealot a lot longer than he should be alive. This Zealot already has three kills, and he's still alive, and he's going to be able to put a little extra damage on this Queen as well. Uh, that was the idea of kind of microing there. The Queen unable to kill him off. Four HP left on the Zealot. And at this point, I'm still deciding, you know what? I kind of forgot my gateways back at home, which was a total mistake on my part. There's really no excuse for it. And I am doing a lot of damage to this hatchery. I'm just going to go ahead and try and kill the hatchery. Because I don't have the reinforcements that I really want right now if I'm going to try and end this game here. Uh, if I did have the gateways already done, I would have actually been able to, uh, to end this game quite quickly. But uh, unfortunately for me, I did not do that. Either way, my attack is doing lots of damage. Take a look here at the resources lost. 100 resources lost, uh, which was just that one zealot to 400, and it will be uh, 506. And if I get the hatchery here, that's going to be a huge victory for me. He does have Ling's going to be on the way right now, and I believe has another queen on the way, so I'm going to be able to get my second queen as my stalker going to be able to clean this one up. Uh, more like going to be able to clean it up. Get it, it, whatever, guys. Look, bad jokes. But either way, we do have the time warp going to be coming on up, and I'm doing this just to try and keep the stalker alive as the mothership core can just go to town. Six kills on that mothership core, and uh, going to be able to clean up the remainder of these links as well. Seven kills now. He does decide to go ahead and throw it out his four claw, but at this point for him, this expansion is basically lost. I do have one more zealot going to be warping in, and uh, at this point, more zealots going to be warping in on the back of this. But back at home for me, uh, I do have my base established now. I also have my geysers here. I decided not to start mining gas right away, just because my zealots were going to be super effective at this point. It's Pokemon style. Uh, but I do have my plus one attack. Also have zealot legs on the way because I have lots of zealots on the field now. And I also saw that he does have roaches here, so having zealot legs versus roaches is quite nice considering that I don't have a whole lot of tech that can deal with roaches later on. Now, I did kill the hatchery. Feeling pretty good about it. Don't want to overstay my welcome. I can go ahead and back on out here. And uh, I got to say that being aggressive like this, the only reason I kept doing it is because it was working so much. I didn't expect it to do all that much. Uh, and also, the Twilight Council was uh, a choice that I don't normally make. I think I could have gone for a Stargate here or, uh, or, or the robotics a little bit earlier. I decided to go for it because, you know what, he, I killed off a lot of his roaches. I made him be very, very scared of my uh, my Zealot Stalker. And as Protoss, anytime you can make a Zerg scared of Zealot Stalker, that is great because Mass Roach can deal with it, Hydras can deal with it, uh, Mutalus can get it out of position. There's a lot of things that Zerg players can do to uh, deal with it. And at this point, he is scared of me, which my prediction is that he's going to be going for Hydralis here. So if I have that tech, uh, number one, I'm going to have Zealot Legs. Number two, I can easily switch to Psy Storm or Archons, which uh, early Archons are pretty good versus, uh, versus the Hydras. I do transfer probes over here because I was was a little too saturated down here but right now I'm doing relatively good on saturation I do decide to make an immortal before I make uh, before I make an observer because right now uh, I realize you know what he has a lot of roaches he may be feeling a little bit desperate after that last attack and indeed he is and so I'm gonna get an immortal out to help deal with this now this army is still scary for me as I do not have a whole lot uh, of an army right now because I'm not spending my money very well that is absolutely the truth. I do have Zealot Warp again, and the Zealot Legs actually going to be super useful right now. I also have the one century there. Got to go ahead and throw down Force Field 1, Force Field 2, and that actually traps his army completely. So not only was his defense not the strongest because of the amount of damage I was able to do, uh, but also losing that entire army right now. Now that's going to cue me to realize uh, that did a lot of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and warp in one big wave of Zealots and go ahead and move out. If you're wondering why I'm going for Zealots, it's because I have my Templar Archives on the way, and my plan is to warp in a couple of High Templar here as quickly as I possibly can. Now I am supply blocked, which kind of sucks considering my uh, my Twilight Council is done, but I do have another pylon already on the way, and uh, that means I'll be able to warp in several. I also have another Immortal on the way. I have Blink and plus two attack, which I believe he doesn't have any attack upgrades right now for his unit, so I am going to have attack upgrade advantage. And remember, plus attack is really, really good versus Zerg. Armor, I mean, is of course good, but not nearly as good as these roaches shoot very, very slowly. So uh, having the armor is not that great. I do throw down a time warp right there to slow down the reinforcements, and that's going to cue his GG right away. Now this game, I was uh, I was really really able to just kind of get into a good position from the very beginning and kind of ride that. I forced him into an uncomfortable engagement with those roaches. Uh, I forced him to have to expand where he decided not to originally. I forced him to have to make a lot of links that he didn't want to. And really, it all kind of goes back to the fact that he was expanding so aggressively that I needed to punish that. It's not one of those, like, it's a terrible play on Zerg's part. It's more of a, if I do not act early, 
then I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, normally, I do like to go for kind of macro games. That's what I'm all about. But there's really no way to keep up with a Zerg player who goes for three bases before pool as Protoss without doing some sort of aggression. I mean, if you try and just sit back and macro, that Zerg is going to overwhelm you so hard that you're not going to know what hit you. And uh, at this point, I, I think that my ideas were good. My execution was okay. But then you start looking at the top right side and you see, what's this? 1,200 minerals, 300 gas. Uh, so really the ideas were good. Um, the micro was kind of cutesy, but it actually ended up working out this time. But the macro was definitely sloppy and I could have had a much larger army. I mean, I could have had 12 more zealots or uh, a lot more stalkers or even a couple more archons mixed in there if I would have macroed a little bit better. All these things would have put me so much further ahead. Um, I could have had an expansion. I was actually uh, in this game in my mind gearing up to expand. I don't think I had the probe moving out there just yet. But in my mind, I was like, all right, I should really have an expansion on the back of this. And remember, as Protoss, if you can expand while you're attacking and prevent counterattacks, then that is an I I ideal situation. It's kind of like a perfect storm situation. But remember, guys, uh, now that i played my ladder game, if I can embarrass myself in front of 50,000 people, you can embarrass yourself in front of just one. Go out there, play your one game, come back here, let me know exactly how it went. Uh, I know, again, that I've said this 100 times, but I do love reading through the comments, learning about how your guys' games went, and... Uh, uh, just kind of just kind of seeing where we're at. Did you play one game? Did you play ten games? Did you lose them all miserably? Did you have a lot of fun? Did you crush your opponent? Uh, did your computer lag out and disconnect you? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, I'm just going to continue my march forward as I am trying to get out of Silver League. Now, I do want to mention that Blizzard uh, is going to be changing the MMR slash matchmaking system pretty soon. Not sure exactly what those changes are going to be, but it should prevent uh, a lot of these Silver League smurfs because uh, right now I, I should be at least in gold or platinum for sure but uh, it did put me on silver however i have also gone against previous master diamond and platinum players in silver league so really it's just kind of like silver league uh anxiety right now so even if you are a legit silver league player just go out there still play uh, just know that if you get crushed by someone, they may have actually very well been higher ranked than you. But that is what it is. Blizzard is working to remedy, uh, to fix it, and uh, make it all make it all better. So either way, I hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HS Yasuke here, back with some more Ladder Anxiety, and we are going to be picking up right where we left off, as I so far have cast every single game that I've played since restarting the Ladder Anxiety. Uh, there was some games previously that I did end up skipping, but that was a while ago, and since I've restarted the series, I've been trying to cast every single game, and uh, this game, as you can see right here, I am actually getting quite a bit of lag, which is really weird. I'm not sure if it was on my end or his, but uh, either way, I was getting a much higher ping than I'm used to getting. Uh, it was kind of weird, but I figured, you know what, I'm not going to be a bad sport about it. I'm not going to leave the game. I'm not going to pause the game. I'm not going to do anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play it on through and realize that maybe a Blink Stalker all-in is not in my near future, as that does require a lot of micro, and I'm not going to be I'm not going to be having micro in this lag. So I'm going to be going for a, uh, a 1A build, which I happen to say right there in chat. Little does he know I'm actually telling the truth. But uh, either way, my opponent is going to be Sup Baby up in the top right side, who uh, is also being quite funny and quite nice. Now, I will say in checking his ladder history, the highest rank he's been in 1v1 is Diamond. Uh, he spent a lot of time in Platinum as well. So uh, you can kind of see that even though my ranking is still technically silver in the game, it does place you against players who are much better than that. He seems to be kind of in the same rut that I am with this MMR. He's actually going to be scouting cross position first he's just saying you know what I have a feeling he is ready and uh, across the uh, the map so no big deal there he is gonna find me right away now uh, remember the whole point of ladder anxiety number one is to get you guys playing ladder anxiety uh, or overcoming your ladder anxiety I should say so go out there play one game come back here let me know how it goes uh, you only have to play one takes 20 minutes at most unless it's like a crazy macro game uh, and come back here let me know exactly how that game went I love reading through your guys's games uh, which I know I've said a hundred bajillion times so I'm gonna continue to say it and I have been trying to upload this series a lot more at least recently just because I feel like I want to be playing more Starcraft I feel like it's something that uh, you know it's one of those things where you're like you know what I'm gonna do it tomorrow I'm too stressed out I'm too sad I'm too tired you know what shut up and go play one game that's what I was telling myself anyway but uh, I, I do also like to tell you my thought process throughout the game because sometimes I want to do a quick all-in and try and win. Sometimes 
sometimes I want to play big macro games, sometimes I want to try something absolutely new, and uh, this time what my thought process was, uh, kind of alongside the fact that I can't really micro very well because of the mi uh, of the lag, so what I'm going to be doing is macroing instead. So my thought process right from the beginning of the game is, I'm going to have a macro game. If he wants to be aggressive, I'm going to be defensive. If he wants to try and do a timing attack, I'm going to try and figure it out and defend it. And uh, basically, in this game, I made a mental note. Husky, just macro as best as you can. Scouting, uh, I, I do very poorly in this game, as is per usual. That's definitely one of my weaknesses is scouting. But uh, I am pretty happy with how my macro went this game. I do have a zealot right now. I'm going to go ahead and move out to attack the probe. If you're wondering what these random attack patterns are, that was me telling him to try and spot the probe. I do actually manage to kill that one off. My probe, on the other hand, does survive. And I can see everything that's going on except for that robotics facility, which I would love to see. So I do actually slip that probe back inside the main base right now. I am able to see exactly what's going on in here. And uh, my probe is going to be able to escape there as well. Now, uh, the fact of the matter is, watching this replay, I should be able to tell if the stalker's not going to be done anytime soon. In the heat of the moment, I thought that the Stalker was a lot closer, just because they tend to be spawning right about now, and uh, you can see that I already have my Stalker out, so there is a possibility of that, but he did go straight for the Robotics Bay first. Now, I am following this up with my own Robotics right now, but I'm also adding on a second gateway there, which my opponent is also going to be doing. Overall, units tab right now, you can see that he does have a slight probe advantage. So basically, the only difference is that I got my Stalker first before Robotics, and he got his Robotics before his Stalker. But, uh, oh, he's actually going for a Sentry there. I don't think he actually has a, uh, well, he has the one Stalker there, so he's going to be following it up with a Sentry. Kind of surprised to see a Sentry this early on. I'm actually opting to go for the Mothership here. Now, the interesting thing about getting a Sentry this early on is it's great at holding out four gates. You don't really see four gates a lot anymore, and I think a lot of that has to do with the Mothership Core. It's just one more unit that you get out. It has a lot of HP uh, for this early on in the game. It does quite a bit of damage. You can kite it around, keep it alive, slow it down. Plus, you're going to either have Time Warp, uh, or if you can wait a little bit longer, Photon Overcharge, which does hold off those four gates quite easily. So you don't really see that a whole lot uh, these days. That's why I prefer to get my sentries a little bit later. That's just a personal preference. Having it that early, though, is still a good idea. He's actually going to go ahead and move the Stalker here up the ramp. Now, thankfully for me, I'm going to be able to trap this. My Zealot actually traps it Completely. He was trying to run past there. That was not sweet micro. That was literally just my zealot doing a good job, which is very rare. Very, very rare for my zealots to actually be doing their jobs correctly. I do have another gateway on the way. I also have observers on the way here. I do have two observers. This is just a little bit of sloppy play by me. Uh, getting two is actually really, really good, but what I forgot to do was send the first observer right away. Now, what I'm going to be doing right now is sending out uh, observer number one to the top right side, and also I'm going to be leaving observer number two with my army. Now, again, this is a personal preference. It's not necessarily the best idea to do it this way. I just like to know that if anything flies over my army, whether it's a Dark Templar, uh, oh, God. God, flying Dark Templar, that'd be terrifying. No, whether it's a Flying Observer or a Dark Templar trying to slip up the ramp, I'm going to be shutting that down. So I personally think that this is the safe way of going about, uh, no, not the supermarket safe way, but this is the safe way of going about having detection on the field. Now, at this point, I, I actually do something kind of weird, and I'm not sure that I would recommend this because it actually could have ended up biting me in the butt, is I do go ahead and go for the Robotics Bay, which is pretty standard. That's not anything too crazy. You can see he's actually going for Robotics Bay as well. But uh, I will be changing it up a little bit because I actually do scout, I believe, his Robotics Bay. Uh, we'll see that in just a moment. But right now, we do have his Observer going to be spotting mine. Now, I spot that he spots my Observer, and I actually do something here that I've done in several games. Uh, if you spot your opponent's Observer, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and kill this observer. So if he's not paying attention to that observer, I'm going to be able to kill it. So I'm going to go ahead and send out one stalker right now. And uh, the thing is that if I lose this stalker, all right, I lost the stalker. At least I tried to do something cheeky with it. Uh, but if I'm able to kill this observer, then all of a sudden he has to delay any sort of immortal, colossus, warp prism tech. Uh, and has to remake that observer. So my observer is going to be staring his down. I do actually manage to kill that one off there, so I did get pretty lucky with that. And you can see he has to stop making these immortals, he has to stop making Colossus, and he has to go straight for another observer. And he has to use a Chrono Boost to get that out. So that ends up costing him one Chrono Boost as well as uh, the build time right there. He is also, and of course the resources, which isn't as big of a deal, but uh, still it always factors into a game. Now he does have his extended Thermal Lance on the way. He also has his expansion up and running. He does have 12 workers down there. I have my expansion as well. Also have 12. I'm going to be Chrono Boosting out quite a bit. Now this is where I kind of do the weird thing, where I have my Colossus tech out, 
but uh, I'm able to catch a glimpse of a little bit of what he's doing. I haven't seen everything just yet, but I decide to go ahead and get a Dark Shrine. Now, the, the point of this Dark Shrine is not actually to try and do harass him with DTs. I'm going to attempt to, but that wasn't my main focus. I really, for whatever reason, wanted to go for Charge Lot Archon. Now, that's something that is very weak versus a ton of Colossus, which is exactly what he's going to look uh, looks like he's going for, as he does have the range upgrade on the way. Note how my Observer, though, is just kind of checking everything out that's going on over here. And I also see Chrono Boost coming on up out of there. So right now, he's going to have a very powerful mid-game army uh, with those Colossus, with the Immortals. But my thought process is, all right, if I can get enough Charge Lots, if I can get enough Archons, then really the Colossus and Immortals aren't that effective. Now, also... Also, my thought process in a little bit is going to be, all right, he's going for the pretty standard Protoss army. I mean, this is something that we've seen time and time again out of Protoss. And notice that he is actually macroing better than me. He does have a higher supply than me. Uh, having those double Colossus out just skyrockets that supply there. So definitely something I have to keep an eye on because army supply is going to be 39 to 24. I do have a worker advantage right now, which is uh, kind of tends to be my play style, is just getting out tons and tons of workers. If you take a look at the income tab, it does give me a little bit of an advantage right here. So even though he has better units and more of them, I do have that macro advantage. Now, right now, I'm going to go ahead and warp in these DTs. Just try and poke around, see if I can make anything happen with these or not. But I do know the fact that he has an observer here, and uh, he is ready to defend. So I go ahead and back on out. I'm, I'm catching wind of what's going on a little bit. And I already know that he had at least one observer, so there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to have a second one. Now, also, one thing I'm doing is starting to plop down proxy pylons all over the map. I have one here, one to the right to spot if he expands there, and also one on the high ground. Now, another thing also, uh, he actually, I think, catches wind of what's going on over here. Does he bring over the observer? Yes, he does. And I see that his army's over here, so I get a little bit scared. I'm going to go ahead and uh, scoot on out of here. His observer does see that I am going to go ahead and retreat. But either way, I'm making him feel a little uneasy at least. Oh, why'd they decide to go that way? Silly DTs. I'm making him feel a little bit uneasy, and also I do know about his expansion, whereas he has not scouted me in quite some time. He doesn't know if I have a natural. He doesn't know if I have an expansion. He doesn't know what tech I'm going other than Dark Templar. Uh, he's probably going to be feeling good in that he held off uh, what he presumably thinks is a Dark Templar attack, when really I was actually just going to be warping those in to start supplementing my Archons over here. You can see I'm making more Dark Templar right there to do just that. And a Charge Lot Archon is pretty good. The problem is, is that once there are more than three Colossus, that's when the Zealots start to really melt away. And notice that uh, Sub Baby is actually going for the plus one attack right now. So uh, those Colossus are going to be even more effective at killing off my Zealots. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay... I saw some Colossus. I saw him go for the extended Thermal Lance. I forget exactly what I can see in his base right now. I don't think a whole lot there is my Observer. Uh, this is a mistake I make. And sometimes I accidentally send my Observer with my whole army back down uh, to the bottom left side. But that's okay. That's okay. We're moving out right now. It does delay my scouting. So if you can avoid doing this, obviously it is ideal. You want to keep an eye on exactly what they're doing. However... I did see that he went for that third base. I did see that he has really good income and is actually crushing me in the income right now. So he's going to be able to skyrocket ahead in supply. Plus he has those Colossus. So him moving out right now might not actually be that bad of a choice. I mean, you want to try to attack while you're expanding. And uh, overall workers right now, we are back to Tide. So we are going to be getting even uh, even up right about now as far as resources overall spent. You can see that I have spent more money than him overall in every way. But that is only going to last for a little bit. That's not going to be very long because he does have that extra income here. So I have about one or two minutes to get my own expansion up and running, which is exactly what I'm trying to do here. I do transfer over probes here. Now, I did actually take kind of a weird expansion. This is not the safest to defend one. My thought process was I'm hoping he's going to scout down here, see if there's no third base, assume that there is no third base, and uh, just kind of be taken by surprise a little bit later. But I do believe that he later actually scouts this. You can see him moving out with the stalker right here to try and see what's going on. He is going to go ahead. I, I think that he scouts... Uh, uh, this expansion right here if I'm not mistaken. He does have another Stalker moving out to the right side. So he is actually being very aggressive on the scouting, uh, but instead deciding to use Stalkers. Does he go up here? Yes, he does. Well, he spots my pylon right there. Does have another Stalker going out. It's, it's kind of fun for me to watch from their point of view afterwards to see exactly what it is that they are doing. Um, right now, he does have a lot of money kind of in the bank, which, again, my goal was to try and macro a little bit better than I have in the past. Although right now, I am starting to hover about a 1,000 resources. I was trying to focus on killing off this and also just doing a huge warp hit. I wanted to show him these zealots. Uh, I actually did that intentionally. I wanted to see that I have charge. I wanted him to see that I have a lot of zealots. And you may be saying, Husky, why do you do that? That's so stupid. Well, my mind game that I was playing is that I want him to continue making Colossus. Which uh, you can actually see him doing right now. He also does have two Archons of his own, though, which is going to kind of throw a wrench into my plan. But uh, either way, I don't want him to know about the uh, Void Rays that I have on the way. 
Now, the reason for that is, is that Void Rays are just super, super good in PvP. If your opponent does not have enough anti-air, is not prepared for them, is not expecting them, Void Rays can just win you games outright. And right now, let's take a look at his, uh, his anti-air. What does he got going on? Well, he has five Stalkers and three sentries and two archons. So he has enough right now to deal with the amount of void rays that I currently have, but that is not going to last for long because I'm going to be continuing to power those out. Now he does send in, I believe, one unit over here. I do actually end up taking him out, and I do go, go ahead and decide to drop some cannons here. Figure, you know what, if he's got to use blink or anything right there, might as well have some cannons to defend it. Um, and I honestly should have had a cannon kind of in the mineral line, but I didn't have a pylon down there at the time, so I didn't actually end up throwing that cannon out. Now, right now, if we take a look at the supply, I'm actually at 191, so I did macro a little bit better, but he does have enough money to go ahead and get himself maxed out, but he's in a situation that Protoss uh, constantly finds themselves in, which is I'm really close to max out. Should I just make Zealots to be maxed out, or should I slowly start to make those higher tech units? Now, right now, I am working on plus two attack. Uh, I'm also working on the uh, plus one armor, because I saw that I was behind in upgrades, because see, he's going to be finishing his plus two here momentarily. Uh, I also have Blink on the way, just in case. I, I, I don't even have any Stalkers right now, but in case I had to do a big warp in after this battle. Now, I'm realizing I have way too many Zealots. Uh, 31 Zealots is way too many at this stage of the game, especially considering that there are, uh, how many Colossus are there? Five Colossus. So I decided to go ahead and try to attack right now. I do manage to kill off one or two High Templar, but I see that this angle is very bad for me. So I'm going to go ahead and back on out. And honestly, overall resources lost even though uh, he was able to kill several of my zealots there. That wasn't really that bad because I'm attacking right when I have enough money to get remaxed out anyway. I'm attacking when I have too many zealots, and uh, I, I didn't end up, and I retreated just in time before I lost absolutely everything. So that's going to free up some supply for additional void rays, which I do have on the way right now. And I'm not sure if he saw exactly how many void rays I have in this game. I was assuming that he did not. I'm honestly not sure if in that battle if he saw my void rays or not. But uh, losing those Zelts was not that big of a deal. He does have his fourth base already done. And uh, I have my fourth base now on the way. So overall... I would say that, honestly, him and I are at about the same skill level, and uh, that's why I like this game a lot, is that, you know, we weren't being super aggressive, we weren't being super ghostly, but we were both kind of focusing on macro, and he's ready to tango, man. Our army supplies, look at this, All identical worker counts, identical army counts. I am going to be losing some of my uh, zealots right here. That's totally fine. I'm okay with that because, again, I'm just freeing up more supply for void rays, and sure, I'm at about a 19 supply deficit, but I'm also going to be making tons and tons of void rays right now. He also has cannons on the way. I did go ahead and decide to make a fleet beacon here. His army has actually skipped past mine just a little bit, and I believe he does have an upgrade advantage. No, we are now tied in that regard, but uh, here come my Zelts right now streaming on it. Actually, those are his Zelts getting the flank attack, but either way, Zelts streaming in, but guess what? Not enough anti-air. Void Rays, exceptionally good versus Protoss. This is what I'm talking about, guys, is that if you can find the time to go for the Void Rays, you can just do a surprising amount of damage. And the thing is, is he has seen the amount of Void Rays I have now. He's going, oh, oh my goodness, I've got to get out of here. Now, I did end up losing that battle, but overall, he may be losing the war because I'm cleaning everything up with my Void Rays. So even though I lost more initially, I was able to clean those up quite easily. I think he's trying to kill down the next tier. Overall, he did kill a lot of my workers, 20 to 2. But now I'm starting to have that critical mass of Void Rays where I have plus one attack, plus one armor, and uh, I'm also going to be just kind of moving out and being very aggressive. Now, right now at this stage of the game, I'm thinking, okay, I just did a lot of damage to his army. I killed it off. He did a lot of damage to me. If we take a look at the income tab, he's going to be in the lead. So I'm worried that he's going to be able to make enough anti-air to really give me a run for my money. Now, thankfully for me, I did have a, a, a pylon set up there. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and move out with everything I have. And I'm trying to throw some stuff into the in, into the wrenches right now. Because if he goes for Mass Stalker, it's going to have a hard time versus Mass Zealot. Uh, if he goes for Colossus, he might not have detection for the DTs. Now, fortunately for me, I do lose those DTs right away. However, my strategy still stands that he did get a lot of stalkers right now and he is going to go ahead and throw out the GG right there. Now I want to I want to talk about Void Rays just a little bit as I am able to win this game. He was about to kill off my Nexus right here. I was trying to kill it off with the uh, DTs. I think he would have killed that off though as there were quite a few zealots hammering away at it. But the thing about Void Rays is, is yes they are a very good unit. Does that mean that they're instant win? Does that mean you can just mass them up every game? Does that mean that uh, it's a legit strategy no matter what's going on? Not really. I mean you could jokingly say that and you can point to the, the the music video that I made about that but uh, in all honesty void rays are a game are, are a unit that in the game that you're currently playing you have to try and hide them or you have to try and do a sick timing with them now in my opinion I was trying to uh, decide 
what the best thing to do here was. Void Rays, I think, was a great choice. And in PvP, if you can hide them from your opponent long enough, if you can keep an eye on their army and see that their anti-air is not very heavy, then, it, like, if I would have went against him uh, going Zealot Archon, I would have lost that game very quickly which is what I originally tried to do, realize that his army is way too powerful, realize that he was going to kill me off, and to decide, you know what, there's no anti-air here, I'm going to go ahead and tech switch to Void Rays, it's a long rush distance, so by the time he gets down there, I'm going to have at least a couple, which uh, should have been more than enough to kill out the Void Rays, but either way, able to put another win on the board, but I do want to say that uh, Sub Baby was very manner in this game, he did throw out a very friendly GG, also was very nice in the beginning, so hello to you Sub Baby, thank you for being a good sport, and uh, guys... You know what time it is. It is homework time, so go out there, play some StarCraft 2, come back here, let me know exactly how it went, and it does, you know what, this time, if you haven't been playing 1 versus 1 ranked, you now are in uh, AP StarCraft, or StarCraft AP, in that you have got to be playing 1 versus 1 ranked. It only has to be one game. Come back here, let me know exactly how it went. Love reading through them. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HUS Gaske here, and as promised in my last Bronze League Heroes, uh, I'm actually going to be doing an Imba League. No, this isn't Imba League. This is Ladder Anxiety. Look, I get them all mixed up, although it might as well be Bronze League Heroes. Uh, actually, I am going to be going for my placement match. I'm actually going to be casting this as I am playing as well, which I have not done for a while. It is going to be a PvP on Habitation Station. Never actually played a game on this map, I believe, as uh, they did just add it to the map pool. But there is a new season starting. And uh, I do have a lot to say, actually, as this game is loading up. I just want to make sure that I get not necessarily my worker split, but I at least get my probe started right away. So hopefully, uh, hopefully Mr. Mongo over there, DRKP, is going to be loading it up. But uh, as this game is getting underway, I do want to mention, number one, ladder anxiety. That means you guys have to go out and play a one versus one. I do feel kind of like uh, a teacher or something, having to assign you guys homework. But uh, either way, get out there and play some StarCraft 2, guys. That's the whole point of ladder anxiety. If I can embarrass myself in front of one person, uh, or, well, one person plus all of you, which is like, well, how many views do these get? 40, 50,000? Then you can do it in front of just one GLHF. So go out there, play one game, come back. Come back and let me know how the game went for you. Uh, also, casting this while I'm playing, just so you know, I tend not to talk as much. Uh, I mean, there'll still be a lot of talking, let's be completely honest. But uh, it is very difficult to focus and play at the exact same time. Also, the way that my computer is set up, if I'm casting while playing, it's very hard for me to hear the game sounds. So a lot of times you'll see me make mistakes like uh, I'm under attack or I'm supply blocked and I don't even realize it. I'm going to scout him just because it's a two-player map. Uh, and, and I don't hear it, and you're like, Husky, why aren't you hearing it? Uh, just so you know, for whatever reason, when you record, um, you basically can barely hear game sounds. I don't know what it is, just kind of how it's always been on every computer I've had, especially in StarCraft, because when you record StarCraft, your game volume is at, like, uh, I set mine at 6%. So my game volume is at 6% of what, uh, of what the average person actually hears. So definitely, uh, definitely give me a little bit of credit here. Plus, I haven't played in a while, but hey, the whole point of Ladder Anxiety is not to get as good as you possibly can, not to be the best player in the world, but uh, to actually... Oh, he's looking for proxies, man. He is looking for those. Is he proxying me? No, he does have his one pylon there. But I'm wondering... He does have lots of probes as well. I'm kind of wondering, though, where is that gateway at? Does have me a little bit worried here. Uh, any gateway? Any gateway over here? Is he going for gas now? Is that what that's about? Yes, he is. Is going to be going for that gas. Oh, I was going to take that one. I was going to take it. There he goes. Okay, he does have that. I should probably go ahead and get gas now. Now that I know he's not doing something silly, silly mobility, I'm actually going to go for second gas as well. I think that uh, that's going to be the correct choice right now. Oh, no, my probe. My probu. I'll try and keep him alive as long as I possibly can. Always a good idea to do so. Let's go and get our cybernetics core right now. Um, so since he's going for gas, it actually does have me a little bit worried. Um, I did get my gas a tiny bit late, so I got to I gotta watch out for that. Uh, you go there, you go there. Oh, uh, did I lose him? Oh, they totally, they totally eviscerated my poor probe. We're going to put two guys in gas right now. I'm not super desperate for gas here. Uh, he's not gonna, I'm trying to decide if I want to do an early rush. I could try and maybe use the mothership core, but... Yeah, I think I'll wait. Maybe go for a Stalker right away. I might actually Chrono Boost out a Stalker. Just put on a little bit of pressure. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll get the Mothership Core a little bit later. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and do that and get the gateway started. And possibly just for safety, let's throw down another gateway. So that should be fine. And actually, this stalker's gonna be done right quick. Super duper quick there. And we'll go ahead and start getting some more gas. Just kind of wanted those extra minerals for now. And I think I'm going to actually make a zealot off of this. Actually, let's go for Mothership Core after these probes. Uh, I'm just going to poke my stalker up here. Really, my stalker should be okay, I feel like. I feel like nothing bad's going to happen to him, although those are famous. Those are famous last words, that is for sure. All right, so no one at the watchtower, it would appear. Go ahead and get my Mothership Core out. I should have the pilot on the way. There it is. And I'm just going to kind of poke up here, see what he's got going on. I want to see if he has an expansion. Anything sneaky like that. Let's go and send out Motion Core. And he does have a Zealot there, so we'll do that. And let's go in the base. Let's see what he's got. See if he's got anything fancy going on up here. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and add on another gateway. Let's just go ahead and get two Zealots going on. And thankfully for him, his probes decided to be nice to me. Oh, he has a Stargate and a Robotics. Okay. All right. Well, I feel like actually... Actually, this can go okay for me. If he has no anti-air, then uh, I am going to be just fine. Especially with that going on. So you guys go there. You're going to come out here. Let's throw that down. Send my Staka back. And actually, I'm going to not make those guys. And we do have the... Well, up to one kill already. He does have those Zelts there, which has me kind of sad. But uh, I can also start sending everything over here. You keep doing that. I'm just going to time warp these guys. Prevent them from escaping. And I think my Mothership Core is super dead because he does have a Void Ray on the way. And there's not a whole lot I can do about it. However, uh, I will be having lots of units here pretty soon. So that's uh, that's how he wants to play. Two Zealots over here. Okay, he did take that one out. That is okay, though. And let's just go and get our Stalkers up. I feel like I should almost just add on an extra Gateway here. I might actually just go for two. I might actually just try and kill him with this. I wasn't expecting to uh, to be so aggressive, even even though I kind of feel like I should be. Let's go ahead and set up a pylon. Actually, let's put this pylon down here. No, Probe, don't get trapped in there. Really? Really? You were doing so good, Probe. You were doing so good. What happened? All right, so there's going to be all that. And I still have quite a few probes on the way. So that should be a okay. And I'm going to go ahead and march up here. I feel like I'm even going to get a sentry, which I, I know is pretty wacky. I know that that's, like, super wacky. You know what? Let's just go and credit boost out these. I'm going to do that. Actually, I feel like I should just get more stalkers. More stalkers. We'll, we'll get the one sentry. We got we to gotta get a sentry in here. Why not? And we almost should have our gateways done. There they are. And why is my rally point not set? That's been, that's been throwing me for a loop. But you go there, and we are basically ready right now. Maybe, maybe one more zealot there, and let's go for it, baby. How much energy is on my sentry? Almost enough for guardian shield, but let's find out. All right, you guys come over here. Zealots first. Let's see what we got up here. All right, we do have a lot of immortals, which I'm actually not too worried about. Maybe, maybe I should be, though. All right, can I actually kill that anymore? That is not looking good. That is a lot of anti-armor. That is a lot of anti-armor, actually. He is uh, hes going very, very interesting stuff. Not something you would normally see. Wait for the Void Rays to run out. And here we go. Go ahead and kill that guy off. I think I can actually get the Void Ray at least. Maybe not. Maybe I can't. All right, but now he is actually out of position. So we're going to go ahead and run those guys up. That did not go well. You do not normally see that unit composition. All right, you guys go ahead and kill that. You go there. All right, Stalkers, get out of here. You go up there. Yep, keep taking those guys out. Trap that guy. You go there. You go over there. More Zealots. All right, got to get Zealots in the mineral line. Did take out my poor Stalker, which I'm really upset about, but I'm kind of massacring that probe line right now. So we'll go ahead and go for there. Now, if you guys come over here, maybe even on the hold position. All right, should be able to take that out. There we go. There we go. All right, so that was super sloppy. 
But I kind of saw that he was going for just a couple of Immortals and a couple of Void Rays, which was very good versus Stalkers. So I just decided to not make Stalkers, and then all of a sudden it went uh, it went a lot better for me. And is that going to put me... All right, it put me back in silver again. So I guess we continue We continue exactly where we were. And let's see, graphs right there. You can see Army Value. We kind of both, uh, both were not having fun at that moment in the game. But uh, overall, very, very quick game. Remember, guys, it is a new season, so if nothing else, go do your placement matches. Uh, if, if you played games recently, it's actually just one placement match, so no real big deal right there. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and go play your games, guys. I'm waiting. I'm sitting right here. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to go play your match. Okay? You can... You can be super cheesy five gateways like me off of one base. That is what uh, that's what the real cool players do in PvP. But uh, anyways, guys, go do your placement matches. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know down below how your games went, by the way. Those are some of my favorite comments to read. All right, bye. We're, I'm, I'm leaving now. You better have played your games. You better have played your games. Don't you, don't you, don't you cheat out on me right now. Especially with Arcade becoming free pretty soon, guys. There's no excuse to not have the game at least installed. All right, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, my God. I just reached Masters League. I was actually uh, playing a game for Ladder Anxiety, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do some replay analysis for this next video. Well, the one game I played today, it put me in Master Leagues. Kaboom, baby! Now, the reason I'm so excited is because I have never been in Master League in 1v1. Do I deserve to be in Master League? Is it some sort of glitch? I don't care because I just got placed into Master League. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, my. Oh, my God. I got put into Master League. Been diamond since the start, and now I'm in Master League. Whoa! All right, I'm going to show you the game that I just played. I can't believe it put me in Master League. I'm so freaking excited. Uh, I'm going to do watch replay solo. But by solo, I mean with you guys. Now, it put me against a Zerg a diamond level player. And that's going to be him up here in the top right side. Gon Harch. Gonarch is going to be my opponent up in the top right side. And, of course, I'm going to be at the top left side. It is not the most exciting game. It is not the best game I've ever played. But I don't give a damn because it is forever going to be known as the game that got me into Master League. Now, this map is going to be one of the new maps. They have this weird route that you can attack through through the center. And I want to tell you my game plan in this game. So, as a lot of you know, in some of the Zerg videos I've been uploading recently, I have been losing to Mass Muta. It's a very strong build versus Protoss. You see it, uh, you see the pros use it a lot. You see uh, everyone on ladder using it a lot. And really, it's just an all around solid build. So, it's definitely something you have to watch out for as Protoss. So, my thought process in this game was all right, I'm going to hit him before he gets Mutalisks rolling. If he gets Mutalisks rolling, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. I've really struggled with it in the past. And, uh, yeah. So that's going to be my game plan from here on out. You will see that I do go ahead and do a Forge Fast Expand. If you're wondering what was up with this probe, um, I was sending him down to build the Forge immediately before my scouting probe had actually made it inside of his base. And the point of that was, on this map, since the rush distances are so short because of this little connecting path, I want to have the Forge on the way if he's going to be 6-pooling me or 7-pooling or e even like 10-pooling or something like that. I, I need to be prepared for it. If he goes for the Overlord and the 3 drones first, I'm actually okay to go ahead and get my expand up. Now, I do play a little bit greedy in this game um, because I, I just had a feeling that he wasn't going to do anything super cheesy because he's, he wasn't really trying to heavily deny my scout. He wasn't trying to take an early gas. There's really very limited ways that he could actually pressure me right now. And if he wanted to do some sort of cheese attack, it would be basically slow Zerglings with the Inject Larva and then try and attack with tons of Slowlings, which is something that Zerg players almost never ever do, especially for walling in like this. So there's going to go down the forge right there. And uh, hopefully you guys can actually hear me. Hang on, I'm going to turn up my microphone just a little bit. Uh, let's try, let's try that. Sorry if that's blowing up your ears. I want to make sure as this game gets underway that you can actually hear me. But uh, anyways, there's going to be going down the gateway as well. Um, I do decide to go ahead and 
I, I will supply block myself here in a moment. But uh, anyways, I'm going to be getting my gateway as quickly as possible. Forge on the back of it. Uh, or, or reverse that, excuse me. I'm getting the forge as quickly as possible. Then the gateway. I'm still all jittery because I'm in Master League, apparently. But uh, anyways, there's that. Go ahead and drop the cannon on down. I should actually be dropping a pylon right now. I'm a little bit late on that. I do have my probe over here. The reason I'm attacking this hatchery, this is not an accident. This is, tr uh, if he's making a bunch of lings, I'm hoping he's going to get distracted by the probe. Not that the probe's really going to be causing any massive damage there, but I notice, okay, no lings are attacking me. I want to check the status of the uh, spawning pool here, so I do run up here. And the scouting intelligence I get is very, very important. I see a couple of lings there for just a second, and I also see that the queen has spawned. So my, my probe's going to try to hide over here as best he possibly can, and he is dangerous close to these units right now and uh, thankfully for me he actually didn't kill my probe right away so that was kind of nice uh, it seemed like a little bit of rusty play on his part and go ahead and drop down the cybernetics core really should be getting a zealot here but my probe right here I'm like okay I only see four zerglings and I didn't see any zergling speed because even now the, the spawning pool is not jiggling so I know that he's not going to be going for early zergling speed I know that he's not going to be going for roaches unless he hit it somewhere that I haven't seen and uh, I'm going to assume at this point that he's getting a third base. Now, do I know for sure that he has a third base? No, I don't. But based on what I've seen so far, it's been passive play. It has been macro-oriented play. And it has been falling into exactly what I want to have happen so far. Uh, he, he could, of course, change it. He could switch to hydras. He could go mass roach at any time. So it's definitely something you have to watch out for. But from what I've scouted so far, I'm feeling really, really good. I have my expansion up. One thing you'll notice is that I'm not going to be grabbing my double gas right here. This is very, very important. Um, and this would actually be extremely important for the Zerg player to scout. And he can actually spot this. Now, as a Zerg player, if you don't see double gas for a long time, you have to understand that that means something very specific. And in this game, it does. Now, I do have my robotics facility going to be on the way. Forge is working on an early plus one because, remember, Zealots with a plus one, so much better. But they're basically like, what, 30% more effective versus Zerg just because it kills Lings in two hits instead of three. I don't know the exact math on it, so everyone calm, calm down, cool your jets. But anyways, what I'm going to be doing, going for the robotics facility, adding on gateways, and basically just be doing um, a, a pressure with a lot of gateways and a warp prism. Now, the important thing right here, Oh, my video crashed. I actually totally forgot what I was talking about. But there's something important, and we all know it. Anyways, I am scouting. Uh, notice with the probe, I'm manually scouting all the way down because I know he's going to block this off. Every Zerg player is going to have this blocked off right now. So it's not really going to be doing me a whole lot of good to, uh, to try and scout through the middle there. So I do send up the probe right now to see if there is a base. I spot it right away. And uh, my probe's like, whoa, got to do a 180 and turn around. And I'm going to try and make it in the main base. But if I do or not, that doesn't really matter because I've already seen that he has a third base. Now, my probe, though, does survive. And uh, guess what he's going to see here? Double evolution chambers. This is actually playing into my favor so well right now. Because going for mass uplated, uh, upgraded Zerglings right now, this, this means kind of one of two things in my mind. I might be completely wrong, but this is what it meant in my mind. Is that he's either going to be going for Mutas and he wants to have Zerglings to back them up. Very common. Or he's going for the fast ultra either way my attack is going to hit before that tech kicks in now my observer does float through here it does see the double spine crawler there and uh, i will know that there's static defense kind of every which way that i'm going which is also playing into my favor because i am going for a war prism which is not something you see as much versus zerg it is still of course a very good unit but uh, you don't really see it a whole lot. He's only going to scout. I Actually, I think he only saw my gateway. This is actually the most unlucky scout ever. He has seen my Twilight Council, but he doesn't necessarily know, know what that means. Now, I do have a lot of money right here. I am going to be warping in some zealots, but really, as long as I make enough gateways, how many gateways did I make? I think I actually messed this up a little bit, if, uh, if I remember correctly. So, structures right now. Four warp gates, and I think two more on the way. That's actually not enough for the build I'm going. I should have had two more. And uh, dropping a lot of pylons here. Just to make sure I preemptively do not get supply blocked as my warp prism is moving out. I'm bringing zealots because I saw the double evo chamber, which nine times out of ten means a lot of zerglings. And uh, that means the, better, the more zealots I had, the better. He unfortunately doesn't have any drones over here, so that's kind of a sad day for me. So I send my three zealots right there. This is just to distract him to try and get him out of position uh, if he has any units right now, which he does. Oh, God, he does. Now, he does know about my warp in right here. 
the Overlord can spot this. However, he cannot engage me in this corner. If he engages me in this corner, he is going to absolutely regret it. So I'm just waiting for another warp in right now to get a bunch of zealots. Keep in mind that my plus two attack is nearly done. Not quite yet. I should really wait for that, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference versus just Zerklings. So there's going to be my big warp in. I do decide to go ahead and move out. I see the amount of lings that are there, trying to get a good angle to engage. All my zelts are attacking, but I'm also not getting surrounded. Notice I'm not getting surrounded here. They're attacking from one angle, which is ideal for Protoss, and uh, that's going to be a huge victory for me. It may look uh, about the same right now, but you also have to remember that I just finished plus two attack, and I can easily expand on the back of this, which I'm going to be doing here in a minute. And also, all he has tech for right now is Zerglings. He doesn't have a Rotorn. He doesn't have anything, because he was not expecting me to be in his base with this many cells. He was playing it really smart. I mean, he got the spine crawlers here. He uh, he prepared for everything except for uh, some sort of harassment with the war prism, which is exactly what I want. Some more cells are on the way. Uh, I do have quite a bit of gas right now. So does he, though, and that's going to be okay for me because I can follow it up with some sort of higher tech. And at this point, my Zelda is running around having one hell of a time, even intercepting the spine crawlers here, which are trying to back up to defend. And honestly, at this point, I mean, he's lost so much. It's basically unrecoverable, and it's because he did not react accordingly. Now, I do have my Temple Archives done, so I do I do decide to warp in some Archons here just because, you know, Zealots are okay, but they're still easily manipulated by, uh, by Spines, and, and Queens can kite them and all that. So I want to get some beefier units in here. The Archons are really going to be sealing the deal. Another uh, Archon is on the way here, and that's going to be it. This is going to be the game that got me into Master League, baby. So I take that out. There's going to be the GG, Gonark. Uh, I, I am very sad that you lost today, but I'm also very excited that I got Master League. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. All right, so that's going to be awesome. And then uh, you can see right there, I am now officially in Master League. Uh, workers, at, I was basically ahead in every way uh, this entire game. So I slapped him around for sure, and that is okay by me. So now if we take a look here at my profile, hopefully you can actually hear me over the music. It's so loud in my ears, but... Uh, there it is, baby. 1v1 Masters League. I haven't played many team games this season, so it's still there. But uh, either way, kaboom, baby. Thank you guys so much for the support uh, throughout Ladder Anxiety. So make sure, guys, go out there, play some games, because if I can humiliate myself, although this game is I'm pretty proud of, if I can humiliate myself in front of hundreds of thousands of people, then you can do it in front of just one. So go out there, play some games, come back here, let me know how they went. And, uh, of course, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.